Sup, my fellas, don't forget to leave feedback and enjoy the story. The sun is shining outside, we see one of the school academies, where students come out with happy faces, they realize that everything they were doing took too long. They had fun, joked at each other, saying that they just randomly put answers to questions, and also just stared. But it was at this point that they didn't notice that military vehicles were coming past their school. They called those people not real adventurers, they were just students from one of the specialized schools, but as soon as they looked at the emblems, they noticed that these people were all from the Warrior Academy. To our attention was presented this very incident, after which a real nightmare began in the world, it began without a single warning, without a single hint. Because portals opened, dragons and other various creatures flew out, even a dragon flew out so big that people could not close their mouths in surprise. By that time, science had already proved that in the entire universe there is a world that was similar to the Earth, and here on this planet there was a certain terrible incident, as a result of which the planet was torn into the smallest pieces, into parts, as a result of which these very remnants began to be attracted to the Earth. So it was on that day that parts of their planet began to merge with that planet, a huge tree grew in the center of the Earth, this phenomenon was called the adhesion phenomenon. That's how unusual laws of nature and a variety of monsters appeared on Earth, the same multi-headed hydra, as well as the tsunami that they caused, while only 17% of the entire Earth's area was affected and people lost control of it. Because dangerous zones appeared, in the end they called these places dungeons, because it was in them monsters such as the Horned Dread appeared, and their strength increased with their numbers. But also strong, because today it wasn't bullets that could hurt, he sent all the soldiers to the ground in one deft movement. None of the humans were given enough time to prepare for the encounter with these monsters, because humans, as a species, did not have the methods and skills to do anything with the monsters. However, they were lucky, because the disaster was not the only thing that the outside world had to deal with, a natural limitation that humans faced. As a species is born, and the limitations of their potential caused by the natural laws of the earth were completely destroyed. People became so strong that they were able to resist the monsters, their strength began to increase by the second, many could counter something terribly with the monster. Although this phenomenon affected all people on earth, but everyone's awakened abilities were different, the chosen ones decided to train. And those who used their newfound potential and abilities to regain control of the dungeons organized special agencies that worked only for this purpose, they were known as adventurers. It was after this moment that the era of dungeons began, where people fought against monsters, and it also began to be called the era of adventurers. The whole world praised their achievements, because they were able to do everything themselves, everyone inspired everyone with strength. So it was after these cases that organizations were created all over the world that train adventurers, and the best training center for teenagers in the Republic in Korea, which has produced the best adventurers for the past 25 years, was the world-famous Warrior High School. By this point, as soon as we learned about the whole story, we can see that the students continued to talk about this topic. They said that everyone also counts what happens in the dungeon, just like a test, because they have already received permission to do so. They weren't even afraid that they might die, because they were so confident in themselves. There is a reason why they were accepted to this school. By this point, as soon as the students finished talking about it, it was noticed that all the classmates, all the girls who were in the area just started shouting that someone was very beautiful. Before our eyes were mixed, blood elves, it was they who called such a furor it infuriated, because I couldn't understand how he could even take so much attention. So another, who was smaller and in glasses, answered that this particular half-elf often appeared on television. His name was Dai of Choi, his name was Dai of Choi. His father was a famous ranker, and his mother was an elf. Many people said that the half-elf would definitely rise to the heights, people even claimed, betting that he would go to the crowds of top adventurers after graduating from school for five years. He was 17 years old, white hair, light eyes, his rank was senior soldier, but he returned from the dungeon as many as 14 times. The boy, who was looking on with envy, didn't like the fact that the half-elf was getting so much attention, but he wished they weren't mad at him. This made the big guy even angrier, but the bespectacled guy noticed our hero, Yao Ryong, and asked him, is our hero working again today? The main character replied that he would work, for which they are very sorry, but he hopes that his guys will have a lot of fun. The muscular guy started saying that he didn't understand why he was still working after the exam, so that he could just skip work and go with them. But as soon as he said these words, his bespectacled friend hit him in the stomach, making it clear that you can't skip work, especially for our hero during which the muscular guy said that probably our hero has no choice. 
the main character had already said goodbye to them by then, so while Brawny was lying with his head to the ground and our hero was already far away, the bespectacled one would tell Brawny to be a little more gentle next time before starting to talk, because does the jock know why Ya Ryong is doing this in the first place? We can see that Ya Ryong's grandfather or father is still sitting in the hospital bed. We don't know for sure yet, but we can understand that he has already been notified for the umpteenth time that he did not pay the hospital bills for May July. The amount was very high for example, he was asked to pay the above amount, and his number received messages from his boss, who asked for a prosthesis, and also asked to come to him, because he had a job. At this moment, while the half-elf was waving his hand, he noticed our hero. He turned to him so abruptly that even his classmates thought that something was strange, because did the guy who was our hero do something to the half-elf? But he only said that it was nothing, because he probably just imagined it, but that of course we can't understand. At this point, Ya Ryong had already walked far enough, he didn't want to work, he didn't want to go there again, but there was no other choice, he had to go there. Because of course he needed money, he came to some ruins that looked like an abandoned subway station, the more likely it was it was where there was almost nothing in general. He was finally noticed by his boss, who asked him to say hello to their client, his boss's name was Im Yuen, who was 37 years old, a broker by profession, had grey, ashen hair, and also apparently had a passion for smoking. Our hero at the same time took out his earpiece, with which he went there and said that it was nice to meet everyone, that he was ready to work. But of course, their client, as is often the case, did not like something, he started shouting that he asked Yuen to find them a definitely better employee, and now there is a schoolboy standing in front of him. The broker said that they were already looking at the best employee he could find, but of course the bald man didn't believe all of this. He asked me to listen to him, because he came there so that he wouldn't be deceived by some idiots like the one who was sitting and smoking right now. The broker didn't understand, because wasn't the bald man too harsh. But the bald man kept talking about getting the broker to get the baby out of his sight, because it just didn't seem funny, and also bringing someone who was really good at their job, because otherwise he would make them both regret it. But of course, despite all of Yaren's calls to him, he asked the beefy man who was standing behind the bald man, was he really an adventurer, and why was he standing behind this old man? This of course caused a wave of aggression in the pumped up man, he said that there is no point in continuing the dialogue, because he is sure that a broken arm and leg will serve as a lesson to our hero. This thug's name was Lai Piliu, who was already 34 years old, he actually returned to the silver rank adventurer, and he also returned from the dungeon as many as 81 times. The bald man was already telling our hero to get down on his knees, and also start begging for mercy, because his bully definitely had to deal with our hero. As the short bald man continued to shout something, Ya Ryan looked at his boss, who was just smoking his cigarette peacefully, and he knew that it was time to act. Ya Ryong started to mock, he started to say that he wasn't afraid at all, but even so, he didn't know how to ask for mercy. Before us was our hero in full glory, his full name was Yu Ya Ryong, 17 years old, he was a smuggler from the Donking Dungeon of the first year of training, returned from the dungeon illegally 371 times. Many may ask, who are the smugglers? Of course, these are vile criminals who threaten the whole world. But what is smuggling in the dungeon and what can be attributed to it there? After all, everyday adventurers work hard to explore dungeons, but when they successfully explore a dungeon and defeat monsters, they can get countless treasures. However, of course, before adventurers exit the dungeon, the treasures must be handed over for verification. This is due precisely to the fact that many of them have incredible strength. After all, if you allow such things to be distributed without permission, they can be used for evil, which will endanger people's lives. So that's why the Adventurers Association should first check, register these treasures and then collect taxes on them according to their value. But there are people who break this rule, because they just lure adventurers who don't want to pay these huge taxes, and also secretly pocket the treasures, and even if they don't want to pay the huge taxes, they can also if you don't catch those people. Then society as a whole will be at a loss, so that's all, and if someone even sees such bad guys, then you need to hurry up and report to the association. The bald man would approach the broker and ask him if he was really going to let all this happen. But the broker, despite all the questions, began to laugh at the bald man, because he thought that most likely he was laughing. So the bald man began to say that it was the broker who was afraid, and our hero, who went out to fight against the bully, definitely had a bad character. After all, the reason for the bully's resignation was not injuries, but an attack on a teammate, because if the broker thought that he would be soft with Jaren, then he is deeply mistaken, because in the end they will only see the corpse of a small boy who was simply too bold with a person older than him. Our hero, who by that time was already conducting his own warm-up, thought that attacking a friend was just a frivolous matter, because really the person in front of him was the real criminal, but of course it was definitely not our hero to condemn this. 
The big guy started to smile, his whole face covered with veins from anger, because he thought that he thought that now it's easy to deal with such garbage as our hero, because he thought that now just throw. As soon as Jaren heard this, the show started, because he openly began to mock the bully, because he believed that he probably understands that he needs to throw out the garbage. Baldi was shocked, and Kuryaga also thought that our hero was a real psycho, since he started doing this. The thug didn't hesitate long, so his punch was already flying at our hero. But despite all this, he just dodged it, because he said that attacking him out of the blue was just very rude. The bully began to rush even more aggressively at our hero, his aura of anger was even more pronounced, but our hero only kicked him and said that that was enough for today, because a light kick in the ass would definitely fix the situation. While the broker was looking at all this with his own expression, the bald man was simply shocked. He could not believe it, but the broker continued to talk about the fact that he had already invited the most experienced person he knew. But our hero, who was having fun at that time, also said that all this was unexpected, because judging by the appearance, the bully should have been definitely stronger than what our hero could see now. And Liu Pilgu himself was at a loss at that time, because he still considered this one a teenage smuggler as a child, that is, our hero. However, all the reflexes, the strength of the blow that hit him on the chin could be compared to the level of a professional. The broker also noticed this and said that the bully began to understand something, because this may not be the fight that he can win, but even the one that can lose. The bald man started shouting at the broker to watch the fight, because it's still unknown that the muscular guy can still win, but the broker understood that the bully was just offended, and if he withstood such a blow from our hero, then he was definitely a tank, so he asked the bald man not to look at him, after all, he could definitely read between the lines, he just annoyed him. Tank, on the other hand, who had just torn his shirt off, started talking through gritted teeth about how no matter what cheap tricks Yaw Ryan use, he would still be a nasty smuggler who could not do anything in his life except just take and steal, so the bully wanted to show him his full strength, a power that reflects the adventurer's spirit. We can see that it was after that very adhesion incident that people began to awaken abilities that exceeded their own limitations. But each person had their own abilities and talents, and, as expected, various hidden abilities that were different from each other were also awakened. But adventurers, of course, were trained according to their abilities and assigned roles, so one of them is a tank. So at the same time, we can see that the same bully started using all of his mass augmentation techniques, iron skin enchantments, but also giant power enchantments. The exact position where you protect your teammates from the dangers of the dungeon is tactical, their role is to meet monsters face to face on the front lines. The strength of their body, trained to the limit, allows them to repel bullets, shells, but the highest class tanks do not take even the overwhelming firepower of missiles that can fly from the sky, because they are the team's defense mechanism, so our hero realized that in front of him is a real adventurer, who could even be find it. The brawny guy's strength was so strong that he was able to break the floor with two hands in a second, so the broker only had to pick up the bald guy who fell after this shaking to make sure he didn't get hurt. Because in any case, the broker thought that the one who fights against Ya Ren is just a complete fool, because was he really going to show up? And our hero, in turn, who noticed all the sitting adventurer who was in front of him immediately began to dodge, even despite all the provocations that the goon is trying to use. Ya Ryong didn't give in, because he wasn't a fool, he didn't even have the intention of falling into another trap. The broker, who looked at everything from the side, understood that the bully is not bad, because his physical strength is about the level of a decent truck, if he hits a person, then every bone in his body will definitely be crushed, so he shouted that our hero should finish with him as quickly as possible, because if there is even more destruction, then it decides the salary. Ya Ryang felt that if he didn't hurry up, he would definitely be in trouble, but Bully thought that the broker just didn't understand what was going on, because it was Bully who was telling our hero that our hero's old tricks would definitely not be able to break through the body of a professional. Ya Ren liked that Tut was thinking that way, so his only decision at this moment was to take the pipe that was next to him, which he thought would be enough for his next battle. The goon was so happy with this action that he began to rush at the hero with such fury, with such force that the wind around him began to form itself, and our hero understood that in the light of them, the overwhelming majority of people socially consider tanks invincible creatures. However, this is not the case, they have a clear weakness, a natural enemy, a creature that can concentrate a powerful, destructive force attack at one point. For example, a damager that is much tastier than them, so at one point, as soon as our hero swung a stick and then struck, the tank simply fell without strength. Paul, just such a person has no problem destroying such a defense mechanism. The thug who was already lying on the floor couldn't believe it. After all, where did his opponent even learn such a thing? But of course, Ya Ryang didn't know what he was talking about, and even if he was trying to say something, he must be wrong. But he might not be wrong, because there was a chance that the bully had seen his father before. We understand that in their world, most adventurers are assigned the following four ranks based on their skills and results, such as stone, copper, silver, gold. 
it is based on the rank, there are various advantages, such as permission to enter the dungeon and tax reduction, it is the top 100 adventurers who are called rankers and they are ranked by by color, they are in 4 ranks. In front of us is a rather old house, our hero continues to walk along the corridor, because when he was very young, his father was the greatest adventurer for him. He constantly went into the courtyard to see how he works with his weapon, his famous spear, because this is not only because he was his father, but also from a cause of one other reason, because his name was Yusung. He was one of the first generation heroes who could be called adventurers, the first adventurers. After all, despite everything, for those who did not exist at that time, the history of the first generation is the greatest legend, but for that time of people it was hell. Many just died, died in dozens, hundreds, and even more, then there was not enough information about the dungeon, as well as what monsters were in it. They were inhabited. They could at one time meet a monster like Kakamula, even though it was a young individual, they simply did not understand what to oppose, because only during our hero's time monsters are considered easy prey, but then it definitely was not considered so. Because for adventurers of that era they were an unknown disaster, monsters could always prepare something unexpected that no adventurer could have imagined. It was a time when there were no skills to fight monsters, even titanium alloy couldn't handle it, there were no items that are so common now. It was in such conditions that first-generation adventurers went through trial and error, I risk my life, just like Yao Ryong's father. So it was the survivors who passed on the experience and achievements to the next generation, and became heroes, an incredible torment, it was our hero's father who was nicknamed the Dragon Slayer, Yusung. This is the nickname of who is the first comma and it was he who was the best adventurer in Asia. He was not just a father, but also a man whom our hero respected more than anyone else in the world, he read him invincible. But at one point his father started coughing up blood, the reason for this was poison, so at one point, during his research, his father was poisoned with a deadly poison. As well as at any other time, the father tried to overcome it, but years later his body was already at its limit. Colleagues whom the father assured in his life took advantage of his father's vulnerability and appropriated his achievements property. For many years he suffered both mentally and physically. Ya Ryan visited him constantly. But even so, a year later, when the world began to forget about the dragon slayer Yu Sung, he was no longer like that hero. Because he had lost everything and suffered from an incurable poison, all that was left of him was the forgotten memory of the white adventurer. Our hero recalled it all with an incredibly more aching heart, and the brokers were already telling the bald man that everything went smoothly, just as someone was saying. After all, he could not believe that his bully would lose to some kid, but the broker said that it probably happened that he was not a good adventure, because bragging about the fact that someone beat up a friend is definitely a sign that he is weak. Ya Ryan talked about how if there were only two reasons why a good adventurer would retire, it was either because his body was destroyed to the point where he couldn't continue, or because he died while exploring. Our hero does not know what the bully's salary was, but if more is minimal, then it is better to fire him, because everyone can build a strong character. The broker approached the bald man and then threw his arm over his shoulder. He said that despite all this smallness of the group, but he asked the bald man for some concepts, and also replied that the payment I will earn now I have been doubled. The bald guy started shouting, he didn't like it, he didn't like the bullshit they just told him, but the broker was sure that it was the bald guys who started provoking them and they don't do anything for free. The bald man realized that he was definitely not in the right situation to argue, so he agreed to this price. While our hero was beating the water, because he was a little thirsty, the broker asked him if he had heard anything about the Imperial Wasp. As soon as Yao Ryan heard the name, he immediately spat out the water that he had been drinking until recently. He asked her if he was going to have to fight her, because that was too much. We can see that the Imperial Wasp, a monster whose danger level is considered to be the highest, is not only in Korea, but also in the whole world. It was the same ill-fated place called Yueido where the Imperial Wasp merged its nest that became the Korean Demon Realm with the highest difficulty. The broker lit up his cigarette and said that even a top-ranked adventurer would find it difficult to deal with one of them, because these things are flying all over the place, so it's impossible for a smuggler's level. But what about a white-ranked adventurer? Because according to that bald man, there was a big raid yesterday that wasn't covered. The government army and a family of high-ranked adventurers formed a sweep squad. Apparently, our hero began to count his chances, because he began to count people. But even though he was in the calculations, the broker started saying that it could be said that most of the stars in Korea were supposed to be there. But if the shifts found out about it, they would just go crazy if even two of them were in the same place. They definitely weren't able to achieve their original goal, eradication. But it looks like they still managed to track down the queen, after all, one of the seven stole the royal jelly imperial sun and hired a smuggler to bring it out. Our hero was unfamiliar with this name, so the broker explained that royal jelly is the same food supplement that wasps feed the newborn queen. The main character began to understand something, but at the same moment he clutched his head, because why would white rank adventurers hire a smuggler just for the sake of some food supplement? 
but the broker said that there have already been several cases of imperial wasp royal jelly entering the world, and from what he knows, if a person eats it, they might even rise from the dead. Then all of us can understand that all the paths to the dungeons are strictly controlled, that's what the Adventurer Association of the government claim. But naturally all this is a lie, in front of the very person who just smoked a cigarette all this time, there was a gate that immediately began to open as soon as he touched it. He said that despite the fact that he says words of caution every time, he still wants to wish good luck to our hero, because this work will be especially tedious. Ya Ryong so the brokers decided to think with their smoke and cigarettes right at him. The main character didn't understand why he was doing this, so the broker explained that he was just wondering why his employee didn't care what he said. Because is it because of his words that even the dead can be resurrected thanks to the royal jelly? The main Ya Ryong. But he replied that this was not so, because rumors always make a big deal out of a molehill, because even if it is considered a cure for everything, it will not be able to cure his father, where if something like this existed at all, his father would never let anyone go. It was at this moment that the gate opened in front of our hero, as soon as he pushed it a little forward, the sun shone strangely bright on him. And we understand that after adhesion, dungeons appeared here and there all over the earth, among them there are two that are considered the greatest in Korea. The first one is located in Jeju, which is the same dungeon that merged with the volcanic mountain range. And the second Igor Jane Ugly is a place that is located in the place where Ueido used to be. In the center of Seoul, in front of us is the former Boram district. Hazard rating D+. With Ueido at the center, Mapo, Yongsen, and Yongyungpo were all covered by this very dungeon. But most of it remains unexplored, and many adventurers die trying to explore this region. It seems that someone managed to force the goods instead of the destination from the danger rank S to the part of the danger rank D+. However, the connection was lost in an unambiguous place, many doubted that such a person could have escaped, most likely, an injury or accident killed him. The broker thought that most likely there was a lot of shit here to get out of there, so our hero's job at that time was just to inspect the designated place and bring items. But if there are any, because he continues what he said earlier, then the broker asked not to worry his head and focus on work. Ya Ryan, in turn, asked the broker with a smile on his face if he really thought that he would just run away with the goods. But of course the white-haired man replied that they thought that the main character was so stupid. He just asked him to be careful, and also remember that the royal jelly imperial cheese is very valuable, but it's not the only one who is willing to risk their lives to get it. It was at this point that Ya Ryong was hoping for a mask, and also started moving around using ropes to get exactly where he needed to go to land. He was sure that the entire forest in which he was this jelly, so at the same time realized that most likely the entire forest ran to this smell, in front of his face was a huge footprint of someone's foot. While our hero was looking at everything that was around him, we could see that a certain elf named Jin Seram, who was only in her first year at the Warrior Academy, was not in a very favorable position. Because now she is facing the biggest problem in her entire life, what it should have been it might have been an easy dungeon trip to take the exam, but instead, what she encountered was a monster that definitely shouldn't be in this place. She was scared, because she didn't understand what was going on. And we only understand that the test was supposed to be simple, because within the given time you just had to collect as many coins as possible that were hidden in the dungeon. Even though it was a test used to simulate a real combat situation, then in passing the test was the lowest rank, this test should have been a piece of cake. Everyone thought so, because this place was considered a training ground for beginners, but of course it was not so, because everyone believed that the monsters that lived there were the most and had a low level of intelligence. But right at that moment in front of the girl there was a monster that looked behind the trees, smiled at the sight of her, after all, I thought that I had already won. At that moment, the elf realized that it was simply impossible to escape, it was at that moment that she realized that she could only hope for a miracle, and even then she decided to fight. She took out her bow, in which three arrows were inserted, while the titan primate, which was still young for its size, was already as large as three stars of danger. Of course, all the shots that she shot at him just got stuck in his hand, without causing any harm, and no matter how many shots she made, it was simply impossible to break through the skin of that very primate. She tried to use her skills, but the primate just smiled, he smiled with madness, because the attacks of the elves are just they couldn't hurt him. She decided that even though there was no time to give up, she wanted him to come a little closer to her, because she knew that he wouldn't even dodge or block. She thought that he could just let down his guard a little bit, so at that moment we could notice that it was Jin Seram who could use their magic, because she is a magic archer. And she herself had already used her skill, which was able to produce an incredible fire shot that burned everything in its path. We could see that the type of magic that was contained in the arrows could vary depending on the target, because what she decided to choose as a last resort was called an explosion, capable of dealing the greatest damage that she could. This should have been exactly enough to kill any monster with a three-star danger rand, but of course it all went wrong, because it would only have been possible under one condition if the elf managed to get in. But of course the monster jumped a little higher, 
catching on a nearby tree on her side. Despair appeared on her face because she couldn't have expected the monster to dodge so easily before she released the arrow, it just jumped. She just couldn't believe it. Because it jumped, knowing that she couldn't repeat this attack, what did she have to do, really run? She began to go down in a run, but the monster, as befits him, began to run at her with the same crazy face until something hit him with such force that he flew off, it was our hero who was already right there. The elf was shocked, because he thought that she had seen herself saved. But Ya Ryang knew that he had slapped the monster on the chin properly, but it didn't seem to be enough, because the monster was still standing on its own two feet. It was at this moment that the main character took out a certain tool, with which he began to rush head-on directly at the monster. The elf thought that he would die? Well, the only thing our heroes shouted about was that she closed her eyes. At first, the elf didn't understand what he was talking about, but as soon as he closed his eyes, as soon as he pointed that tool directly at the monster, an incredibly bright light was heard, after which the monster began to scream. Our hero did all this operation so quickly and efficiently that the only thing he cared about was that he had used up his last tool, it was a stun torch. This tool was made from the scales of a shimmering fish that lives in deep sea dungeons, and it has the ability to immobilize, which is incredible for its price. It was once loved by countless adventurers, but due to its clumsy use, there were some who lost their eyesight, which eventually led to its ban. By the time the elf opened her eyes, our hero told me that he had saved her, so she should be on her own, because she still has a few seconds left before the monster comes to its senses. Ya Ryong started to run, because no matter what happens in the dungeon, no one will help him, because he remembered the words of the broker that smugglers are just cockroaches for everyone, because they are supposed to be a good reward, so if that forest is anywhere, it will definitely trample down. While he was thinking about this, I decided to turn around to check if he was being followed, but the only person who was following him was that elf. He realized that there was nothing better to do than hide, so as soon as he jumped high up, he immediately disappeared, which made Elphica very surprised, because she was sure that he was right in front of her. Just as she was thinking that, Jaren fell from the branches right on top of her and pinned her head right to the ground with his staff, he couldn't understand what the elf actually wanted from him. But she, lying with a satisfied face, wanted to say something to Lee that she was grateful that he saved her. The main character thought that you were bullying him, because does he really look like a fool? So Verifica said that of course that wasn't the only reason she went after him, because she knew perfectly well that he was a smuggler, which was why she wanted to offer them a job. Our hero noticed a familiar sign on her t-shirt, so he warned her that he definitely wouldn't help again, and also that he wasn't interested in knowing how crazy a warrior school student born with a silver spoon in his mouth was, because he would really kill her if it didn't get in his way. As soon as our protagonist turned his back on her, we could all see that the reward for the smuggler message was 50 million won, while the reward for the capture was about 450 million won. He turned to her with an incredibly aggressive face, he was serious, but behind him he saw an item like in Kill's blood. It could only be bought by catching at least five of the same ones as our hero. She said it was an advance, but if he helped her with the exam, then she would definitely pay this one even more. Our hero thought that this was crazy, because it turned out that she was not just spoiled, but also a crazy elf. But of course it didn't matter if she was crazy or not, because it was important or what, that this could also be an opportunity to change life upside down. Our protagonist had no choice but to exhale and say that he assumed it would turn out this way, so he told her everything in turn, that it was her own fault. Because he really didn't want to kill her, but he already told her that she had a few seconds, because right above them was the one who was waiting for her. The same monster that had already caught up with them. That he didn't give her the stick just to make her stare, because if you remember the attack that she carried earlier, then you need to do the same, he asked you to direct the magic from his staff and throw it back to him. The elf was scared, she screamed that she didn't have any magic power left, but the only thing Ya Ren said was that she should climb up with it, because he didn't think he could fight with his hands for a long time. In turn, she realized that she had less than a quarter of her magic power left. With this she would not be able to deal any damage to the monster, she continued to charge the staff with her own power, and also thought that instead it would be better to just run away herself while the monster's attention was drawn to our hero, but still gave him which was already charged with magic, she really thought she was crazy for not running away. But the main character said that he was disappointed in her, because in that staff, something gave him was less than a quarter of the of the attack that she inflicted the first time, but still he believes that it was enough. We know that the students of the warrior school have heard this so many times that they simply can't count it, because when fighting a monster, the most important thing is not only brute force, but also timing, as well as accurately hitting attacks in the right place. In other words, what adventurers should hone first of all this feeling and ability. It was at this moment that our hero with the help of a staff was able to strike a blow to the throat, or rather the chin of the monster, that it only opened its mouth. 
This is most likely the childhood memories of the same elf she constantly went out in her academy, while heading to her limousine, where her butlers, as well as drivers, were waiting for her. She was saying goodbye to her friends, but the only thing she heard behind her was that everyone was saying that she was incredibly lucky, because she had everything that others could only dream of. In fact, that was exactly how it was, she could get everything that came in her way. Even a company that ranked fourth in South Korea's business circles Chinsen Group. The heir of this company married an elf from another world, so it was in this marriage that Jin Sae Ram was born, the same elf who was sitting in that very rich car. She constantly watched them as they went to the dungeon, but even with all her training, it did not bear fruit, because there was too much human blood in her instead of elven. She was practically no different from ordinary people, many elves thought that the strange decision was that her father did not stop but he also encouraged me to do it. But even though her father did so, he felt that he made the right choices, because this is the path that his daughter chose, before us was Jin Seung Jayu, Sae Ram's father. At the moment, he was the head of the special development department at Chinsen Group. He said that you don't have to have the abilities of an elf to become a hunter. The elf, in turn, agreed with this because everything that he said was true, but for a person such abilities will not be superfluous, but she is not much superior to the average teenager. So he asked to clarify one detail. He said that the daughter of that very person is not an ordinary person, because for sure she will not give up just like that in her tenacity, she is like his sister. Even though humans can't compare to them, the elves, because even if they die as a monster and then resurrect, and also if she tries her best, she will probably achieve an average level. Because for an ordinary person, even such words will pass for praise and recognition. But his daughter with he possessed too much besides his abilities, she possessed wealth, fame, and genes. All of which could instantly devalue her efforts and make her a laughing stock, even possibly so that she would become an outcast, from which absolutely everyone would turn away. For a long time she would definitely not be able to withstand such an attitude, that's exactly what they thought that's all, because abilities don't just fall from the sky like a bloodline or something. As soon as we found out the whole story of this very elf, only by that time already a giant, she couldn't believe you, because they were the same age. Our hero reproached himself, because most likely the mask flew off, which the broker asked not to break, because there was a very expensive thing in front of him, even our hero thought that it was too ordinary. But the broker replied that the mask allowed him to see interference in face recognition, and also had voice changes, more than four types of magic were cast in it. But that was when it was destroyed, and he knew that Tom had just been a little unlucky that day. While he was standing there trying to cover his face, Lyfika asked if he was in pain by any chance, or if he was at school. Our hero, in turn, became a little nervous, he said something nonsense, and also quickly gave him what I promised him. As soon as she held out her hand to him, along with the amulet, our hero immediately grabbed it. He thought that she was just a rich girl, and also hoped that in his hands there was no fake. At that moment, while the main protagonist continued to look at the amulet, the girl only smiled. She asked, after all, does the one who saved her really need money? Because she understands that not only in school, in any institution where future hunters are trained, the tuition fee is not small, so she could help with this. But Ya Ren, without even listening, said that he does not go to such places. He said that the elf did not turn to him because he does not study at the school for hunters. He was not even close. The girl was shocked because who then taught this fighting technique to our hero? But our character answered only the word that no one taught, because he is self-taught, which caused an incredible surprise in the elf, even more than before. She started shouting that our heroes are full of nonsense, because such movements, a sense of time simply could not be in a person who was self-taught, so in the end, the game was over. At the same time, our hero threw his card in her face, where it was written that he was only studying at Dongan High School. He said that there was nothing to think about, because it was just a school with a liberal arts background. The elf, it was in her hands was scared, she said that this cannot be exactly, that there is definitely something unclean, but our hero said that there may not believe him, but she is also obliged now to show either a student or another document. By that time, he had already received her business card, where her name was written, as well as the fact that they were the same age. He immediately put her student's badge in his pocket, which caused a surprise on the elf's face. She could not understand why he needed it, but our hero became a little angry, because he said that it was she who wanted to give him a job. So he thought it was necessary, because she already saw his face, so he wanted to take everything he could so that she wouldn't change her mind later. And besides, it wasn't over yet, so at the same time he asked her to come up to him and take a picture, which she did. She was embarrassed, but Ya Ryang said that instead of a contract, she should have known that the smuggler's accomplices were getting exactly the same punishment. So at the same time, Sae Ram realized one thing, that it was possible that she had gotten involved with someone who was much more dangerous than she was. I thought, but it was too late, because the photo was taken, and our hero with an incredibly cruel smile on his face asked her to smile, his eyes shone with the fact that he was ready to work. 
So as soon as the photo was already on our protagonist's phone, he asked what he should do in general, because he had to know exactly what his goals were in order to calculate the cost for himself. The girl immediately replied that he needs to collect coins, because in six hours it is necessary to collect coins that are hidden in different corners of the exam field, and also find a box with a picture of coins, with which she must confirm her identity. She has already found one coin, it is worth finding another one and she will pass the exam, as it's not that far away. Of course, our hero was wondering where the second one was, so the elf replied that it was located where the Eugene shopping center used to be. It was this information that shocked our smuggler, who was already eating his chocolate bar. He said that this is why everything turned out that way. Something came across that monster not by chance, because our hero is also looking for something and it is located inside that shopping center. Most likely, he told her what he wanted to find, just screamed at it. She screamed that it was very dangerous to go to the Heavenly Wasp. But despite all the elf's exclamations, Ya Ren just continued eating his chocolate bar and said that he wasn't looking for Rochelle, he was looking for something like honey. Because it has a very strong smell that attracts monsters, so most likely this monster that they defeated just recently was also just walking back. Our smuggler didn't care, but he sort of told her that she had to send it there in person, and whether the coins were definitely there. She thought for a while, but still said that there were simply no more coins left in other places. The rest of the coins were already collected by other teams. At that moment, he understood what was wrong, because since there are other teams, then it is clear why one went like this, so he said or what. That it would be even better for him, because he suggested to do so, that he would get her a coin and she goes, that's what will be his job. He asked about the price, so at the same time, the elf girl replied that it was 950 million won, which just amazed our hero. Even though this girl said that this was all the cash she could use right now, she even said that if it wasn't enough, then you should give her some time. But he said that of course there would be enough to start with, because if there were additional expenses, also additional reasons, then they would pay. At that time it was simply not necessary, so he asked if they were left at all, then they should already go forward to their goal. The elf was once again convinced that Jaren is incredibly fast. Of course, she didn't see his face, which was simply shocked by the amount he had just heard, and he even thought that he should have asked for more. While they were running, the elf had one question that our hero was ready to answer. She asked him, did he really not study anywhere? But our protagonist said that he can't say that he didn't learn from anyone at all, because in his childhood he did a little something. But at the same time he noticed that there were monsters ahead, so he asked to get ready. There were Clasteraptors ahead, who lived in the old Boreum area, level there are about two stars of danger. Our hero, of course, broke into battle, but the elf, like a real archer, just took and jumped back. We can understand that Jaren has never been trained in the hunter's technique anywhere, because most of his skills were obtained as a result of experience when he risked his own life and fought with his bare hands. But of course, as it happens, there was one exception. As a child, he watched his father's technique while he was training, and it was she who taught him how to use it in a simple way. The first of them was a needle that strengthened everything that is available, or rather speed, strength, body weight, and also directed the enemy's weak point. It might seem easy, just taking on your opponent, but in reality it's not so easy, because the senses of the ability are the result of experience. Even among high-rank hunters, not many can say that they have mastered such a technique on their own, but Ya Ren has mastered it perfectly. As soon as the monsters were defeated, the elf said that there was something strange, or rather that these monsters are collected at least five individuals, to which the smuggler replied that it means not only she suffered damage because of the royal jelly, because soon all sorts of creatures will gather around them, so he said that they needed to take a little break and immediately move on. Well, even at this moment, or did Fika not miss the opportunity to ask our hero if he really received any individual lessons as a child? Of course, Ya Ryan replied that there were no lessons, because he just watched the training a few times, and then started repeating everything. All this information shocked the elf even more, these words of our hero just stuck in her head, he saw that she looked strange, that side was looking at him, so he replied that he was infuriating her. Ya Ryan couldn't understand it, but at the same time, she threw him a strange ampoule, an ampoule of stamina that was worth about 1,100,001. She told him to drink it, because he probably wasn't in the best condition either. In turn, the main character replied that if you gave him the ampoule just because he annoys her, then you could have spoken better of him, but to her surprise, he just put it in his pocket, said that he could sell it later. The girl blushed and asked if our hero knew how much it was worth, because it was only worth a few one. But Ya Ryong told Lee that he knew, because if you sell this ampoule on the black market, you can get just the same million won. This is what caused the elf to misunderstand, her mind went blank at once, because our hero turned out to eat stranger food every time. And at the same time he has said that Taras drank this ampoule, then you should not sit there for a long time, they should have already left, while I thought that rich children are very strange. 
At this point, as soon as the two of them arrived at the same store, Ya Ryan once again wanted to clarify that their goals are not to be reluctant, they just need to safely get what each of them needs and leave from there. Because no matter what monster is inside, you need to keep yourself in control and follow the instructions a smuggler, she had studied a lot, and survival was exactly his specialty, so he asked her to entrust it to him. At this moment, something strange was happening to see Rom, she couldn't understand how she felt right now, because she had spent half a year in the School of Heroes, during which she was unable to gain recognition and settle down there, she was going to go to the danger zone with someone for the first time. This was all very exciting for her, but as soon as when they entered the store, they saw something that no one else would want to see. Each of them saw it for the first time, they saw the remains from all the monsters that were there for them before. We, in turn, understand that a person is a much more courageous being than he thinks, because it is only necessary to prepare and he will be able to face any situation. And if we talk about problems, they can arise even when what is happening is beyond what is expected. The elf thought that all these monsters that lived in this area were quite dangerous even for professional hunters, so what was there inside that could injure so much? But our hero told her that in order for her to be more careful, because there was definitely something very dangerous inside, Delphica knew about it. Ya Ren understood, knew something about it, but she was just surprised, because it turned out to be much worse than she thought, but this definitely doesn't change anything, because there was a monster called Chopping Rib Ahead, whose danger level ranged from 2 to 3 stars, and he immediately took out his own a huge tongue, and grabbed the staff of our hero, thereby throwing it right to the side. Despite all this, that the weapon was already lost from his hands, our protagonist took and jumped right on his head, knocking him out. I said that she was very scared, because I thought that he died here, and he turned out to be tenacious. But it was to this that our staff replied that it was not a matter of survivability, because he was specially left alive so that there would be a warning for those who would go there. We understand that the chopping rib has one strange property, that when life is threatened because of this, a terrible cry notifies other monsters. The elf couldn't understand, because who could possibly do such a thing? So at that very moment, a man in a white robe came out right above them, he said it was him. He couldn't keep awake and wait for him because there were more of those things than he thought, because as soon as he got them out, he was overwhelmed fatigue. The elf thought that he was a hunter, but only then did she take the man's words seriously, and also realized that they probably knew our hero, judging by the expression on Yaren's face. The hunter went on to say that it was all rather strange, because everyone in front of him was quite small for smugglers, but at the same time he noticed the badge of the school of heroes on the elf's shirt. At the same time, he jumped right down to them and said that he didn't care what kind of alliance they had, but he was very sorry, because they would have to die in the place they were in now. Alifica's knees began to tremble, and our hero asked her not to talk to him, because now the person who stood in front of them like an unusual hunter somehow thought that it was a villain who wanted to kill our protagonist and then get the royal jelly. Ya Ryang said that he didn't seem to have anything to do with his client, because how was he even going to deal with the consequences if he stole someone else's? Even with all this, the man replied that he didn't know, because it was worth worrying about if he was found out, because by the way, he was lucky, he accidentally heard that his colleague was going to play games with a precious thing. So he had originally intended to attack when the monster was heading there, but he knows that they always come as someone wants them to. And he even feels sorry that he didn't succeed in completing the plan, because he saw the monster run away in this direction, and he just couldn't find it. He even realized that there must surely be a shelter where the treasure could be hidden. At the same time, Ya Ryong realized that the connection to the person in charge was not cut off because of the heavenly wasp's poison, but because of that person's handiwork. Even though it wasn't necessary for Ya Ren to personally fight him to understand one thing, that the man in front of him was incredibly dangerous, he was a true hunter who was completely different from the rabble he had encountered before. So it was at this point that he ordered the elf to find the coin and get out of there, because unlike the hunter, he asked her to leave as soon as possible, because it was no longer dangerous inside the building anyway and it was all thanks to that man. The elf started to say that our hero would be in danger then, but Ya Ren was sure that nothing would change if she stayed there. As soon as he said this, the hunter already started his attack, he said that he had heard everything, that he was already close to them. So our hero blocked his attack with his staff and said that it was the elf who was getting out as soon as possible, because he could only get her money when he was ready. Only she will survive. The hunter who fought with our hero was sure of his victory, he only laughed, because just letting the elves escape was not the best choice. Because the chance of being alive was higher, as long as they stayed together, there was an incredible battle between them. But our hero still did not understand what nonsense he was talking, after all, at the same time, he used his power again and also read the trajectory of his opponent's sword, which also caused him a shock, because he did not expect this from a schoolboy like our hero, he did not even think that he would have to use equipment. 
but despite all this, it turned out that the opponent, or rather Ya Ryong, was higher than a professional, so you will definitely have to work hard to remove that elf from the hero school. He asked not to go to the toilet under you, because it will all take a little time. In front of us was Yang Du Kayan, a gold-ranked hunter who looked completely different now, wearing a strange mask. By that time, while everything was happening in the dungeons, the broker continued to sit on his famous chair and also brewed himself some food. He even suggested this to the bald man so that he also brewed himself a glass and asked him to sit down because our hero will definitely not wake up soon. The bald man looked down on him and thought that the goons were only brawn even though he paid him a lot. He heard that the man boasted about his strength, said that he was a hunter, but a broker, because he lost not because it was stupid, but because he deserved to lose, that he was bald and was very wrong. Because hunters definitely should not fight with ordinary people, also applies to the bully, because he was trained in hunting and exploration, and I like battles with other hunters. It's possible that the monster could have been handled, but it's no surprise that it was made by some smuggler. The bald man started shouting at the broker, saying that he had heard that hunters also fight among themselves, to which the broker replied that this is certainly true, because there are cases when they fight with each other, because the higher their level, the further it can go. Even fellow colleagues who fight together, relying on each other, can stab a close comrade in the back out of greed. The bald man was shocked, because is it really at first that they even kill each other, but the broker said or what, that no one can forbid them, because anything can happen inside the dungeon. Because for example, you can say that it was your comrades who killed the monster, but definitely not the one who actually did it in fact, it doesn't even require an alibi. So to sum up, the higher the level of the hunter, the more they train in anticipation of a battle with each other. But in the case of the bully, he was not a hunter of this level, the fact that he beat up a colleague made the broker laugh, because it even sounded cute. Because if he was caught on the wrong side of the this, then means that this incident happened in her dungeon, there was definitely some trivial skirmish over equipment. The bald man was already completely drooping, because he realized that all the merits that the bully said simply evaporated second by second. So at the same time, the broker started saying that when hunters go out to hunt, they take armor and weapons with them, this assumption does not make much sense. But if he had at least this, this friend could compete. The bald man asked if they were really that important, so in the end, he would not be able to do it. At the same time, the broker replied that it was too much, even too much. It is for hunters of equipment, this is half of their combat power, because our hero noticed that he did not miss his attack, he accurately hit his target, right as it should. But as soon as he thought about it, his opponent said that it was enough to think so much about all sorts of nonsense and immediately went to they say that this is very rude to him and to their own lives. To begin with, he used only a sword, but only then did his legs come into play, with which he kicked our hero straight back, and then he was all grazed by his crack in his sword. He liked it all, telling Ya Ryang to show his best. We understand that this was impossible, because that hunter had a shadow jacket and a plus rank armor. Its properties are that due to the user's blood, it provides support for physical strength, and also forms a cover to protect against blows, these were the basics of the berserk style that Yang Du Kayan used. Ya Ren even knew that it couldn't be that he didn't have weak points, but if he responded relentlessly to the attack, he would definitely die, he knew about this, so at one point our hero was wounded right in the stomach. The hunter thought that he could hold out for a long time, but so our protagonist started saying that today seems to be a special day, because it was his favorite clothes, because despite the blow, he was almost not injured. All this shocked the hunter, so our hero went on to mention that his opponent doesn't mean, though Jia ran and admitted that little pussy out because of his aura. But when you consider the fact that he is an ordinary student who came from nothing, against him was the one who relies entirely on your gear. Because if our protagonist was armor, the outcome to the point would be exactly the other point is the all took the hunter so at the same time he's like rash broke. He began to cry, he was so angry that his aura was felt throughout the county and Jia Ren knew that his enemy in a hurry because he had to destroy it. And to catch up with Si Rum, to shut her up, so the only thing our protagonist did. So this is the theme you were just buying time, but his opponent was more and more hurried, which allowed him to catch his mistakes, time after time he used his new equipment. He used his second technique, which started in childhood, when spying on the father. It was impossible to perform with the forces of Ya Ryong because it took the power of the enemy and used against him in order to inflict a powerful blow, which can alone. It was the same technique that he himself had not fully mastered, called Swell. With it, he nailed his opponent directly to the ground, even though it was a technique that required an incredible level of concentration as well as strength. Until that day, he definitely hadn't thought that this technique would ever be used against a human, and he couldn't even imagine that there would be a professional hunter who would attack so recklessly. Ya Ryong told him to give up, because if he didn't accept, then he wouldn't be able to beat him. But by that time something happened that our hero couldn't have expected at all, the hunter just took out a dagger and stuck it in his stomach. The hunter was sure that no matter how it all ended, he had to win, he had to destroy our hero. 
His eyes began to glow bright red and his entire body blistered, which could only mean that he was serious. By that time, on the fifth floor of the shopping center, the elf had already found the very box to which she was supposed to log in and then go back. Well, as soon as she touched it, I felt an incredible crack of the building. She remembered our hero who told her to get out. She even understood that nothing would change even if she returned there, and we remembered the face of that monster while holding a coin in her hand. She tried to reassure herself that our hero definitely had a plan in mind, an escape plan, so she had to be calm. This is the story of the hunter himself, Du Jian. Since childhood, he had been bothering absolutely everyone, he had beaten up just anyone, forced them to apologize to him, he was just a genius. Because it was from childhood that everything was easy for him, and he knew it, he was incredibly capable, his abilities were recognized by absolutely all adults. His peers worshipped him, but there was one thing, which he couldn't possibly do, he couldn't take the hero high school exams. Because they said that you can only get there through connections, many even said that you look more at money than abilities, so maybe this was true. If it was a contest of skill and ability, then he definitely wouldn't have lost. Unlike ordinary students, he was a chosen genius who constantly scored so many points that he was in first place, the difference in points was incredibly huge. Everyone said that he should become a ranker, so even at graduation, the headmasters themselves congratulated him and said that he graduated from his school with a brilliant finish. He said that he would definitely become a first-class hunter, he wished that Tom would never turn up his nose and only move forward. Of course, that same hunter was too arrogant in his youth, he thought that some loser who was retired to teach children in school would still see that he would look down on him from somewhere that ordinary people couldn't reach. Well, of course, as soon as he became a hunter, there was an incident that turned his life upside down, he was covered in blood, he was scared, he saw in front of him a person who came running to an emergency. Of course, Yang Dukayan didn't understand what it was just now, because the person in front of him had single-handedly destroyed the monster that had killed his entire team, and the person's gaze was also familiar to him, as was the gaze of those he was looking at, so it was only then that he was the first to realize that the person's words the old man was not advice, but comfort, he was not the chosen one, but just one of those or ordinary people, but maybe just a little bit better. So at the same time, we are again transported to the battle of our hero along with the same Yang Du Kayan. Yang said that the jacket that he was wearing was made from a living monster Karava pizza. He allowed him to absorb the blood that flows through his heart, this is the price for killing Ya Ren, which our hero was certainly happy about, because he thought that it only sounds quite dangerous, but in fact the speed of the same monster is not so high. That's what he thought in the beginning, but at one point, as soon as he was hit by a blow that he was still able to block, he was already in a very bad state, because despite his extraordinary reaction speed, as well as excellent abilities, he was only smuggling. Ya Ryan couldn't understand why it was such a compliment all of a sudden, since it didn't concern Yang Du Kayan in any way. While he was saying this, he was taking the same elixir that the elf had given him. So at the same moment, as soon as he took the same elixir, the demon said that since the main character was acting so complacent, then he was ready to trample on someone like him. The demon was sure that he could handle it, but our hero at that time thought that everything was fine, because physically there were no problems. The demon of course continued to shout that he was doing great. He wanted our hero to show as much enthusiasm as possible, but Ya Ryan was only focused on himself, because you understood that the demon will not be able to strike endlessly, because if it feeds on blood, it will eventually reach the limit, you need to force it spend it and draw blood, then use the needle technique. But at one point he realized that he had reached a dead end, it was too late, because the demon was near him, it was above him. The main character was already thinking that everything was lost, but at the same moment a fire arrow flew into the demon, it was an elf, and our hero realized that she was actually very naughty, this impressed him, so at the same moment he struck the hunter himself, so at the same time the moment he just took and disconnected. The elf thought that most likely he just passed out, and our hero said that people like him should live for a long time, because you should not worry too much about him, he even took a photo to most likely show his boss, the broker. After which, she said that he would no longer bother them, otherwise he would have to say goodbye to his career and reputation, and also said that they could consider something to have paid off their debt. At first, their wreck didn't understand what he was talking about, so our hero had to remind her that he had saved her once in his life, or rather even twice, because first when I was attacked by a monster, and then when she ran after him. He said that he would count everything for two times, which made the elf blush, she couldn't understand, because really our hero just can't say thank you, which is so easy to say. By this point, as soon as Ya Ryan walked away, smiling at the same time, they followed the sweet smell, directly to the person who was holding the briefcase, he was dead.
But our hero noticed that the elf was not very surprised, so he asked her not to be surprised, because he warned her that there was nothing good inside, so he decided to check only for the presence of that very honey. It was a very rare smell, a distant and sweet aroma that made you forget about all thoughts, as in general he didn't have to come to the smell, he even wondered if there was a royal jelly inside, too. After all, if this is all so, then he asked the elf to get out of here as soon as possible, because it is not known who else might appear there. After that, they decided that it was time to go to the first floor, so the elf noticed that the one they had recently beaten had already disappeared, and that person was shouting from the entrance about what they would see again. Because he had memorized their faces, he would definitely kill them in any way that they would regret what they did today. This guy was running, he was glad that he could, but at the same moment a monster appeared that could eat him with just a bite, so our hero offered to go out in a safe place, to which the elf agreed. At one point, our protagonist reached the safe zone, so he asked Elphica what was going on with the exam. But the elf said that she still had plenty of time, so our hero held out his hand to her and said that it was nice to meet her. There was a lot of things, but in any case, they managed to finish their business safely, they shook hands, and also Ya Ren at the end told her to remember. And a bank transfer, he told her not to forget if she didn't want to see him again. Well, just as he was about to leave, the elf said something that surprised him, she suggested that he meet again, so in one moment Ya Ryong was already back, which surprised his broker, he even noticed that he had to work hard. As soon as the broker opened the box, he noticed that there was the same royal jelly. He even found out that if he managed to sell it, there would definitely be a fuss. Because how many tasks can you afford with this money? In general, our hero is well done. He will definitely transfer money to him tomorrow. But as soon as the broker looked at him, he noticed that something was wrong with him. So the broker asked if it was because of that hunter who died in the fight with him. But our protagonist said that he didn't die because of a fight with him, and he doesn't have to feel his wine. So the broker said that something else probably happened. But to this he replied that nothing happened, so he asked if he could take what he wanted. It was lying with the royal jelly, because that's not it. The broker looked in the box and said that he could take it, because smugglers can take everything that is not related to the order, this is their rules, but the broker was also interested, because what kind of baby will eat this jelly? Our hero did not understand anything at first, so the broker started saying that although it can bring even a dying person back to life, however, it has a more attractive property than this, they say it can expand the ability of the one who eats it, although not many people know about it, because jelly is more effective if you eat it in childhood, so I will not feed such a thing to someone who has no hope, it should be at least a student of the school of heroes. Our hero was already leaving, and the broker told him to send greetings to his father, because recently his condition has worsened dramatically. By this point, as soon as our hero started to come out from where his boss was, he remembered that the elf said that it was not a joke, apparently there would be an exam for transferring to their school. At least one or two capable students were recruited from the set every year, but she was sure that it was she who had our hero will turn out, she asked him to go to school. The school of heroes. We can understand that no hunter can clear the dungeon alone. No matter how excellent qualities he has, no matter how strong he is, something can always happen that no one can expect, in other words. It is almost impossible to cope with the endless waves of attacking monsters alone, so you need a team. Each hunter there applies their own skill. Thus the team members make up for each other's shortcomings and overcome obstacles that they meet on their way, while hitting monsters. This is the dungeon cleanup that should take place, and in the school of heroes, as the elf said, some separate special groups are created every year. Our hero asked what this means, because is it really when you choose one side and fight with the other? But the elf replied that she would definitely not talk about such childish jokes, because in her course there are two groups, they are headed by two students who are in the top three. It was then that our hero asked, after all, is the team recruited from those who are part of one of the groups, so why then could the elf not get into one, why do the teachers not say anything, isn't it all strange? But the elf only said that the search for a team depends on the student's ability, and she understood what our protagonist wants to say in his own words. He said that he understands that he lacks abilities and she herself knows that she cannot become an excellent student. But she is not so bad at school that she does not sign into any team if you don't belong to any groups, but they created their own team because it already said earlier that there are two groups. The leader of one of them is just disliked or fake, although outwardly it does not show, just weaves its intrigues behind its back so that it is not accepted anywhere. So the hero asked if there could be such a thing, something just stole her boyfriend. But the elf was sure that this was not the case at all, in general, she led to the fact that she keeps without a team, alone. But in the second and third years she can no longer do this, so she wants to hire our hero, because of his abilities, and if only he is near, then she will be able to survive. Our hero was sitting at home, bandaging himself and thinking that her proposal was ridiculous, but at one point she had already reached the dungeon barrier. Branch 12. She was upset, because she thought that our protagonist would not call back, but her thoughts were hindered by the teacher who met her near the tree, 
Elphica asked, because it also happened, because the exams were not over yet, but the teacher said that there was some problem, because some people had monsters that were found in some areas. It shouldn't be there, he says that it's good that no one was injured, but there was a signal that in some places it was impossible to continue conducting the exam, and the place where she found the coin was exactly in that zone. He walked up to her and asked clearly, was there really no problem during the exam? But the elf, even though something really happened, said that she didn't see anything, so the teacher only asked her to stand behind him because there was a monster behind her. It looked much stronger than the one she met before, it was a titanium monkey, already an adult, the level of which reached three or four stars. This all turned out to be very strange to the teacher because he knew that in these parts such people do not live, if something that led him there. The elf immediately thought that it might be just because of that smell, and once again asked the teacher to stand behind him, because all the teachers of the school of heroes worked as hunters in the past, most of them graduated from this school. So being retired due to injuries, they could no longer protect dungeons, although this was just an opinion from the outside, but the anti-tyranny fighter, when he was not yet 30 and was a ranker, got such a nickname. The teacher at the same time, as soon as the same titanium monkey flew at him, lied all his strength into his iron fist, so that after one moment, as soon as he picked up speed, the head from the monkey's shoulders just flew off, he did not have half of his head. So the teacher said that he was in a normal situation life has to restrain itself, so she was lucky, apparently something terrible could have happened. But still he shook her shoulder and said that it was good that she was still alive, so he suggested that we go back. It was he who did not pay attention to other people's opinions, because he was a hero himself and trained future heroes. The action is transferred to the training camp for basic skills of the high school of heroes, where many students have already gathered. They were interested, because it will also happen to those who sent a request for help, because most likely they will retake. And does this mean that many people were lucky, in any case, those who sent them in that direction were weaklings, it was the same one who was coming to them. It was the same elf that the teacher asked to wait on the spot because as soon as everyone returned, he asked her to check if everything was in place and change into new clothes. School uniform. As soon as the elf appeared, the one who continued to oppress her said that she had warned everyone that she would be fine, she didn't know how to deal with others. But she definitely grasped the situation quickly. It was Anisha who showed with all her appearance that she wasn't really worried even though I talked about it. The elf said that it was unexpected enough for her to worry about her, so Anisha pretended to care and said that she was rather offended, calling her a knee. We see that already six years ago, the uncle of that very girl, the very one or fake, tried to teach her how to use magic, because until that moment her magic was very weak. He constantly told her that you need to increase your strength, it was Zeke Esser, he told her that you just need to focus, not to be distracted by anything else, the elf was only 11 years old, she was trying to use magic as hard as she could. So as soon as Zeke noticed that she couldn't do something, he offered to finish it, even though it was better than last time, although it was still a little weak. As soon as the elf looked back, she noticed Anisha Esser, who was also 11 years old, the uncle was also replaced, that Tanya was similar to a half-elf. And this was manifested not only in appearance, because Anisha's ability to control magic is higher than most purebloods, he told his student that her cousin is just a genius. After all, if even an elf goes along the path of a hunter, then most likely they will be compared, although this will be even good. But it's better to be careful, because if this retreats, it can crush her, because she also has the same cruel look that is inherent in the most cruel people. So as soon as Anisha noticed the look of that very elf on herself and said something, she just can't understand, because why doesn't she want to take that very Fika to the team, because her quality is quite lacking, if you think about it at all. The elf of course said that Anisha could join her team, but as soon as she said this, Anisha began to deny it, they say that this would be too much, because despite the fact that he would like, but they are both fighters at a long distance, but if they were at least on the same level, then why take back, putting two people in one position? Anisha returned to her true form, her face showing all the disbelief as well as hatred for the elf. She also added that the other team member could certainly be harmed by this, but still asked the elf not to worry, because maybe they were building a retake of the exam. But at the same time the elf came right up to her and said that she didn't care if there was a retake, or not, because she knew that she was going to be able to that I passed it. Anisha at the same time resurrected his hands and said that there is a good fellow, because it seems that something really tried very hard, but also asked not to overdo it, because in the end she will still get the company of her father. This, of course, infuriated the elf, she was very aggressive, but naturally in her teeth she restrained all her emotions that were bubbling in her soul. But Anisha, as soon as the elf turned away, she again showed her true face, and I didn't like that Kazuna was fighting because of all her strength. Lesser than Nami Seoul University Hospital, Seong Yu. Our protagonist escaped in one of the doors, they opened it, he was very out of breath, running at full speed, he met two employees at the hospital there, who asked him if he was a relative or not. 
Our hero did not answer, because from his appearance it was already clear that he was a relative, so at the same time he asked if there was a sudden attack or why then he was called. The doctors looked at each other and said that the patient, or rather the father of our hero, has a very rare case because you can even say that it is the only one in the whole world. After all, even up until then, after being poisoned by dragon poison, no one had survived. The main character said that even modern medical technologies, even thanks to them, healing is completely impossible, but if there is a way to suppress the disease with painkillers. The doctor exhaled and said that of course this can be arranged, but the problem is in the composition of these painkillers, because the milk that the super dangerous monsters feed their pets today is one and also the only remedy against poison that can be found near the heavenly tiger whose level reaches all the stars. Our protagonist goes on to say that he knows that this is very rarely serious, but if it's all about money, then the problem is not only in them, where hunters are rumored about a new case. Even a small dose of this potion can increase your muscle strength and resistance strength for a long time. But the problem is that the ingredient is also heavenly tiger milk. The doctor said that the problem is also that before it was possible to get it for money, because it was not particularly used anywhere, but now the situation has changed, entrepreneurs or hunters buying it in very large quantities. The main character was incredibly happy. He hit the table and said that even this cannot be, because is it really impossible to get a small dollar to save just one person? The doctor understood the whole spirit of our hero, so he said that this is the problem, because from one dose that is necessary for his father, you can make several dozen injections of potion, because if more people needed this case, the state set some rules, but for the sake of a single patient in the whole world, everything these people will not give up their profits, but of course they will in turn come across something to do, even without special connections. All this information just hit the main character. He felt that his strength was leaving him, so he went outside, then it was already evening, so he decided to call this very elf. The first thing he asked was before it was too late, because if so, he might agree. The elf thought that he would certainly have some conditions, so as soon as he dictated them, Lyfika said that she should check first, but she thinks that it will work because their company also produces this potion, especially since our hero does not need so much. Our hero felt the same relief, he just couldn't believe it. The elf thought that he was displeased with something, but he said that he agreed, so the elf suggested that we meet on Sunday, because he already had to prepare for exams, preparation definitely wouldn't hurt. At the same time, we see a special research institute of the defense industry Chinson Group, and right at the entrance in front of him is our hero. He turned around, because he noticed that there was an elf standing behind him, who said that he was early, and also asked if he was feeling alright. Well, the only thing he cares about is what are they doing in front of this building. However, the elf, who had already dressed up a lot, and also came to her rich car, said that they would only measure his abilities. We can understand that after the world began to change, people developed abilities that went beyond the laws of nature, so before the merger, ordinary people had D-rank abilities with the exception of mages. When the stats increased by one degree and reached the C-rank, up to people were already called geniuses, and the stats above the B-rank already allowed one to talk about one's abilities as a person. The elf said that in addition to magic power, there are at least five indicators that must be level C, which is when you can become a hunter, because if three of them have reached B-rank, then Ya Ren can apply to the school of heroes, but the rank of his ability was certainly not known. He scratched his head a bit and asked Elphica, doesn't that mean he'll need to go through some sort of physical examination? But the elf said that this is only carried out in childhood, and adolescence is a little more difficult to measure. In the beginning, he wanted to find out how much more difficult it was, but at the same moment he was equipped with a suit that looked like an astronaut's suit, and why he didn't immediately guess when Ta asked how he was feeling. Because at the same moment Geochron was standing in front of him about a certain robot, which of course we had to win. Ya Ryung even realized that if he was there, he needed to work hard, because to be honest, he was curious about his own stats. He was already prepared to attack, but at the same time he was being watched not only by the elf, but also by another scientist, who noticed that our protagonist was confident, because usually everyone was afraid when they first saw golems. After all, if everything was true about what the elf said to the scholar, then it looked like the main character had prepared properly. This scientist had Yung Hee Min, she was a summoner of golems, and also a former huntress who works at the Chinson Group Research Center. The elf started to get a little nervous, saying that this is probably true, that our hero was prepared, so at the same time, the scientists finished their coffee mug, put it on the table and also very quickly pressed the button that launched the golem into battle. We understand that aptitude measurements are usually taken at 6, 0 or 7 years old, but for detailed measurements, a special device is worn that stimulates the body, pushing it to the limit in various areas. The more unique abilities, as well as the more trained a person is, the more difficult it is to take measurements, and the difficulty is stimulated to the limit. 
but the elf thought, or rather understood, that such a person as our protagonist has an indicator at the professional level, it will not be easy to identify his limit data, even despite the fact that a rather strange incident occurred yesterday. His physical strength should be at the limit, but the scientist was shocked because she remembered that her fake he said that her friend went to a normal school, that he failed the exam and could not enter a specialized school. So she asked purely out of curiosity, looking at our protagonist, how could he fail at all with such and such abilities? Because even if you consider that she lowered the difficulty level, then it was immediately obvious that he was professionally trained. Because at first he tried to evade several times, reading the golem's tactics, and therefore waited for the right moment to deliver an accurate blow, which simply amazed the scientist, because in terms of feelings, he was better than any professional. The elf asked about the other dimensions, so the scientists even found it difficult to say, because the guy who was in front of her, or rather Jan Ren, had definitely not reached his limit yet, and in this case she would have to increase the difficulty level. And to be honest, she thought that the increase did not make any sense, because the results they will be normal, because if you take safe mode due to the loss of the golem at full power, then even the elf was aware of what could happen. After all, to remove the safe mode for an ordinary person who is not a professional hunter is definitely illegal, but just because of this, the elf could not understand, so how could our hero be checked? It was the first time that the scientists themselves had encountered such a case, so there was only one way, she thought for a very long time, so at one point a voice was heard behind them, which was most likely familiar not only to Ficky, but also to the scientist who was sitting at the table, they were all scared, because behind them was Mr. Boss. He was a little shocked, because they were using his lab without permission, this was the same Zeke, the teacher of the same elf, and was also the director of research and development at Chinson Group. I thought I'd made a really bad mistake, because Uncle Ficky definitely didn't usually work on Sunday, and Uncle said he hoped you were understood that they were being punished for their actions. She started saying that she had asked for everything, that she had asked for them to be used in the lab. But Zeke was very serious, he said that such excuses would definitely not help to make up for the fault of his subordinate. So he asked not to deceive himself, because this was her father's company, not her own, she was not responsible for anything here. At this moment, the same scholar knew that the rumors about the boss were true, because even though he was S.A.E. Rum's uncle, he had treated her very coldly since childhood, even though she had done nothing wrong. Zeke was about to say something, but when he heard a voice from the monitors, he noticed that there was a person there, so he wondered if it was S.A.E. Rum's classmate. S.A.E. Rum was already bowing her head, trying to say something, but the scientists replied that he just wanted to become a hunter. But he failed the exams last year, and also lost the measurement indicators. Since it's not cheap, they just wanted to help the person in a difficult situation. My uncle noticed that the golem that was supposed to test strength was broken, so he said that he would do it himself. The scientist was shocked, because did the head really mean the very thing? But Zeke only said that the measurement couldn't be made while the golem was in safe mode, so he would go down and personally fight Yarin. And he, in turn, stood holding the pole in his hands, he thought that in fact there was some mistake, because this happens extremely rarely, but when it becomes difficult to measure the limit values, then a battle can be arranged between the hunters. Naturally, in this case, the opponent had to have skills that exceeded the abilities of someone who measures indicators by several levels. So at the same moment the doors opened, the same elf came out, he said that this was unexpected, but they wouldn't miss the performance, because he didn't have so much time. Ya Ryong immediately ducked, because he didn't know who his opponent was, but he sensed danger. Zeke, on the other hand, said that it looks like our protagonist has sensed what's going on, so the elf will do everything possible to replace the golem. The only thing that the main character felt at that time was that the opponent this time was much stronger than the guy he had never seen before, or whatever it was, but Ya Ryang felt that he couldn't beat him. Or in turn, I asked him to attack, he even said that there was no need to worry about his safety, so at the same moment our hero released all his power, he immediately launched at his target. We understand that Zeke Esserm is not just the director of the research and development department of the company that belongs to the father of that very elf, he is also a white hunter, ranked seventh in the ranking of South Korea. Well, of course, our protagonist didn't know about this, he understood that if you can't see the right moment for a blow, then you need to make it appear, because Ya Ryong's strategy was simple, it was a full force blow that you just had to dodge. So when the enemy dodged, he used the moment there was no time to attack. But despite all this, our hero's staff just stopped in the hands of the elf, or told him that Tut was much more inattentive than Tut thought, so at the same time he threw it back with his leg. He watched our hero suffocate from this blow, and also said that he could not understand, because this is not a real fight. Does our protagonist really think that you can get as much as you want, or did he really think that this technique would work, but that it was not the elf said that someone will find pathetic?
He even said that moreover, he did not just lose consciousness, but simply dropped his weapon, so at the same time he threw this staff back in the direction of our hero. Saying that you are such deep times will be quite enough, this is if someone once again allows himself such a stupid thing, then he will it will send you home there. He assured Yao Ryong that it would be better for him to give up his dream of becoming a hunter. While the elf was saying this, his aura that surrounded him was filled with anger and hatred, so our heroes turned around and said that he didn't know why, but there was some dislike for him, but even so, he would go into battle again. Zeke noticed that Yao Ryong was running at him again, using the same move, but as soon as he noticed it better, he realized that our protagonists were just keeping their distance, while continuing to shoot energy spears at him. Everyone understood that this was enough, so our hero smiled and pointed his spear, or rather rod, at the elf once more, said that this was a warm-up, so at the same time even more charge, even more charges were launched at the elf. Zeke noticed that it was already quite good, not just some pathetic trick, but the two people who watched it understood that something was not just a fight between two people, but two pros, whether in fact that boy, or rather the main character could not get anywhere. She laughed, but the scientist said that if we talk about flaws, then of course they are, because she is talking about a crushing disadvantage, in which she is much superior to him. I couldn't believe it because if there was anything in which our protagonist was weaker than her, who fights on equal terms with his uncle, what is his disadvantage? As soon as she said this, we could see how Alev continued to throw his punches at him. He said that the lead role was already captured, even though this time the main character did not let go of her weapon, which surprised the elf, but at the same time he received even more blows. He noticed that he really wasn't joking, even though he was controlling his power. By this point, Ya Ryang was already lying next to the wall, he and his body broke through it, and Zeke said that he was not going to comment on his defeat, because it was originally predetermined. But the process leading to this defeat looked incredibly pathetic, so at the same time, the scientist, as well as, that he has no basic knowledge, which is very surprising. See Ram what does this even mean? That the sense of combat and skills are simply excellent, but here is a basic point, such as his step, method of attack or defense. It was obvious that there was no initial training, so to be honest, the scientist was disappointed, because his abilities, the abilities of our hero. He could have become much stronger if he had passed the dream training, so at the same time, S.A.E. Ram remembered his words when he talked about how he was able to do this. That no one taught him, she understood what he was talking about at that moment, but the elf was already walking away from the main character, who was still looking down. He said that he had seen a lot of people like him, pathetic guys who had unique abilities, but did not make any effort to find them develop it. S.A.E. Rum was looking at this with a very strange expression on her face. She thought that this wasn't what she was trying to achieve, so at the same time, Ya Ryo, who had a broken helmet, neither heard that he should start paying for the measurement of indicators, or better yet, admitted his hopelessness, because if, if you only rely on your abilities, then it's worthless. Well, by this point, our protagonist was on his feet, his left eye was red, he didn't know why, but that elf was making such taunts, because how does he even talk about it? Doesn't he like lazy people? Of course, it was interesting for the elf, because how does he even stand on his feet? Because he struck the last blow to end the battle. So at the same moment our main character said that he didn't care about any payment of dimensions, he only asked to fight again, because now he will show the result of his efforts. The scientist, as well as the elf girl, couldn't think what was going on at all. She asked to hear that striving to go to the end is good, but everyone has already received the data, so she asked our protagonist to stop fighting. C. Rom also went to the microphone and asked him to listen to her, because the measurements were over, he was good, he could go back and wait for the results. But of course, he had a different goal, now someone was talking to the elf, who said that he honestly did not know what he was trying to achieve. It would be useless for you, he does not even understand that the result will change so soon, no matter how many times they fought, or he just wants to get recognition. Does our hero just want to hear the elf tell him that he has amazing willpower? But Ya Ryan was told that this wasn't true, because he was very angry that everything was already ending, and he didn't really strike, but in fact there was a reason inside him. Because no one taught him, he did everything from scratch, but thanks to his outstanding abilities, he was able to fill the gap in education. If you add in the huge experience of risking his life so many times, as well as allowing him to develop his skills, achievements that were like a miracle. But in the end, Ya Ryong still didn't consider himself outstanding. He just squeezed everything and looked at those non-real hunters that he had seen so far. But that particular elf was different. Zeke looked at him by then and asked if it was really his own fault, or if he would trample on our protagonist so that he wouldn't have time to get angry in front of our main character. There was finally a monster that could kill him. Apart from his father, this was the first time he'd met a real hunter, and he hadn't even noticed how much of his youthful blood was playing in him. I couldn't believe what was going on, 
because why was their boss acting like this? Yes, and the elf girl noticed that the stupidity in which he became, the pose of the elf was not the same as she had seen before, because the method of grabbing and the center of gravity was strangely tilted, swinging the pole, as if there was a completely different person standing in front of her, whom she had not seen before. As soon as the fight started, then in the first second the main character is in his sixth, thanks to which he was able to put a scratch on the body of the elf, even though he dodged, everyone was waiting for the results. Everyone wanted to know how it would all end, and the elf girl believed that if you compare all that he moves very simply and clumsily, but there is not the slightest hitch in his own movements. She just couldn't believe it. She can't even imagine how much he's been trained to do this, but he's been trained properly. At the same time, we can understand that of course our hero, who was still a little boy all his life, watched his father while he was training on the street. He repeated his every move, he used absolutely all his skills now, in that battle, he remembered those moments while his father was still there in good health. Zeke, in turn, began to think seriously too, he also began to think through his every move, not just mindlessly dodging and continuing to counterattack. He decided that when he landed, there would be a hitch, and even though at that moment there was no opportunity, he would do as he wants, just meet his blow face to face. The moment the elf was already on his feet, then he said that we should have just continued in the same spirit, only then our offer could have won. I would not have started using these skills again at the reception of the sixth, did he really increase his self-esteem now? But Ya Rang I told you that I just made it myself, all the moves that he knows end there. So in the end, he only got the first number, but it was still not bad. We can understand that Zeke Esserm has a bad reputation among the anchors due to his difficult nature, so at the same time, while someone was looking at the body, the elf girl ran there, who called her uncle, but he asked to be quiet. We understand that no one dared to say anything against him, because he had too much superiority of skills, but it was at that moment that he just went and healed our hero, he said that he would be alright, there would be no consequences, and he asked about the name of our protagonist, because as soon as the main character was killed, he when I heard it again, I couldn't think that I might have met his son there. We, in turn, understand that Zeke Esserm, the owner of the white rank, which is only here in the whole country, and he was also the best healer in all of Korea. By this point, as soon as Zeke was out of the building, it was a better evening, and he met someone who told him that if Talk was late, he could send a message at all, because he would leave the car and go for a drink, because they would be late for the briefing again. It was a strange, heavy-set man asking if Zeke knew that every time you were late, everyone else thought it was his fault. But the elf said that he had things to do, something took a lot longer than I think. The pumped-up man laughed, and also asked, after all, really that time with some kid, and it seems that he was not alone. But at the same time, he noticed that there was a scratch on Zeke's face, which caused confusion not only for the pumped-up man, but also for the elf. The man started pointing his finger at this scratch, so Zeke had to say that this is it, because it didn't look like anything else. The beefy guy lowered his glasses a little and said that he just couldn't believe it, because if that kid is preparing for admission, then he should still be 16. But at the same moment the elf replied that he was 17, he wanted to transfer the school of heroes in winter. The guy thought a little and remembered that there was something there, although when he studied for three years, there was not one who passed the exam. But he still thought that he would do something, even though he did not have a passport, and that I could also scratch Zeke Esserm's own face. He said that young people were just scary lately, but the elf asked him not to make him laugh, because even if he was not on the same level as him, but there was no difference with him. In front of us was Kang Goho, who liked what Zeke said about him being ranked 19th in South Korea, and was also the leader of Nick's, Korea's first cleanup squad. He was 21 years old and graduated from Hero High School a year ago. But of course, the elf was more interested, so he asked the guy if he had bought a new car, because he hadn't seen it before. To which the guy replied that let the elf stop grumbling, because this is the same one that he ordered last time, he will no longer spend money as before. At the same time, our hero was lying on a table, he woke up, and also noticed that the wounds had completely disappeared, he did not even feel pain. But the elf girl just came down to the room, asking what he was actually thinking, did he really hope to defeat her uncle? The main character did not think twice that this was not so, because he just got angry and flared up, because he first started to bully him. S.A.E. Rom couldn't understand, because why would her uncle bully him? Our hero heard what he was interested in, he asked, after all, was he really her uncle? She thought there was nothing wrong with that, since he was an uncle on her mother's side, so at the same time she handed him a mug. She asked what was the matter. Well, our character only said that there was nothing wrong, because it looks like she just has a good relationship with her uncle. Judging by how much he cares about her, she blushed a little and asked, what is she even talking about? But all he knew was that it was just as he said, because if you think about it like that, it looked like some weirdo had appeared and was trying to cheat his niece, you could understand his concern. 
At the same time, SAE Ram started to say that her uncle wasn't like that, he was very strict, which our hero agreed with, so that you would leave him behind as soon as possible. But they didn't have enough time, because the same scientist came into the room, who only asked if Ya Ryung's body was hurting. After all, if not, then it's good, but if it hurt, it would have already healed, and her boss is the best healer in Korea. This hurt our protagonist incredibly much, and he remembered how strong he was, and this was not even the specialization of that elf, a smile involuntarily appeared on his face. It ended with this, then the scientist began to say that everything was fine, because everything was fine, and his indicator also turned out to be clear, she showed them to him. As soon as he saw them, who couldn't believe that this was what was called a great result, which caused C. Ram to scream, telling him to know the measure. We, in turn, understand that a prerequisite for becoming a hunter is just the indicators of B rank and above, we also need harmony, even if dexterity is at a high level, but it does not correspond to health, then it will all be simply useless. If you are only a muscle, then in singles they will not be able to pull the rest of the abilities. C. Ram said that among ordinary people, there are those who have one of the indicators can reach the C level, but everything changes when such indicators become two or more. The muscle strength, health, agility of people who have three C rank indicators is one in 10,000. Such are able to fight alone, such who have three B rank indicators, only one in 500,000, they can become top-class hunters. So as soon as the elf girl started looking at our hero, she realized that our protagonist has a B-rank muscle strength, and the other two indicators are a no matter what was with the balance. But it still remained a crazy level, and among the first-year students of the stripping department, he was already on the same level as that monster what did he expect anyway? While our hero continued to look at his stats, Tony wanted to say something funny. She said that their boss who fought with him didn't have any A-rank stats because of these three, which caused the main character to have misunderstandings. Because the score is his innate abilities, they don't reflect your skills at the moment, because even if a person has an A-rank indicator, but you will not train and grow, then there will be no difference between the lowest rank, and other factors are also important. For example, they are suitable for the type of technique that someone is mastering, and moreover, sensations and experience cannot be measured using indicators, and she also called a hackneyed phrase. But there are many hunters who constantly try and fill in their gaps with indicators. At this time she looked at Saram and winked, which drove her into the paint. But despite everything, Ya Ryung put down the tablet, expressed his thanks, but he said that he wasn't too disappointed, he didn't know much about it, he just had a friend who was missing a lot compared to him. The scientist thought that most likely such people are not often found, so most likely he should have been known. Our hero, of course, was talking about his father, so he agreed that he was quite famous. At the same time, as soon as the dialogue was over, C. Ram said that the dimension was also finished, our group was doing great, they could have already met next weekend. But at the same time, the scientist suggested to look at the production department, because the elf girl had not been there for a long time. C. Ram was a little confused about what the scientists were talking about, because she just didn't have any friends like the scientists, and her uncle probably wouldn't let her, but at the same time, the scientists just laughed and said that he just allowed it. He said it before he left, he told you to take it away when our hero would wake up and tell the manager that this is his guest, he asked them to pick up weapons there, no matter how much it would cost. It was all this information that could not help but shock C. Ram, who was already on her nerves. At the same time, we can understand that items of equipment are the dream of every hunter, that is, to have high-performance weapons and armor. Even if they have outstanding abilities, the low quality of weapons will not provide any support to their owner, so with the increase in the hunter's skills, you need good weapons to apply these very skills. Our hero just kept scratching his turnips and saying that he knew it himself, but did he really need a weapon? C. Ram wanted to say that this is mandatory, but our hero said so, because why do weapons in school at all, because he will most likely be given everything he needs, right? C. Ram just let out a sigh, asking if he really wanted to transfer out of the hero school at all, because if so, he was right if it was a simple school or a regular hunter school, because every school provides equipment that meets the standard so that students are not discriminated against. Ya Ryan wondered if it was really wrong for the hero school, but why would it be necessary for the school that has the most money? But at the same time, Young Yi Min, a graduate of the hero high school, replied that the problem here is not money, and the school itself is different from the usual ones. Because if there is a significant difference in science and abilities, then preparing for a good group is part of the abilities. So the hero school has all the equipment, as well as weapons students prepare their own meals. By this point, he only realized that regardless of skills, it was you who was born into a rich family in the most advantageous position. He even said that if he thinks wealth is just another ability, you don't even have anything to say to him. Yung Yimin cleared her throat and said that this is a point that should also be considered. But even without money, 
there is a way to acquire good weapons. These hero schools are those who are highly likely to become better hunters or rankers in the future, and there are also those who want to invest in these abilities. After all, if a student manages to get into school, then he begins to receive various offers from businesses and just rich people, and after graduation, such hunters pay part of their fees or sign a contract and become an advertising face, in other words, this is called sponsorship. She even started to feel very pleased with herself, because she had received a scholarship from the Jiangxiang group, and even after retirement, she was guaranteed a position as a researcher. Everyone applauded as if they weren't interested, but the only thing I wanted to say was that learning at the school was beneficial to her. After all, only thanks to this, many opportunities immediately arose to evaluate someone's abilities, but first it was necessary to enroll, the degree of difficulty in transferring from another school is much higher than the usual entrance exam. Each case is everything possible, including preparation, and the boss said that he would help him in this preparation, because he also agreed on everything you just need to go down to their underground workshop. As soon as Young Yimin then smiled broadly and told her that she would cheer for our hero to enter. By the time they were approaching the warehouse, our protagonist had decided that something terrible was about to happen. See Rom. So the main character replied that Tam sort of said that she didn't know about helping her uncle, but as far as Ya Ryang herself understood, everyone who wants to transfer to the school will come super prepared. S.A.E. Rum said that it was exactly as he said, because she wants to help, she wants to help pay for the weapons. After she said that, Ya Ryong just put his hands up to his face, as if he was very touched by the action. So as soon as they started to go down in the elevator, the elf girl explained that it doesn't matter how much money he would spend here, because the most important thing is who he trusts with his production, and since the production department in Chinsen Group is quite high quality, which has received recognition all over the world, then there will be no problems. By this time, they went down to the floor with the name Furnace, our hero said that for such money everywhere will be about the same. But as soon as the gate opened, he noticed that it was actually an underground forge, and also the name of the dungeon was Stripping Boiling Abyss. The elf girl asked how this picture looks to our hero. After all, to use this place only from them money will not be enough. Well, at the same time, our protagonist sensed something strange. Behind him he started to stand somewhat eyed monster, he jumped back, but we can see that he only said that he can't believe that Zeke woke him up on the weekend, and also does not want to go down, in front of us was standing Arge's Thunderhammer, a senior titan who said that he is actually a monster and also the head of the department, so the elf girls should no longer just shield our hero from him. At the same time, the older titan just sat down on the floor, he felt at ease. He himself received citizenship in the Republic and Korea in its simplified order. So when he lit a cigarette, he realized that the person Zeke was talking about was standing in front of him. He even called him baby. Siram said that a video was supposed to be sent from above with the measurement of indicators. But one I said that I don't know anything about their human toys, not about data, not about videos, because employees deal with this and today they don't work. SAE Ram was already upset. But One Eyes said it didn't matter, because if Zeke said to do it personally, then he could check it out for himself. He looked at our protagonist in surprise and asked, after all, he also had in his hands, is it really his weapon? As soon as our hero answered that it was so, then One Eye said that it was great, he asked to catch it. Of course, our main character was very surprised by this, but C. Ram couldn't understand what was going on at all, head side to side. Not understanding anything, he doesn't know how things work for people, but in their time this is a common procedure, again for the sake of war, which he won't work hard for and to make weapons, he even thought that he was a little different from ordinary young boys. He had a look that is familiar with hunting, there was a feeling that he was trained, so he only asked to demonstrate his skills and abilities. C. Rom wasn't ready for this, but our hero just took out his wand, saying that it was time to find out what offers he was not refusing. At the same time, he immediately flew straight at the eye. But Tom was wondering something else entirely, because where did he even get the weapon that he uses? Ya Ryong certainly didn't expect that he wouldn't be able to injure one eye, after all, he had definitely struck out, it was a pure needle strike. Of course, there were a lot of monsters that he couldn't take down with a single blow, but just now he felt that literally, if he didn't know about the takeout. We had the feeling that this creature that was in front of him just wasn't alive, what kind of monster was standing in front of him? Si Ram, on the other hand, thought that he was a fool for speaking so bluntly, but she was at a loss for another reason, because he understood that the danger level of the monsters was marked with stars. The first level of danger, just like a flying praying mantis, meant that it could kill a person, something that an average adult man with a gun could handle. The monster is already with two stars, just like Clastraptor can handle a trained military with firearms in their hands. But the danger level is three, just like a titanium monkey, motorized infantry and the introduction of armored weapons are already required. 
If we talk about the danger level with four stars, just like Democuras, then in order to avoid numerous human casualties, it is necessary as evacuate the residents as soon as possible, while avoiding any collisions with the monster so that after the evacuation requires aerial shelling or firing at long distances. The maximum that the military can do is eliminate a monster with a four-star danger level, because in cases with a five-star level higher, modern military forces are practically powerless. Yes, and even if the battle is won, they will have to spend a huge amount of firepower, the results will be too large, so if someone is able to give up the monster with minimal losses for themselves, these are squad hunters, but at the same time one I asked to listen, because he asked a question, he would like to hear the answer. We even realized that this was Arges of the Elder Titan tribe, whose danger level in the past was as much as seven stars. He repeated his question again, but our hero continued to ignore him, he asked, after all, why did you cling to the weapon so much? But the only thing Arges said was that it was better to answer the question, since it was he who made it. He stepped on his cigarette and asked once again, so that our hero would understand the whole situation exactly, one I asked why his own weapon was not in his master's hands. The elf girl was biting her fingernail, because he understood that if this weapon was made by Arges himself, then it must be at least a plus rank, for sure the data is in the Russian Association. And then who has the weapon is very strictly monitored, such weapons could not get into the hands of smugglers in an honest way, did Yaren steal it, or did you take it away? But the only thing our hero said was that he didn't want to talk, he even paraphrased his answer, he said that it definitely didn't concern Arjas. S.A.E. Ram yelled for him to tell her, but at the same time, Arjas just seemed to want him to do what he knew. He had already directed his attack directly at him, so at that moment, only one thought passed through Yaren's mind, the thought of death, because it would definitely be impossible to dodge, should he take the blow, maybe use the needle. But in the end, he realized more and more that his enemy didn't have any special places. Can he use the swell? Well, the blow was definitely over, so there was a third option, which was the answer, the last technique that Ya Ryang had seen from his father. He remembered, even knew, that the law of force was thinking soberly, because in a head-on collision, the one who is bigger and stronger wins, but what happens if it is not a head-on collision? Because all you need to do is calculate the angle and position, so even if he does not win, he can at least dodge. This is in his Ya Ryong's third weapon, he was able to dodge a level 7 monster's strike, which shocked S.A.E. Rum beyond belief. He started looking for a weak spot where he could land his punch, but the only place he could hit was the eye that could be punctured with a needle. But of course he couldn't do anything, because Arges had already grabbed it with his own hand, he started squeezing it. But despite all this, C. Ram told Lee that she recognized that he looked suspicious, so Arjas behaved like this, it was still not right to attack a person without finding out someone's circumstances, because he also had to be aware that you who received citizenship in a special order did not have the right to harm people, as long as their lives are not in danger, because if they violate this rule, they will lose all their civil rights and return to the category of monsters. But at the same time, Arjas let go of the protagonist's hand so that C. Ram wouldn't be bothered because he himself understood all this perfectly well. But why did his weapon appear in the hands of the main character? Because is this why Zeke woke him up on his own day off? But all the same, he said that Prada should ask him because he actually has the right to this weapon, he will even give him a good reward. He looked down at his hand and noticed that there was an early one, an early one that hadn't appeared in 30 years since the last incident. By then, C. Ram is quite surprised because what kind of right was that? So at the same time, Arjas asked her if she knew why she was working for people in the first place. C. Ram starts by saying that 30 years ago, a special hunting party raided him. But Arjas replies that this is not true, because this is exactly what they tell each other. Even though all the people who attacked him couldn't find him even earlier, because he was defeated a single person, he cut off his hand and could have even killed him, but he didn't. Arjas sensed our protagonist's eyes on him and said that he also knew who he was talking about. He meant his father, who was still young. At the same time, we can see that the senior titan, among the entire tribe of giants, has reached the highest level, his life is close to eternity. The number of such individuals is extremely small, no more than 10 senior titans are known on earth, even in terms of physical parameters, they do not have the power of the power level. But their real power is making weapons and equipment is an innate ability of this tribe to create facts that have special powers, so only the older dwarf titans can boast of such skills. But unlike the dwarves, friendly people and existing with them, the older titans perceive people as essentially worthy of communication. It was 30 years ago that the operation to capture Arges was in full swing, when one of the groups met Colossus B, an automatic puppet of Arges. She was supposedly at a level of about four stars. However, of course, the squad that came to the cave of the same titan encountered a problem they could not contact the headquarters, 
They said that the communication magic did not work, as if they were deliberately creating interference. But at the same moment they noticed that the Colossus was approaching them, they wanted to die. But that's all we tried to fight back, they tried to block the blow, and also to strike themselves, but it was without result. The Colossus just didn't take the blows properly, it knocked the warriors away with a single swing. No one could believe it, because they were presented with a picture that they didn't expect to see. In front of us was the Special Squad, a first-class organization that could be proud of its achievement in clearing the dungeon of its time, but they didn't manage to what was going on in the dungeon of Arges. Because this is the seventh one that their team meets, they had to run as far as possible, because even if they beat him, others will appear from somewhere. After all, even if the situation is the same in other teams, it will all be bad. As soon as the guy thought about it, one of his comrades told him to leave, he knew perfectly well that he would not survive. By this point, the Colossus had launched its first attack, so the man had to use the potential trigger technique, which activated all the power without reserve and allowed the effect to last longer than usual. Well, of course, the debuff was that the skill user lost the ability to even move, so after hitting his own, the captain thought that he had already said that everyone would not survive. He would not be able to defeat the Colossus with his own strength, but he would be able to stall for time so that someone could escape, they even thought that he could it turns out that they can win. But just at that moment, Arges himself came around the corner and noticed a few bugs that he hadn't removed yet. That they didn't have the slightest chance to survive, so the captain who was holding a shield just took off and charged at Arges. He read that if you use all your strength then he would be able to buy at least a little time. But Ono was deeply mistaken, because at the same moment, with the help of a single blow with his sword, the guy was incinerated. It all annoyed him, this trash they called equipment, as well as the body, everything was of poor quality, did such creatures proclaim themselves the masters of the world where he lives, what kind of sight was it anyway? This was exactly what the same Arges thought, so at the same time he came face to face with another person who was pointing a staff at him and was very scared. Arges had no choice but to say that there was a minimum of loyalty in it, which of course impressed him, but also quite a bit. By that time, the same magician was just out of fear, he understood that he could not do anything, because even the commander could not cope with this monster and his magic was definitely not enough, but at the same time another person appeared. The father of the main character, who said that he warned that it was thoughtless to enter that dungeon it was just pointless, he said it was much safer to gather information a little bit at a time and then go inside, join forces. What's the point of being attacked by a monster first? The magician didn't know the person in front of him, so young Yusong, who was 32 years old at the time, said that he received their signal for help, so he was sent from the association. He is one of the volunteers. The mage looked at him in a strange way, so Yusung knew what he was getting at. He said that the armor was just uncomfortable, it was new, and it was also heavy, heavier than he thought. So at the same time, Yusung noticed that they came down alone, and right above him was a colossus that began to attack him. Yu Sung also checked on himself that he was too strong, but of course he wanted to deal with everyone. Until this moment Yu Sung was just an unknown hunter about whom few people knew. After all, if he was the first generation of hunters, his name should have been in the stories somewhere. But instead of weak achievements, he paid more attention to saving others, so he achieved fame. But after that incident it all started. It was on that day that he dealt with the ear. It was on that day that the whole world found out who such a good dream. Because Argus was shocked by such a picture, because he did not expect that his colossus would just go from just one blow. Mog himself couldn't believe it. After all, this monster that was standing in front of them could only be caught by combining all the forces of their team. How was it even possible to defeat it with one blow? But even with all this surprise, the only thing Yusong knew at that moment was whether the mage still had any mana left, because if so, then he didn't just need buffs, he only needed things to fly around him. He asked to take these two corpses and get out of there, because they're both still alive. Arges was the only one who didn't like the idea, because you couldn't just walk away, because Arges was talking like they had a choice. But of course Yusung was sure that it was, without his permission, Arges wouldn't even touch the hair on anyone's head. Of course, this all caused an incredible aggression on the part of Arges, his only eye was covered with a bunch of muscles, because he was so bad. But at the same time, as soon as he started his attack on Yu Sung, the latter in turn just took and collided with him with a sword to the ball. Ten years have passed since the merger, at that time the hunters were faced with one problem. The released forces the increase in their physical abilities allowed them to approach the level of super people, as well as their technique of making copies using materials obtained in the dungeons, which helped to develop their skills very quickly, but unlike high performance and copying weapons by them I didn't use it that well. The answer that was able to break through this wall was human technology, a completely new combat system that went beyond the accepted standard at that time. Only a few hunters felt the need for it, explored the area and trained, so even Arges was shocked, but Yusung was one of those hunters. Nagashi thought that he won the gold, 
but the only thing that Arjas said was that compared to the others, he had a completely different level, he knew how to use his powers, but I forgot his weapon could at least half keep up with his abilities, then the situation would definitely end up completely different in this way. So we can understand that in those days, Yusong was just an unknown hunter, he wasn't getting used to it, he didn't have the opportunity to purchase a top ranked weapon. So as soon as he noticed that everyone was out, he also thought that everything was fine. But at that moment Arjus started saying that his technique was the most outstanding of all the people he had seen, but that the hammer he was holding in front of him was the most terrible in quality, its strength had reached its limit. Arjus said that this was the end for Yusung, but he just took the blow at the same time, because it was a technique that Ya Ryong himself would later spy on in the future, a technique called Swell. The skill with which the hunter took the blow and used its power, physical strength, experience of perfection of movements, all this was on a completely different level, so it was at the same moment that everyone understood what is truly called the martial art of combat. Arjas gave up the question to his listeners, after all, is there really nothing unusual in his story? After all, the heroes finally defeated the monster and everything like that. But at that moment, because of the technique that Yu Song used, the monster that was him died, his life continued not to him, but to our hero's father, but however, it didn't kill him. So in the end, the clearing of the dungeon that the special squad failed was declared its own victory, which many were strongly justified in considering it a miracle, but it was after that event that something truly unexpected happened. It is a race of monsters that considers all other races inferior, so no one will ever bow down to them, a race of older titans, and it was one of them that was Arjus, who voluntarily surrendered to humans and asked for shelter. The elf girl could not believe it, because he knew for sure that it was a great event, the whole world was stirred up, and then he was given citizenship, there was not a single victim in that raid, although there were many wounded, but in the end he was guilty, so he had to work there until the full serving of his sentence, on their company, and now it turns out that Arjus was actually defeated by one person. It was certainly very different from what she had studied, but still, Arjus said that he was the one who made this pole, even though his father didn't ask for it, but he was a warrior who was worthy of this weapon. In turn, the main character said that he had never heard of it, because all his life it seemed to him that it was just a strong pole without special functions, which is why most likely his father did not give it to the lender. Arjus scratched his head and said that it probably was, because it was just a very hard stick that was good to turn, but said that it was very simple, because why did his father use a completely empty pole? It was because he planned to give him the finished weapon, but only if he could get the material for the blade. But at some point, the connection with him was cut off, and he could not come to him himself, so he sent the part that was already ready. Of course, Arjas did not know the details, but he thinks it will not be possible to finish this weapon, but this is not bad. Because he asked to give them this pole, he will finish the job, it will be a weapon not for his father, but for our hero himself. As soon as the girl, or also our protagonists, came out of the door, she asked him how he was feeling at all. He scratched his head a little and said what's wrong with the nonst, because it seems that the last grip wasn't too strong, they remembered that Arjas said that I don't know how long it will take, but he will try to make the pole as quickly as possible, after all, you should not drink it, a masterpiece I must reach perfection by myself. They discuss that most likely on Wednesday it will be a day off, they will be just fine, because if so, then the girl is at home, that it is worth preparing for the writing exam, at the same time to conduct a mock test. But Ya Ren didn't really care, so the elf girl asked that it seems that his father was an outstanding person, she didn't even think that this track was completed thanks to him, is he now retired and being treated in the hospital. But of course, Ya Ryang didn't answer, he said that he would go, the girl might not even give him a ride, because he wanted to go for a walk and think for a while. At the same time, they separated, and while the elf girl was sitting in the car, she read a brief summary of the case, everything was written there. But even if what Arjas was saying was true, then it turns out that those five legendary hunters of the special squad took the credit for another hunter. It was hard to believe, but there was no reason for Arjas to lie, and even if you looked at the abilities that Ya Ryong had shown, it was quite obvious that his father was a unique master, because there were many such cases before, because it was impossible to verify what happened in the dungeon. She pondered and realized that there was a famous event, the false dragon slayer Yu Sung, the best hunters of South Korea with excellent skills. Most of the achievements that are recorded in history were forged and spelled out using threats. She thought that for sure after Yu Sung was injured, then everything became known. She was able to find new information on the next website and realized that the false dragon slayer was most likely Ya Ryong's father. Well, while she was reading all this, she received a message, the midterm exam of the second semester, she was asked to check the grades for the practical exam. So at the same time, in high school, we learned in the department of dungeon clearing, everyone said that everyone was doing great, because on weekends even no one can have a normal rest because of her. A girl named Josie Ah at the age of 27, the homeroom teacher of class 1-2, a mentor in magic, asked for forgiveness. 
Well, of course, a person we already knew said that there was nothing wrong with this because it was the first time she had become a class leader and he also needed to check the first year student's assessment sheets. So as soon as Joa Seiya closed her laptop, she realized that everything turned out even better than she expected, she meant about the work as well as the level of the students. It couldn't be compared to when she was studying there herself, so she asked the teacher if she knew that the first place in the practical exam would be taken by that particular student. Na teacher said that thinking about such a result was difficult to predict at all, so at the same time, Siram, as soon as she checked the results, was shocked, she realized that currently in the first year there are three students who are called geniuses. But unexpectedly, all three of them have mixed blood, the first one was Choi Dia has swordsmanship skills inherited from her father, a white-ranked hunter, as well as magical powers inherited from her elf mother. The second student was Anisha Esserm, who has magical skills that even a full-blooded elf can envy. In the future, she will surely achieve great results and reach a high level. And the third student, who was born from the union of a human and a dwarf, then from the latter he got the strength of long-lasting and human agility. He absorbed the greatest strengths of both teams, his name was Tyr Belkassen, he was called a rising star, who has the best physical characteristics not only in the school of heroes, but also in the whole world, this is the same student who won first place in the stomach exams. So at the same time, the teachers continued to say that they did not doubt Xiaogun's skill, he is not inferior in any way to the rest of you. But usually the first places in the exams are taken by leaders, even if it is difficult to take into account that the difficulty level was low, yet he alone took first place. But another teacher who had an iron hand with him said that singles usually have their advantages, and physical strength isn't all of his strengths. The young teacher said that she was worried, because even though he has all the data to become a leader, but he is not at all interested in communicating with other children, not only the guys from her faculty, but also others are a little afraid of him, because even everyone understands that in the future, even in the second year alone, you can do not so much, and it would be nice to have at least one friend to share his thoughts with, but he doesn't seem to be interested. But at the same time, the same fighter of tyranny said that perhaps you should not worry too much about this, because it often happens that the guys are not what they seem outwardly. He picked up his bag and said that it helps sometimes. Three days after that moment, on Wednesday, many students were outside, so at one point they ran into him, Chong Golem. They were very scared, because they spilled their drink on such a bully, but the only one who began to apologize was Young Guo himself. He was the first to apologize, because he didn't see, he just walked and thought about his own, but of course the students were very scared. Young Guol didn't even know why he was so unlucky, because the only thing he missed here was his mom. He remembered talking to his mom earlier about how Tokpaki is a very bone deep dish. So that's why his mom, who was called Sok Yubin, a Korean hunter, working mainly in Europe and having a great reputation, I told him that the guys were for him. She often told her son about her homeland, which she missed so much, so Chol Gang himself felt a lot of sympathy for the year's efforts, this is the atmosphere that he grew up in. Plus his personal outstanding qualities allowed him to enter the school of heroes in special competitions. So if we talk about problems, he was very sociable. He would have been happy to speak, but he wasn't entirely fluent in Korean, and what if others said that his pronunciation was bad? This was a feature of an introvert, even if he knew a foreign language, but it was still difficult for him to talk to foreigners, he really did not like his character. So his first semester passed, everyone was constantly trying to apologize to him, because they were interrupting him, so that Kal Gang unwittingly acquired the image of a majestic wolf. His hobby was walking, so at one point he wanted to go somewhere, he wanted a computer club, that his mother went there too. I went there. He remembered that this is when you just play games and also order something delicious, so as soon as he got there, he realized that he didn't know anything about what to do there, he didn't even know how to register, he understood what was bothering everyone. So he decided that he will go home, he was still alone, but at the same moment he was approached by some person who turned out to be our protagonist. He said that he was doing his registration incorrectly, because there you can only charge, and registration should be done in another place. He asked me to follow him, and he will show me how to register. At the same time, as soon as Chong Gaul and our character went through the computer, the computer showed him what to fill out and what not to fill out. So as soon as the registration was over, you can go back to that machine and charge it, choose a place again and make a move, this will be the end of it. Ya Ryam, as soon as he finished explaining, remarked, after all, was it really a foreigner? Although he spoke Korean quite well, it was even his first time in the computer club, but our hero still had nothing to do. Because Si Ram was just late, he didn't even know that it would be like this, he definitely wouldn't have been able to I started getting up at 9, 0 in the morning, or I'd rather go to the black market. We understand that of course in the very case where the royal jelly was placed there was a strange thing. A certain hexagon, it didn't look like something edible, so he decided that when he had time, he would check it all out, and now they are selling an item related to using the sky bees was tantamount to killing, so the exchange that Siram gave him was in kill blood. 
This is one of the three disasters of the Agarian jungle, because Enkil is a reptilian tyrant, because in recent decades a myriad of special units have been assembled to destroy it, but so far more than one raid has not ended in success on this creature, because all that can and has been obtained from there is a few silver scales and quite a bit of blood. Currently, hunting for this creature is generally prohibited, and the prices for such items are literally celestial. Of course, our protagonist decided that he wanted to meet C. Ram at lunch and go to the black market in the evening, but now everything has shifted. At the same time, Yung Guol approached our protagonist and said that there were no other seats, so he would have to sit down with him. This was another characteristic of introverts, he was constantly looking around and being cautious, even when it wasn't necessary. Well, of course, our hero was not against it, he said that there was a lunch, as well as a day off, he could sit there with him, especially since no one would come to him. Yung Gaul, on the other hand, as soon as he opened the games, noticed that there are no games that can only be played here, because to be honest, he thought that playing at home is 1000 times better. He opened a game, so our protagonist noticed that this was a game that he knew, and the level was almost the same, just like his own. He apologized for asking this at the first meeting, but he also doesn't have any friends who play it, because if the other person is playing alone, then why not try to play together? At the same time, we see that in the center of Seoul, here and there, there are ruins that are called scars. So during the merger, a huge part of the city was destroyed, almost the whole of Seoul, so most areas were rebuilt over time, excluding places that were close to the dungeons. The space between the wall that held the dungeon served as a means to soften the impact in case a monster got over that wall and an emergency was declared. But in the past 20 years, there had never been a single instance of monsters going outside of that wall by themselves. They were transported by special vehicles, so at one point, one person said that in such moments, as they saw, you actually realize the reality, because his so-called colleagues hunt monsters and earn money, and he gets a penny for driving a car. The girl who was sitting next to him told him not to start again, if he didn't like something there, he could quit and go back to work. It was Joe Yona who held a special position in the Hunters Association, but of course there was a former gold-ranked hunter who had quit after her eyeball was damaged, and next to her was the same whiner named Song Changwu, who also held a special position in the Hunters Association. Also a former bronze-ranked hunter, but already with whole body parts, she was telling him that he only had a license, that he didn't have the ability to find a decent team, that he should have known it himself, that he wouldn't get more anywhere than as an association employee. Well, of course, I liked one of them again, he said that you don't have to tell him so directly about it. At the same time, they felt something, the driver stopped, he asked, after all, could the monsters really get out of the rear compartment? But all Joe Yeon did was tell him to call the center and tell them that they had stopped for a short checkup, so as soon as it came out, he said the same thing, because whatever happens, there is a boss nearby, so everything will be fine, because if it wasn't for her injury. Then she reached Ranker, but as soon as he looked at the seat next to her, he saw a completely different woman who probably killed the boss, but he said that the boss's reaction was quite fast, but knowing and dodging are two different things. She also looked through all the lists in the trunk, but noticed that the driver wasn't doing anything, so she ordered them to get on the pedal if he didn't want to die. By this point, our heroes had already finished their game, our hero was very tired, they continued to have lunch because they made delicious food there, so our protagonist said that he did not know that they were the same age, he was just tall and large enough, and his muscles were pumped up, what school does he go to anyway? Of course, Yung Guol was a little confused, he wanted to name his school, but at the same time, they felt something strange, all the buildings started shaking, everyone thought it was an earthquake, and the sound was like an explosion, so it was incredibly surprising, and they didn't notice that the truck was near their building I hit a wall, they thought the driver was just drunk, but how did the truck do that, because should I tell them about it first? But at the same moment, the girl who was standing on the roof understood that most likely in a few minutes the alarm would be triggered and the hunters would come here, she was sure that she would be caught. But at the same moment he said that there was no need to worry, because she had already woken up the guys who immediately began to get out of the truck, it was the horned horror. They together with their guys put in bets on the phone, at first they thought that 50 people would die, but then they thought that a whole hundred would die. So at the same moment people started to die instantly, until our protagonist appeared, who in one light movement crashed into the monster, thereby throwing it back. He turned to the people and told them to run away, because you cannot stand in a pillar, and the monster that was now standing in front of him was already familiar to him. He noticed that they had one horn, so they are not particularly dangerous, but at the same time noticed that not everything is so simple, because another one who had one more horn was running at him, and he threw a motorcycle at our character, which of course he dodged. We can all understand that a horned monster on average lives 5 minutes 6 years, but most of them die with one horn, but it is a small part of about 8% of monsters that can have a second lesson. The ability to reproduce, a longer lifespan and physical strength several times greater than that of an ordinary individual. 
Ya Ryan noticed that he got up in front and started growling, so it was clear or something that he was fast and strong, but not so strong that our hero could not cope with him. He would somehow decide to catch him, but the problem was in his strength, because in comparison with the tank that he recently fought against, he is three to four times more resilient. Of course, he could have handled the pole, and at least he had some work gear, but he wasn't armed at all right now, so all he had to do was dodge the horned horror that had two horns on it. Of course, it was necessary to improvise, so our hero looked down at his feet and noticed that there was a sign, a road sign, which he turned into his own weapon, so armed with it, he was ready to attack. But as soon as the monster started approaching him, he just jumped over our hero, which is why put him in an awkward position, the monster flew at the people who were standing behind and couldn't move. Everyone should have understood that all monsters have a level of danger, because the difference between two stars and three is simply huge, the destructive power itself goes far beyond the level of human capabilities. Because an ordinary person in such a monster is simply distributed to pieces, even for very capable hunters it will be very reckless to fight with such without special equipment. If we talk about exceptions, then a top-ranked tank with outstanding innate qualities can resist it. That's right, right at that moment, Chung Gyul just stopped that monster's punch in his own woo, he could have stopped it, but it would be difficult to deliver a third rank killing blow, so at that moment, he noticed that our hero was just flying behind that very monster and pierced it right in the neck. They looked at each other in surprise, Yung Gual and our hero, so the first one told Lee that it would be at least a few more minutes before the rescuers arrive. And he also heard the distress signal, but still this situation is very unexpected, so while I go to the rescuers, people may die. We, in turn, understand that Chong Gal could have used a provocative cry, this is a basic technique that any tank can use, this technique of attracting monsters with a high-pitched scream. Call Gun, who dreamed of becoming a hunter, was already prepared for the fact that someone would come for the rescue team to distract the monsters, but he just couldn't offer some guy to risk his life together, because they were just playing computer games together, but our protagonist told him to shout, because most likely before there is a real tank in front of it, it should definitely have a technique that attracts monsters. Young Gal started to say that it would be very dangerous then, but the main character didn't care because he was going to fight alone anyway. He also said that if he were Chong Gal, he would have thought for himself, but at that moment he was not alone, because he is not bad, and he plays normally, so he also wants to protect people. Somehow it turned out that he began to pretend to be a hunter, but this is not bad, because if this happened, then you need to build properly. He said that Chong Gual probably didn't have the chance to use this skill, so they stood up and realized that it was time to try out the skills they had learned together. In all the shops that were in the area, there were already a lot of corpses, many people were hiding under the store shelves, many people were already ready to die, but at the same time, Chong Gual used his provocative cry, which immediately attracted all the monsters. They were ready to take a fight, because the monsters were heading towards them, one after another one, but of course Chong Gal was quite strong. So thanks to his bare arms, he could throw them to the side, so while many were distracted, our hero continued to deal with the monsters. He even noticed a very strange thing, that these monsters were picking up people's corpses and throwing the truck, which was why there were no corpses on the street. But while he was looking at it, other monsters started attacking him, so he figured that with the normal hunting method, there was no chance of success. He remembered the words, or rather the conversation with Chong Golem, where they said that they both fought from a melee position, they do not have not only cover at a distance, but also suitable equipment. It will be an ordinary team game without the opportunity to give 100%, because they do not have items, they will interfere with each other, so you just need to distribute tasks. Chong Gal as a tank will take on those who are weaker, but superior in number and our hero will deal with those who are stronger, and those who are smaller, he all this time continued to strike blow after blow. And in comparison with his technique needles, as well as a stick from a road sign, whatever he was using at that moment wasn't strong enough, because with a needle, he would have been able to handle it in a few strokes. Well, of course, with such an ordinary material, he definitely could not fight with full force because the material was aluminum, which bends easily. He wouldn't be able to deal with them in the same way, but he knew more or less how to deal with them, because that guy, or rather Zeke, was fighting with his bare hands, because apart from one or two punches, they were mostly so fast, but he received light injuries that made it difficult to move, as if he was wet from the rain clothing, so at the same time, he landed a kick on the monster's leg. Terrible conditions where a minute's mistake can cost a life, it was in these conditions that Ya Ren fought to go up one more step, he continued to throw blows with blows. While dodging just like that elf, he recalled everything that he managed to learn beaten together with the elf, he even used his fourth technique, which he managed to study quite recently. But still at one point he lost his vigilance, one of the monsters grabbed him by the leg and immediately nailed him to the floor, which caused incredible pain for our protagonist. He was very injured, blood was flowing from his mouth because he was not wearing any equipment that the damage was certainly significant. 
He talked about how he might look a little pathetic, but there was no other way. It wasn't like a fair fight with a human, so that was the reason why he wasn't so scared. Because he knew that one moment Chong Guol would come and throw the monster back, he remembered that the team's luck this is also an ability. At that moment, many people who were sitting in offices and were still intact seemed surprised that our heroes together were able to defeat dozens of horned horrors without any equipment. They thought it was incredible that they managed to film it. It was a college student, a president, a dungeon researcher, but another guy told him that they didn't run away just because the first one was too scared to run, but they still felt that the two who were down there were too strong, even though they looked younger than them. Judging by the number of dangerous grades, they are experienced enough to get a gold rank, they must be students of the warrior school or super beginners who have not declared themselves. In any case, it wasn't important anymore, so they decided to upload this video right now, because it will be too late when I write about it, he can already see how this video will get at least a million, at least 10 million views. Young Guol, who was also seriously injured, thought that the rescue team would come much earlier, that it would not be possible to deal with all the monsters together, but at the same time, he was distracted by Yao Ryao who said that he looked cool, but would he help him get up? So at the same time, however, as soon as both of them gave each other their hands, they considered that they still suffered a little. Young Gaul said that our protagonist was just something, he was able to defeat as many as two, but our hero also did not remain silent, he said that he actually fought nine monsters at once, and even helped him with those two. Well, as soon as they didn't finish with the mutual compliments, Young Gaul asked what school our hero goes to, because he thinks that the rumors are different from reality. He was told that schools in Korea are not worth paying attention to, but he didn't want to call our hero's school bad, he asked not to think anything bad. Ya Ryong, in turn, knew that he was probably a high school warrior, given his skill, it was safe to say so, so he asked Zhang Guol's rank, but Zhang Guol, in return for the meat, said that he wasn't sure, because he hadn't gotten close to many people yet, even though he didn't know what to do. I've taken a couple of tests, but I don't think they're related to his actual abilities, so I thought about half of the students might be better than him. Our hero at the same time became thoughtful, because he thought that then he would not be taken to the school of heroes, since someone else is higher than Chang Gaul. But at the same time, both of them noticed that there was another monster in front of them, on one of the trucks, because most likely the tank skill did not touch it. But they should have been concerned not with the one who was standing on the truck, but with the one who was inside. Young Guol thought that they could easily kill the homogenous one before it did any damage. But at the same time, strange sounds were heard from the truck, that monster was just taken and most likely eaten, while dragging the truck away. We also understand that the horned horror is one of many species that live in a tribal society, so the two horned play the role of elders, parents, and act as the head of a small horde, which is usually no more than ten of them. They unite with other tribes, thus increasing their calculated and accordingly strength, but this population growth has its limits, especially among the harsh world of the dungeon. Horned horror is at the very end of the food chain, their numbers are controlled by their strong predators, but in rare cases mutants who relocate the rest grow three horns and become not leaders. Instead, they were kings who led an army of hundreds of thousands, if not thousands of them, so they were facing a horned rex horror with a five-star danger rating. It was at this moment that the same rex just took and sent Samora to the side, after which he jumped with incredible speed, he jumped with such a strong speed that at the same time he broke our protagonist's weapon. At first, Young Guol wanted to stop it by trying to take a hold, but the monster was much stronger, he just took it and threw it over himself, so that absolutely the entire sidewalk was broken. It was at this point that they realized that what they were missing was time, and two couples who were considered geniuses, two guys who could achieve great things, but not in their current states. Determination, strength, courage and intuition, and even if they gave their best there, it would definitely not cover the huge difference in experience and strength. But still they tried to resist, our hero continued to get up, he went straight to the monster. The monster once again launched its attack, which hit the target perfectly, but of course, on the very day before Yu Song lost himself, few people knew about him. And also in this world, not a single person knew what he was hiding, because it was at this moment that his eyes began to glow purple. His entire body seemed to radiate energy. Here is a picture that was 11 years ago, a confession that the man made at the press conference, it was Yu Sung, who admitted his many mistakes that he had made earlier, and also wanted to apologize, because it was these words that greatly grew the world. Twelve hours before the Battle of Sea Begins Rum was confused, because on Sunday, she found out the whole truth, because Yu Sung was the main culprit of the dragon slaying case, which was mistakenly known as the hero. At that time, everyone proved that Yu Sung subdued Arjas with the help of the members of the Jayabiak group, but the matter between their relationship was later revealed. Currently, at the time the newspaper was printed, the investigation was still underway, because for two days SAE Ram had been going through all the records. She couldn't shove, she constantly drank coffee and also thought that if our hero's father was falsely accused, then now this person has lost all his strength to resist. Because many who want to get his place have ruined his reputation, 
This is all shackling him, but what she couldn't understand exactly was how his father was being held down. They framed him, because initially he was accused of an attempt, everyone presented the charges and the testimony was shocked, and it was then that public opinion was incredibly different. Even if you take into account the fact that the theory of alleged evidence was present, then the opinion of others could not be changed. If it were Yu Sung's place, she would definitely resist to the last, stand on her own. But Ya Ryong's father was certainly not like that. He admitted the accusations that were directed at him, without even trying to deny them, so that after a public opinion conference in Mikukasla, he was eventually branded a fraud and a murderer. The lion girl couldn't believe it. Because how did it even happen? Because even if it was under the pressure of threats, he had to hold on to the last and stand his ground, although the general situation she didn't know at that time, but it was clearly not in favor of Yu Sung now. She didn't think it was fair, she knew there was something wrong, she was sure there was something undisclosed, so at the same time, I noticed that Wikipedia says that he doesn't have a family. She thought it was some kind of mistake, it was all a shock to her, but according to the data, they are definitely not related, but rather our protagonist, as well as Yu Sung. She wanted to check it out, because maybe the reason Yu Sung started making accusations was because he wanted to protect Ya Ryong. But at the same time, he couldn't understand what was happening to his body. He couldn't understand what was happening to him, so as soon as the demon came at him, all he had to do was improvise, because all he could know was that his body could move, so in that moment he realized that was more than enough. After one hit, the demon noticed that he wasn't exactly in an advantageous position. He noticed the danger in our main character. He wanted to attack him, of course, but as soon as he was on top, as soon as he wanted to hit our enemy again, you noticed that at the same time there was a counterattack that drove the demon into the wall. Yao Ryan understands that he still hasn't beaten him, but two more punches on his points should definitely be enough, especially the chin. Our main thing now is to finish this fight as quickly as possible, otherwise he just won't have time. But right at that moment, his cella just took over, so the demon went straight for him. He started flying at a probable speed, but he was pinned down by a truck that was thrown by Chan Golem. This was the reason why they separated, all because each of them had a different role that matched their abilities. So Chang Guol's ability was that he had to hold off the opponent even if the body broke. One had to hold on to the end, such was his role and duty, and also because that he will fight to the last, he will now deal the strongest blow that he is now capable of. The thoughts of our hero, as well as Chang Gaul Dam, they were ready to risk everything, so these risks were justified. The demon's skull just went and broke into splinters from the inside, and the vehicle carrying the monsters was caught. Now the loss of citizens will be minimal, so while Yung Gal helped our hero up, Ya Ryan even managed to laugh it off a little, because he said that they did a great job. That less than an hour later, this shocking news spread all over the world and with this two guys, it is better to say the main problem and it had a huge impact on the whole world, it was even noticed by the broker of our protagonist. The comma in which Ya Ryong spent his childhood, at one point he was injured, so they tried to disinfect him, or rather his wound, he wanted his father to stop. He believed that it could heal itself early, but Yu Sung believed that even a small wound should be treated, because if you leave it now, just so, then it can be even more painful later. Right at that moment, isn't it painful for his father, because when he fights with monsters, it gets a serious wound, doesn't it hurt for Tom when he has a lot of blood on his hands, or on his body? But Yu Song said with a big smile on his face that he was also afraid, because when he gets injured, it hurts, and if he bleeds heavily, it gets scary, but he endures, because if he doesn't fight, other people might get hurt. It was at that moment that the main character had one thought, he wanted to become just like the person in front of him, he wanted to become just like his father, but on the other hand, he understood that Yu Sung Mi himself would like such a future for his son, he always told him that you can't, as if to feel guilty for these words, perhaps that's why I forbade it. But Ya Ryong, in turn, believed that when he grew up, he would definitely understand why the same person did not want him to become a hunter, but at that very moment it was already impossible. All this was probably a dream, because when the protagonist woke up from his bunk, he thought that some very familiar situation, but at the same time noticed that some strange person was sitting next to him, who said that most likely someone was aiming at him. Of course, it couldn't be said that Ya Ryong wasn't scared, so he turned around at the same time and saw Zeke standing in front of him, peeling apples and admitting that it was half his fault last time. Our hero immediately decided to get up and ask what that elf was doing there at all, but as soon as he raised his body, he felt unbearable pain. Zeke, in turn, told him not to make any sudden movements, because even though the treatment was successful, but after such an injury, recovery is usually difficult, 
He will be able to move his hand in about a month, so he asked him to think only about rest, I give him a lot to do. Ya Ryong No would like to ask a question. Zeke knew that this was probably going to be a relationship issue with his father, so he said at the same time that yes, he knew, they worked together. It was Ya Ryong who made an incredibly abrupt action that surprised Zeke. Well, the only thing it was intended for was to make an apple it was in his hands. Our protagonist looked at Zeke and couldn't understand why he was looking at him like that, because did he really think that our hero was going to attack him? Zeke, in turn, replied that in truth, this is not the reaction that was expected here, but also our hero, who continued if an apple that was carefully peeled said that he did not know what the same elf was waiting for, because he was just going to ask if he knew his father, because today Zeke was completely different from the last time, which is why he can conclude that he didn't just know him. The main character was exhausted and from the side of an incredibly aggressive face, he told Zeke to get out, or he would cut off his hand with the knife that he was holding in his hands. This is probably the reaction I expected from Zeke, because he chose the most appropriate expression, so if it all hurt, then I apologize. But Zeke said it was nothing, because he was almost right, even though he was expecting a more emotional reaction. Ya Ryan that if someone wanted as much as this emotional reaction, then there was a need to come two years earlier to fully get what was expected, because that's when his head was full of thoughts about the people who had done this to his father as well, but did nothing, once he even I wanted to make them answer for everything. But now you can't even tell if he thinks differently or not, because he just changed his priorities, after all, and this was too much even for him. Even to the level of Zeke, he definitely does not reach yet, and what can he do should I do something to get them to respond? The only thing that he can do is continue to pay for medical expenses, and also continue to live until drugs are banned, which is now the main goal. Although he didn't know exactly when he would be able to reach it, he had done everything possible to make it real, so even if someone tried to stop him, he would definitely find a way to stop them. Zeke threw up his hands, so he admitted that his plans were not intended to interfere with our protagonist, because he only came to ask a few questions. Because why is Yu Sung's own son not registered in the documents, and after he started having a mental disorder, who looked after him in the first place? But the main character said that he raised him alone, because does he really think that he is the only one who pestered with such questions? Of course, our hero grew up alone. At the same time, as soon as Zeke listened to our hero, he said, has he heard about Duganaki? Yaren said it was probably a foreigner, so he didn't know any of them. But the elf confessed that it was not a human name, but the official name of the dragon destruction. The very source of the poison that poisoned his father, as well as the most dangerous creature still living and brutalizing in their world. All this information certainly surprised our protagonist, because even a few decades ago, if humanity was gripped by fear of them, these moments of their appearance for many years, people together with other races built a wall or protection from these monsters, so only thanks to the merits of these dungeon hunters. Monsters no longer threaten the safety of people, the exception was some creatures that were still able to destroy the erected wall. So they were strong creatures just like dragons, something in general stronger, smarter and more cunning than any race in this world. Although the ancient race was hostile to humans, but among strong monsters, the dragon's danger level was high, they didn't just feel disgusted with humans, but perceived them as an object intended for sports and exploitation by dragons. However, at one point, they made the mistake of underestimating the strength of all the hunters, as well as their capabilities. Consider at the same time that it is not necessary to destroy people, because they will die coping with dungeons. The dragons were going to wait for the collapse of the state and society so that they could raise people like cattle and play the role of deities for them in exchange for safety. Ya Ryong thought they could be thanked for their feudal plans, but Zeke said that the only thing that was true was that the hunters had survived and learned how to defend the dungeons. So as soon as the plan failed, the dragons decided to intervene personally and subdue this world, intimidating people with their never-before-seen strength. And at that moment Yu Song, the father of our protagonist, a hunter, appeared, who proved that dragons can be defeated if you have the right strategy and sat down to implement it. It was only thanks to him that dragon hunting was successful all over the world, and changes began from that time on. Ya Ren said that he knows what happened next, because they just hid in the dungeons afterwards. But Zeke replied that you just changed tactics, because they are very cunning, they can also take the form of any race. The dragons realized that they could only defeat humans by force and strength, so they began to change their appearance and disappear into society. It was a secret, of course, but Zeke wanted to tell our hero because he was Yu Sung's son, and also because he was going to be a hunter. Zeke walked right up to our protagonist and told him that Duganahi was the dragon leader that his father had been chasing until he was taken down by an illness. He said that it is necessary to catch him and then it will be possible to make a medicine that will be able to study his father, because if someone is willing to do this, they must become much stronger to rise to the very top as a hunter, the elf will definitely provide a chance to punish Duganahi. 
By this point, as soon as their conversation came to an end, we can see that the only thing left in our protagonist's room from Zeke is the same fruit basket, as well as a business card. Looking at her, he remembered their conversation, where it was said that if he didn't believe Zeke, or couldn't make up his mind, then he just had to live as if he hadn't heard anything, or had forgotten everything. Ya Ryan B, in turn, exhaled and asked himself, after all, really he cannot decide, because if this is true, then even participation will prevent him with death. But there is nothing he will not back down. Zeke who turns out to still be standing next to our hero said that it's not up to him to decide everything, because he has already he said that Tom needed to level up to get that right. Dragons are extremely treacherous and hide quite deep, they have a lot of faces that they carefully hide, waiting in the wings, so even if they get the proof and make it public, it won't make any sense until they personally destroy them after all the future is revealed, they will hide somewhere again. Only the horrors of distrust will remain, so you need to cut them out quickly, secretly, and also sharply, as if you are trying to get a foreign body out of the body using a scalpel. You cannot leave the dragons a single chance to escape or resist, because you need to destroy them with one blow in the weakest place. Zeke, for the sake of catching Duganai, started preparing special teams several years ago. They were all very worthy and reliable hunters who were definitely able to destroy the dragon. Because if Ren's skill was not enough to fight them at all, then no matter how much he wanted it, then he would not have a place in the team. At least one team member, this means not only stealing such a plan, but also putting the entire team in danger. At the same time, our protagonist realized that they probably wouldn't be able to wait for him, because how much time did he have? But Zeke was already starting to turn around and say that they couldn't even accurately determine the identity of that dragon, because he can even assume that it's about two years old. But the faster the better, and most likely the main character realized that they wouldn't take into account his circumstances if everything was ready. And it didn't matter to the elf what he thought of him, because if the elf didn't believe him, they might never meet again. But he could promise one thing, whether the elf would join him or not, then the elf would simply destroy that very dragon. Our hero constantly replayed these thoughts in his head, so as soon as he started washing, he realized what it means to have a way to cure his father. Of course, Ya Ryan was beginning to doubt it, as he was shocked by such a sudden and surprising news. But maybe it was worry, or maybe it was fear that he just wouldn't be able to participate together, even though that wasn't the final answer yet. Well, after looking at his reflection in the mirror, he realized that he would definitely be on the team. Whatever happened, he felt an incredible joy. He finally had a chance to grab an opportunity that just hadn't been seen before, so it's possible that for the first time in his life, he felt such a strong desire that filled him heart to the brim. At this point, he turned around and noticed that a woman had entered his room. She noticed that Ya Ryan had woken up and also asked if there was any pain in his arm or other places but she decided that she would tell him the details of his treatment more often hiding, because at first there would be a slight discomfort in the muscles. After all, they reassembled his arm. Ya Ryan was surprised by this, so the woman explained that when the ambulance arrived, the arm was in a serious condition. Just a little more and it had to be pulsed, but during the operation, a high-ranking leader joined them and reassembled his arm. Our hero at the same time decided to ask about another patient who was most likely with him, so he said that as far as she knows, he was discharged on the same day, because he has a fairly high recovery rate. Ya Ryan was stung by the fact that he was discharged on the same day, so how long did he stay in the hospital anyway? But as soon as he thought about it, the girl only asked for a photo. Ya Ryan was obviously a little shocked by the request, but wouldn't it be okay for him to check out at all? The girl said she could, but warned him that it would be better for him to leave through the main entrance, because now the hospital is full of reporters, they all want to interview him. Our protagonist didn't have the faintest idea, because why would a reporter interview him? But at this very moment, the girl showed him a video, where he said that most likely it was the one who was in the video. The most terrible accident that should not have happened again was prevented by that person, because there would have been several hundred victims if not for them. Everyone just went crazy, curious about who he was, also where he came from, and also handed him the bag, saying that it was a package from his friend, who said that it was all necessary in order if he did not want to light up. Our hero smiled, because most likely there will be equipment that will grant invisibility, but as soon as he opened the bag, he saw just a climbing rope. So as soon as he got out of the window, the girl who took the photo with him said that she would post this photo on Instagram when he became a hero, a famous hunter. At the same time, our hero was already sitting in the same car where C. Rom was sitting, so our protagonist asked, after all, was there really nothing but a rope? Natalia said that it was necessary to do so that his identity was revealed. So at the same time, she reported that she went shopping, picking up his clothes and shoes, taking his size by eye, also bought a smartphone because she thought it was broken. She looked at Ya Ryan who was very happy with the gifts, 
He held the bag to him so he asked him not to cry, but at the same time told him that she just couldn't believe everything that she read. She didn't even know where to start and what to ask first, and you were surprised that such a thing happened right where he was. She didn't even think that the monster would be there. But Ya Rang said that life is just a chain of events, but where did the two of them go? SAE Ram held her forehead, so she said that they would only have time today, so they could still rest, and to get their clothes in time, they needed to take measurements today. Our hero was wearing clothes, but SAE Ram said she was so happy for Ya Rayong, because there was a lot of luck, the best top level 8 leer in the world decided to sew armor for him. We understand that there are only three types of costumes that depend on the quality of the hunter. The first is, of course, fabric, that is, sewn from a material whose physical ability is at the lowest level, but with the help of various techniques. The fabric is easiest to replace with its protective properties, most often these are used by healers and magicians. The second type is metal, such suits are very strong, nothing can be said, but the problem is of course in their severity because strong high-quality metal is difficult to cope with if you do not have outstanding physical data and health. And somewhere in the middle is a leather suit, not too heavy strong enough, the most that for a long distance, such as our hero, it will be just right. Ya Ryang just smiled and said that it was true, because he himself had recently found out that fighting with the main hands is very unpleasant, so at the same time. While our protagonist was connecting a new phone, SAE Ram asked him how he even managed to destroy it, she had a jerk you already after all, how could they grab the two of them? That in turn for those like her there is a video of how he defeated them. The girl or said only that the video was shot only to the middle of the point all that is visible there is how they destroyed the one horned and two horned monsters, and the final battle with five star is not. This of course made it clear to our protagonist that this very monster was extremely strong, because even if he or Kalgan were fully prepared to fight it, they would still not be able to defeat it, but where did the energy that flowed through his veins come from? While he was thinking about it, C. Ram wanted to hear his answer, because why didn't he say anything, so how did he manage to do it? So the only thing that Ya Rayang said was that he didn't know anything himself, he didn't have any other explanation. C. Ram couldn't believe it, because such a monster can only be destroyed by professional hunters with full training, as part of an entire squad, and it seems that the main character didn't take it, did they really manage to take it together? Well, as soon as our character looked in your direction, she immediately turned away, and then told him to be careful and now they will not give him a quiet life. At first, Ya Ryang thought that he had already seen the reporters, but SAE Rum said that they weren't the only ones, because he didn't seem to understand that both of you are in earnest right now. But the other guy was already completely exposed, and he wasn't even offered any interviews or even a program in the last three days, and he didn't say a word about the main character. This surprised our protagonist. But C. Rom continued, saying that he was asked to at least name it, but he replied that without his consent, he simply could not. That's when we realized that as soon as both of us finished the last battle, Ya Ryong had one request for Yung Gal, asking him not to talk about what happened there, as well as about Ya Ryong's identity. He definitely didn't want to be recognized all the time. All this news from the elf girl certainly made our hero happy, so she realized that you probably became very close friends with him, so the only thing she said was that you can't let anything happen while he is taking exams at school. Our hero corresponded with the principal all this time, so he asked Si Ram if there was any reason that nothing should happen before the exam. So Si Ram exhaled once again and said that he had learned a little bit about the exam, so it would be much more difficult than he thought he's at the beginning. After all, if you look at the level of competition over the past five years, then the probability is one to one, this applies only to those cases when there are applicants. Our hero of course said that there is no need to worry about such a small number, in any case, any student will be much weaker than him. C. Rom was starting to get nervous again, so he said that he didn't mean that it wasn't his abilities. So as soon as they got out of the car, C. Rom said that on the other hand, he didn't say anything new. Because his abilities were better, you can't argue with that, but he asked to take a look this is different. Because really those who do not have the ability to complete the exam only on their own. At first, our protagonist wanted to say that this would be the case, but at the same time he realized that most likely some of them would join groups for exams. C. Rom thinks correctly, because over the past few years, most of those who entered the school were a family of hunters, or one parent, or both were hunters naturally. All parents know each other, so they do not agree in advance on which team to make throws. Members of such groups who entered especially in the last five years are 100%. So if our hero tries to tell everyone that he is the guy from the news, he will immediately become a target and the main competitor. Of course, the School of Heroes does not provide for this, but it would be better to enroll on special grounds for the merits of destroying monsters, but Ya Ren that he does not need it. Because if most and not all do this, it means that just for the sake of money, someone entered himself, it will be enough, he promised that he would definitely break through and be accepted. SAE Ram initially thought that everything would be fine and wonderful, 
but when she looked back at our hero who couldn't find a toilet, she felt that the situation hadn't changed at all, so the only thing he said was that she would go first, she would wait for our main character as soon as he changed. It was at this point that C. Ram had already gone to one of the employees and said that she had an appointment with the president. But as soon as the girl who was sitting at the table connected with the president, he told Sa Ram to forgive them, because the president had urgent business today. The girl who was sitting at the table apologized, she said that she would not pay C. Ram compensation. But even so, C. Ram was furious, because she said that the problem was not in her, in two months you need to pass the exams at the school of heroes, how can you cancel the meeting and not even bring it? But at the same moment, the door opened, a man came out of it, and he realized that he had seen this face somewhere before. S.A.E. Rum turned around to look around. We, in turn, bring up that recently hunters often say that young people have become completely different now, even if they are right now, but the hunters who came later were always in better conditions than their predecessors. They had these tactics of attacking the monster that they had developed during the first wave, risking their lives, as well as more advanced equipment technology. However, the term current youth meant all those who were already born in good conditions. The surviving hunters and hunters created families and gave their children everything they had. This turned out to be not only the abilities, but also the upbringing that they received from very early childhood. Even if one were to ask about the top of such a blessed generation, most of the hunters would point to her, Han Ga Yoon, who was 18 years old. She said that it wasn't important for that particular elf girl, because the most important thing was that she would be a first-year student at this school. She asked if she knew who she was, didn't she? S.A.E. Rum replied that Sunbi was the president of the Hero High School's court board. So Ta said that the president of that firm was her uncle, and she had an urgent matter to attend to, so she asked for his help. But she understands her displeasure about the cancelled meeting, so I came up with the idea brilliant idea. She also said that the meeting wasn't cancelled because of her, it was just that C. Rom conceded to her. Of course, we all understand that it was complete nonsense, everything that she said about C. Rom conceding. As well as the fact that all the winnings were left, she understood that this means that he holds the position of president of the Hero School's court board, as well as Han Ga Yoon's terrible personality. But by this point, when she was pretty upset, our protagonist showed up and said that it looked like S.A.E. Rom Sunbi and said that they couldn't help it, so that girl said thank you for your understanding. But right at that moment, the main character said that he would have to tell her to stop plotting there and get away from them, which immediately kicked her out in shock. Sunbi started to say that it was rather rude, so who was standing in front of him? S.A.E. Rom wanted to start the character, but at the same time, he realized that something had hit her, but there were no results. The only thing the guy said was that at that time, C. Rom didn't have a voice, so why did she decide to open her mouth? Because he doesn't remember asking her anything, he asked her to mind her own business, and also just sit quietly and be silent. But our hero immediately gave out what he knew about him. He said that his name was Yuya Ryong. He was 17 years old, the first blood type, and his place of residence was Seoul. He even mentioned his favorite food, as well as his weight, so I thought that would be enough. But most importantly, he said that he was currently preparing to transfer to the hero school. And to be honest, he was a little disappointed, because I didn't think that there would be some high school trash in this school. Bullying, just like in the army, our hero also felt like his body was being taken away at the same time. But Sunbi said that she was sorry, because she doesn't really dislike people who throw harsh words, even though it only applies to the topic of who has the right to do so. That if he is preparing for transfer, then some defective product that does not meet the standards at all simply does not have the right to do so. In turn, the main character just took and carried out an attack directly in the left eye, after which the entire left part of the face was destroyed. He said that I understood what was going on, because he just tried to use what he learned, I don't know if she liked it or not, but he understood everything. Sunbi felt that the same skill that he had used on them had been applied to him. So just as he started looking at Ya Ryong, a strange person came out from the other door. It was Han Sung Woo, a former hunter who is currently just an armor designer. He said that this girl is just a little bit of a nuisance, because he works, and that friend to arrange and we are here concerts, so still namesakes to answer. It hadn't been a week since Dell had worked there, and to see her father turn himself over there. The designer at the same time asked for forgiveness for his niece, because she is used to creating what she wants. S.A.E. Rom, in turn, said that there was no need to apologize, because she was very happy, if this whole situation was due to the stubbornness of the student council president. Then she thinks that they can easily solve the whole problem, and everything was right, everything that Ono just saw was even much worse than her I expected it. Therefore, it was clear that that girl held a strict superiority of skills, so if someone like me was standing in front of her, they wouldn't even remember him. It was at this point that Ya Ryong said that he needed to step away for a moment, 
And what exactly does Sunbi do at school? After all, it doesn't seem like an ordinary student council member. So SAE Ram replied that it was the student council president, in other words, the strongest of all the hero school students. All this could not but surprise our protagonist, because he should have understood that every student of a specialized school receives a temporary license, and thanks to this license, students have the opportunity to get experience in preparing for professional activities in low-level raids without school classes and accompanying a professional hunter. But there are exceptions, such as high school heroes. Inside the school, groups of students with exceptional grades are formed, which are recognized by the unofficial cleaning team. They are the ones who get the right to independently control and express their opinion on the board of directors, and can also team up with professional teams to participate in raids on monsters above five stars. For this reason, there is no official team of professionals among hunters, who are called future rankers. SAE Rum also said that according to the rules, it should be like this, but the girl in front of him was only a sophomore. Our hero thought that there was nothing wrong with this, but SAE Ram replied that this girl just took away the position of president from the one who held this position before her. Ya Ryan couldn't believe it, so SAE Ram said that she was advocating for prioritizing skills that can be accessed from the first semester of second year. So as soon as Ga Yoon Sunbi entered the second year, she stepped in and immediately pulled out her blade, which was the most high-profile incident in the entire school. History in schools, she began to challenge all the high school students who held the council, and as a result, at the end of the first semester, she defeated everyone, including the president. Thanks to this, he became the youngest president in history. By this point, as soon as the conversation came to an end, Sunbi just turned her back on her uncle, telling him that he needed to stop grumbling so much, because it was time for her to go. SAE Ram thought it was great that everything had passed them by, that they were doing well, but right at that moment, the main character said that he wanted to make a bet with Sunbi as well, because he had heard that a student from school was quite strong, she wouldn't just act like that. Those who are younger than her, Ya Ryan only wanted to solve the problem, because if he lost, he would step in. SAE Ram asked the main character to calm down, but it was too late, because Sunbi wanted to know the conditions in case she lost. A smile appeared on the protagonist's face, and he said that it was very quick to grasp because he had heard that there was such a technique as taking steps away. Between hunters, based on the ancient techniques of the former arts, the opponent, or evade is prohibited. The winner will be the one who retreats first, because if he loses, he will concede in due time today. It was clear to everyone that this method does not threaten to get damaged, it trains sensitivity, dexterity, and technique, this is one of the training methods that are often used. So our hero said that if she loses, then next year, when he staged the School of Heroes, he will take the place of the student council president. SAE Rum thought that the main character was crazy, because how did he know about this method, and the president would never agree if he was in his right mind, but you of course found it all funny, so she accepted the bet. By this point, both of them were already in the workshop, in the test room, where they were ready to start the bout. The aura was coming from the two of them, and we see the not-so-distant past, where SAE Ram continued to tell our character that he was crazy, because he still had a chance to refuse, because the chairman is a rational person. Everything could be solved by simple breeding on their part, because it was raised, but he was completely healthy, what did he think he should do with such a hand as his? After all, even if he won, there was no way she would hand over the position of student council president to him. Well, the only thing that Joran said was that he wouldn't win, because even if he was completely healthy, he still wouldn't have a chance because she was too strong. SAE Rom couldn't figure out if our protagonist was betting because he knew he was going to lose, so the time they spent here would definitely be wasted. The main character said that he understands that this is worrying, but asked him to understand, because you just need to trust, because in the end, it will definitely be a good deal. C. Rom was very downcast at the time, not even what he had said, so what could they gain from a duel that was already known to have an outcome, since he wasn't going to lose on purpose to win her favor. But as soon as the image was asleep in her mind, she realized that he wasn't stupid enough to try something like that. While S.A.E. Ram was trying to figure out our hero's plan, the stylist came up to her, asking for forgiveness, because Tom had nothing to say, he was only lying. He knew that his niece should be the leader of the student council, but instead of being friendly, she only says that most importantly, he once again apologized to Siram. Ram. C. Ram used to say that the situation came down to this because of being unreasonably stubborn, but the stylist didn't think so, because he doesn't know much about the person who came with her, but he is sure that he understands his intention. It was at this point that we could see what was happening in the fight, the girl said that our hero should have been aware, because she is not going to use both hands, only so it will be fair. Ya Ryan smiled in turn and said that it didn't matter to him, because he would just take it as an excuse once he lost. The second he said that, he noticed that the girl appeared in front of him a moment later, both people who were watching this were surprised for different reasons. 
S.A. Iram was surprised because the punch wasn't strong, but it was too fast, she didn't even notice when she got close to him, so the only reason she was really surprised was the attack speed. Because shadow sparring is a defensive training. You have to take risks to make contact with the opponent however, Han Gan didn't show any hesitation, it was just the attack, as well as the speed to retreat, but also her endless pride. S.A.E. Ram was starting to realize that Han, she couldn't even notice these movements, because if it was S.A.E. Ram in our character's place, she definitely wouldn't be able to react to this first attack. But at the same time, the stylist, because he was not sure that it was possible to ask such a question, but is the same person who fought with his girlfriend preparing to transfer to the warrior school. After all, the information that S.A.E. Ram sent, he doubted that our character would be a talented person, and everything that he saw on stage now just exceeded his expectations, because ten years ago, he was also an adventurer who was full of energy. That was why he understood Ya Ren's intention. He realized that it wasn't out of pride, not to show off or look down on Han, it was just a desire to learn more, because Han was stronger than most people her age, if she gained experience and skill. Then no one doubted that she would also be strong, like some of the lower rankers, and our character just wanted to experience it. The point he had to reach, the distance he had to cover was just unbelievable. By this point, just as Stilst was thinking about it, the battle was in full swing, because Han herself didn't expect such a result. She said that it was a long time ago when she felt this after entering the school. She thought that no one would be able to evade her for so long she was impressed with our character. Thought he wouldn't be able to hold out, so she realized that there was a person standing in front of her who had injured more than just his arm, and most likely, judging by his movements and stamina, he wasn't even 50% healthy. Ya Ryong, on the other hand, couldn't understand, because how did he know what he was capable of? But hand that he was quite fast when fighting the Horned Horror, because in the last four days, she watched this video hundreds of times, she said that she was a fan of his, famous hero, unknown Mr. A. So it was at this point that she suggested a draw, and also continue the next time he entered the school, then they could continue from where they left off after he fully recovered. She even thought that she didn't want to leave it at that, and that he could go with her uncle as planned. But of course, she didn't have time to finish, because as soon as Yao Ryan caught his breath, he said that he couldn't believe her. Because of her sharp eyes, as well as groundless confidence, I thought that he just didn't understand what was going on. Because he didn't intend to agree to a draw, so he reminded me that he had they have the position of president of the student council at stake. Our hero does not intend to give up, so he asked them to stop wasting time and continue where they left off, because now I understand everything here. All three of them thought that our protagonist was just bluffing, and they all thought that it wouldn't work out even if he didn't continue. The chances he'd just missed would be the best outcome there could be. Han at this point said that it was unfortunate, because she likes people with ambitions. But now the action of our protagonist was definitely not ambitious, it was just idiocy, she was disappointed in him. But even so, all the main character did was smile and move first, and then everyone was even more shocked, because he was already very close to Han, and he was trying to kick her in the same way as she was. S.A.E. Ram was happy, because he knew that he was holding back all this time, but the stylist said that he didn't think they could just say that our character was holding back, the stylist was completely wrong. Because he wasn't just trying to assess his strength against Han, they only fought at 30 at most in the short sprints, but in those short moments, he had perfectly learned and copied her movement, it was never a matter of winning or standing. The reason why he had asked for this chance was to steal his niece's skills we in turn understand that since his childhood Yi Ryong worked as a smuggler, and there was one rule that he always followed, so that it did not happen. Never make unprofitable deals, so at the same moment he continued to step on the girl, he each time, time after time went up more, somehow moved, he talked about the one to stop just looking at him, because he wanted to see more movements. Everyone should understand one thing, that the technique, the meaning of it is not to hit the opponent with a single blow, but to ensure that you get the best performance of the body in accordance with the goal. Using optimized movements and positions, starting with how to control breathing, and ending with the smallest step of the foot. Creating such parts takes a very long time, because someone devotes his life and soul to accumulating experience in order to gain know-how through repeated successes and failures, after which it is passed on to the next generation, and then on and on, and in this way he repeatedly develops so that no matter how talented and brilliant he is in air, there was no way he would be able to defeat him alone in just a few years despite the fact that due to her outstanding abilities, Ya Ryong had steadily grown alone. Then at the age of 17, when the body's growth slowed down, he eventually met her, with a wall blocking the way to personal development. This is a wall that needs to be broken down to reach a higher level, so at the same time, he continued his attack on Han, he asked, so why is she just hesitating and not attacking, because the latter must have heard about this before. He was even sure that he would enter the school of heroes, right that they could meet later, because if he came there, he would be happy to give a couple of instructions entering students, he understood that it must have been very scary to lose everything. As soon as he said that with an incredible smile on his face, 
Han also smiled and asked his uncle if he remembered something she said the other day, that the raid groups asked to meet her to sign a preliminary contract. But due to this, people from various fields might start to despise her, so you should if she only looked at him once, she would do as he asked, so don't let him try to stop her. The stylist started shouting, because he didn't understand what his niece wanted to do, but there she was already ready, because it was Ya Ryan who wanted to see how to evade, she went to fight him at the same time. Said that he then made it so that she had no choice but to evade, our protagonist could not understand from what side it is. Because the movement of a person has such a thing as connectedness, the movement of each moment has a connection with the past and future. So from the point of view of a person, he predicts the future action, because either he will continue these actions, or just get ready to run, but Tai the jutsu that Han Gaiyun uses has hit exactly that fork. Skips the middle of the action, which goes straight to the end, the audience's perception is simply deceived. So not only is the body movement unpredictable, but the opponent thinks that it is faster than the real speed. Developed and was able to apply 20 years ago, which became widely known Flash. Stylist, after all used this ability and also noticed that our protagonist used a movement that Khan did not show, really here so quickly could, because the Flash is not something that can be imitated just by knowing its principle. Speed is primarily a sense of time, if at least one of these qualities will not be brought to the ideal even the stylist himself was in his early 20 seconds when he first found out about the Flash. Obviously, he was in the prime of his life, and it took him three months to figure out how the Flash works, but Ya Ryan was able to repeat it just by fighting Han, and the future is not in the best condition. Just as Han Sung Woo had thought, Ya Ryan's condition left a lot to be desired, his stamina was almost running out due to what he had been doing up until now. But even so, he thought that he could still do something, he thought that he was actually in the best position right now more than ever, he was confident that he would become stronger, much stronger. After all, at some point he experienced a joy from learning that he had never felt before, so even if this training takes place in the usual form, then he has a stronger motivation and a goal to achieve, now he knows exactly how to do it, not only because he needs it himself but from the joy you feel in the process. He first realized the path, as well as the possibilities, with pleasure. At this point, the main character forgot about the pain and fatigue, so by applying an incredible amount of concentration, he was able to use, which many people were not comfortable with, it looked like he had summoned as many as four copies that were hitting in their own direction. It was at this moment that everyone was shocked, the stylist was already running to help, but the girl she said that she asked not to interfere, but it seems that this will not be necessary, because our hero was already lying on the floor. She was sorry, so she declared that she had lost, but our hero said the same thing. It was all a common misunderstanding, because Han that Ta had already said that he would only use one hand, but Ya Ryan also said that, but he really didn't expect Da to actually use one hand. Well, on the other hand, or not point once you got hit, then you got hit point he perfectly understood, somehow awkward and uncomfortable, that's what he said to her, but she didn't have to force you and it wasn't so painful. At the same time, they were approached by a stylist who said that Bidab was not for winning or losing, because he, as an adult, should take responsibility, because he could not reconcile them at the very beginning. He said that just looking at the physical condition of the main character, it was difficult to determine how so I thought I could just treat today's match as a draw, or a scouting match, because I can arrange another match the next time Ya Ryan comes around, so you can have an official sparring session anytime, anywhere without any regrets. Our hero wanted to say something, but noticed that Han was towering over him, she asked him to listen carefully, because the next time they meet is at school, and if he suddenly fails the test for transporting heroes to school, or someone beats him before they meet, then she just won't let it go. At the same time, she just went through it, and we can understand that for Ya Ryan, that match was a very valuable and exciting experience, regardless of whether he won or lost. Facing a peer with skills beyond his common sense was a small dream, a small wish that he was finally able to fulfill. Han was already on her way to CSAE ROM, and she asked her name and also asked if she was sponsoring Ya Ryan. After all, if that was the case, she would have wanted to apologize first, since she didn't know what was wrong with her skills, but it didn't seem like she was incompetent, Han realized that S.A.E. Rum was able to choose people. She walked out the door, and you could tell by the look on her face that Ya Ryan wasn't the only one who was enjoying this fight as much. At one point it was already evening, both were sitting in a chair, our protagonist said that he thought he was going to die, because he definitely did not feel very cheerful. S.A.E. Ram, for his part, said that it was a surprise that he wasn't taken to the hospital, but did someone really force him to do this? It was to this that our hero said that the grumbling could be left for the next time, because he was already dizzy, and it also seemed that he was now feeling sick. S.A.E. Rum, despite his words, continued, saying that everything was too unexpected, as well as the result of the battle and the fact that he himself admitted defeat. She even thought that she could win something, 
because even if you take into account the rules that he set, the student council president used his hands, but the main character said that he didn't know anything, because if we talk about the rules, then he won. But if you take into account that he took off the bandage and started fighting again, it was clear that the two of them weren't just going to touch each other lightly. But he had crossed the line anyway. See, Ram realized that she was right, that he changed in one moment. So our hero said that he put all his strength into the last blow, because if he had hit her, then one field sensation would have been enough, even he would have used his hands in such a situation, it was inevitable and fair enough. SAE Ram was even afraid to imagine what it would be like if they were fighting in perfect condition. But our protagonist just smiled and said that at first he asked why he got into the fight, so he said that he was just completely immersed in the battle. He even liked it, but as soon as he said that, he immediately got up from the chair incredibly abruptly, he said that they came. It was at this point that he was referring to the stylist along with the person who brought the pizzas. As soon as everyone sat down in the chair and also started eating the food, that is, he said that his niece had caused them trouble, so he just wanted to treat them to something delicious. Ya Ryang said that he bought pizza, the main thing for him was that there was a lot of it. SAE Ram was also surprised, because the main character took and ate a whole box in two minutes. It was just because a hunter's calorie consumption, especially for a melee player, is at least five times that of a normal person. And SAE Ram didn't even think that he hadn't eaten anything during those four days of unconsciousness. But at that moment the stylist said that it was okay to move on to, to what he should have given him a long time ago. He said that C. Ram already knew that their workshop was not dealing with leather, but with fabrics that were far superior to leather. Because they weren't using plant fibers, they were using high-level monsters, the bandit spider, whose danger level reached up to four stars. Their clothing is made using special technologies, which they have a permit for, and also mixed in different proportions depending on the user's characteristics. It is after the coating stage is completed that a fabric that is much stronger and lighter than leather is obtained, so he said that in Yao Ryong's case, they have already made a plan for what clothes should be made and with what proportions, and his data is available in the Chinson Group laboratory. But the most important thing was that the stylist personally checked his data today. But there is a detail that does not give him rest, because as he said, the last stage of fabric manufacturing is the coating. This is the process of impregnating the fabric with oil and increasing the strength of the material. Siram had heard about this, so she asked them to make the best possible coating, regardless of the cost of the highest level, it is simply impossible, because they mainly use oil. But they had an exclusive contract for its supply, however, due to a sudden abnormal phenomenon, the miners simply could not catch a single whale, of course there are alternative materials, but despite the big difference, he can't guarantee exactly the same efficiency, and this already turns out to be a violation of the contract, he admitted his failure in this, because if they refuse their services, then he will understand everything comma in this case, refusal, he can introduce them to a master who has a high level of knowledge. At the same level of skill, he produces armor according to the standard method, so it is natural that all the costs of manufacturing will be taken by the stylist himself. SAE Ram was about to say something, but our hero said that it didn't matter, if he said that there was almost no difference, then there wouldn't be any special problems, and besides, he never used any expensive equipment, because the most important thing was what he wanted to wear the clothes that will make exactly the right stylus, because it is he who is the same teacher who taught his niece the technique of wrestling. These words stung him, so our protagonist continued to say that he doesn't know about the equipment, but he wants to use what is made by the hands of a strong person. SAE Ram thought that if our hero said that, it didn't really matter, because it was a very strange day after all. After the words of the main character of the stylist picked up and got up from the chair, he was amused by the words of a strong man, because he has not been a hunter for more than 10 years, even somehow it's awkward to hear such words again, although it's nice. So while C. Ram was surprised that our protagonist had already eaten everything, the stylist replied that he promised to make a product of even better quality for them and would justify this trust, because after this, he begins to regret more and more what happened last week. The accumulated hunt took place, which he was very much looking forward to. He really hoped that it would be possible to get materials there that he had long wanted to try out, so at the same time, he asked if they had heard of Sky Wasps. S.A.E. Rum said it was a royal jelly, she heard it was a precious trophy. So Stilst, who understood that you understand what this is about, said that jelly is the most famous. But there is another material that the armor manufacturer calls fantastic among themselves. This is black wax, black beeswax, which will come to the heavenly wasp, because if the royal jelly inhabits the uterus, then black wax protects already an adult queen. Even among there are a small number of those who are able to produce this material, which they lubricate the body of the uterus. He said that if this flat material could be covered, it would turn out to be one cool product, even though he never saw it in person. Our hero at the same time got into his phone and drew something, and then showed it to the stylist. He apologized that it wasn't a photo but a drawing, because his phone had recently broken down, so isn't that what the black wax looks like? 
the stylist couldn't believe his eyes because if our character had a photo, it means that he saw a live sky wasp. Ya Ryan thought that if he said anything, he would be arrested for smuggling, so he couldn't think of a better solution than to point out si Rong, saying that he saw her at her house, after all, she was very rich, which was different from ordinary people. At that moment, we were looking at the hospital where the broker was sitting. He talked about how he didn't have much to do today, so he wanted to check in a little bit before his character arrived, and he even said that he would come from there, which surprised the broker a lot. They talked for a while, but at one point he said that he would need to call as soon as Ya Ryan arrived, because he felt like it was time to finish the conversation, who he had arranged to meet. We can see that Zeke was definitely familiar with the broker, they decided to go out, because Yu Sung just recently I had a soothing drink and fell asleep, especially since there was a hospital there, they couldn't make any noise. We, in turn, understand that 11 years ago the so-called legendary cleaning squad was disbanded, which was headed by one person, Zeke Esserm, and now two people who once called each other comrades met again. They were a little bit not happy to meet each other after 10 years, and just went crazy, so they decided to just shut up and follow each other. Because the broker in the past was ranked 5th in the ranking of South Korea, he was the main fighter of the Venus squad. It was already evening, and our characters left the studio for the street, where they saw that our hero still continued to frighten her. But if the black wax was most likely in the same suitcase they found, she asked to be warned about this in advance. But the only thing that our protagonist did after scratching his head was to say that he didn't know what this item was, but he was very grateful that Tab played him back. SAE Rum exhaled and said, Something definitely can't just sit still, it's bound to get in trouble somewhere, didn't he have time today? Our main character looked at his phone and said that he wasn't there today either because he had to meet someone. SAE Ram was about to offer a ride if it wasn't too far, but Uncle Zeke called her on the phone, too. But right at that moment, the stylist also came out and said that it was quite cold outside, because even though it was only September, it meant that it was going to be a cold year because had SAE Ram already left. But the main character said that someone called her, so she went away for a while, he even thought that it wouldn't take long, but the stylist said that he came to talk, just to smoke. But they couldn't leave him alone with the most unusual movements that Ya Ryan showed today it was a real breakthrough. This technique was used, or rather invented by his brother, Father Khan, so that the stylist himself had a hand in transforming it. Our hero at the same time bowed and asked for forgiveness, because those with their sweat and blood created this technique, he should have thought about it, he asked for forgiveness, because he used his permission. This will not happen again. But the stylist began to say that this is not why he started talking about this technique, because it seems that our hero did not quite understand him that way, because the hunter technique does not have any copyright. Of course, there is almost no case when this technique is passed on to everyone, but when I myself have mastered it, it is not considered a crime if the person could just easily look at and accept the technique, it means that from the very beginning he had a fairly high level. The stylist, as soon as he lit up a little, then asked, after all, is it really that the main protagonist has no experience in learning any techniques properly from the beginning of the house tour? That he only knows the basics, but during the battle, he looked at his face and came to the conclusion that such a hot guy he couldn't just learn some basic techniques. He doesn't even dare to ask how or why he learned it, but he would like to give some advice that he hopes will be useful. He said that Ya Ryang has a true talent, so it's worth making an effort in spending time on this talent, and then our the hero will certainly shine brighter than all the others. The stylist even said that it would not be difficult to enter the school of heroes and become the best hunter. This is if we talk about his personal skills, because in their world, especially in the world of hunters, no one will be happy about something's success. Naturally many will recognize his abilities and will look up to him. It is necessary that I also took pictures of those who will be jealous. He warned that many people will want to get it, and if it doesn't work out, then destroy it. Our main character asked, after all, is that advice really enough just not to attract the attention of dangerous guys? But the stylist said that he, that it makes no sense to hide his talents. Besides, such skills are not easy to reveal. Naturally modesty on the contrary can be considered a weakling, so it's better to test your talents in all their glory. Rather than crumple, he asked Yao Ryong just to be what he is, that is, a genius, with it wasn't easy to make friends, and he asked them to do their best as long as their strength allowed, to take any other techniques that they could see. Yes, if someone makes claims, then he should not apologize, as they did just now, on the contrary, you need to be confident, because it's not exactly he who is to blame, but the people who showed the technique. Our hero wanted to say that this is too much, but the stylist, with a light in his eyes, continued that only he can decide whether to do the right thing or not, because to put it more precisely, the right choice belongs to the one who is stronger. Even if Ya Ryong spied on the technique, but if he uses it correctly, then he will be able to rise to a higher level, from that moment they will become his personal techniques. The stylist lit a cigarette again and said that he understood how our hero feels if this is not the advice that an adult should give, 
but they live in the world of hunters, where the strongest survives. Because our protagonist himself saw what a sharp character the stylist's niece had, because as adults he should have made a remark to her, but he does not want to break it by force, because she was called a cruel genius. While others are afraid of her, they will not be able to look at her from a high place or somehow harm her, just like our hero, but at the same moment Siram ran up and asked to pick up the phone. Our hero couldn't figure out why he was supposed to answer her calls, but as Siram said it was her uncle, he found out that she had brought him there, so he asked if he was nearby or not, so he just asked to pass the phone. As soon as Ya Ryung answered the phone, Zeke said that he didn't want to call him, but something unexpected happened and he asked to come back as soon as possible. The only thing that the stylist and Sam heard was our hero's exclamation, as well as the agreement that they would come. At the same time, we realized that most likely C. Rom, as well as our hero, went to the secret passage of the dungeon. He even said that not only there, in the abandoned subway, there were also secret passages and each such passage has its own owner. For example, this one belonged to the person he wanted to name, but did not I made it, because I met Zeke's face as well as his assistant, who said that the broker was further inside. Zeke also said that he didn't plan on summoning our protagonist there, so rather than heal and drag that bastard to him. Ya Ryung, in turn, said that he didn't know what kind of relationship they had, so at the same time, the same pumped up guy said that if I knew that our character would arrive so quickly, he would ask for a t-shirt to bring, and also came up and looked directly into the eyes. The guy said that Ya Ryung has a very lively look, so he's probably the one who punched Zika Sunbi in the face. Because he's quite famous in their squad, he's called a teenager who is scarier than high-level monsters, and also said that their leader wants to meet him once. For sure he was looking out for them in advance, but Zeke was telling them that it was time for them to go, because business was over and there was simply no point in staying there. All of Zeke's company, as well as C-Rom, just left, so it was at that moment that our protagonist just went to the door that was so full of aggression. And when he entered it, he noticed the president, but he was in good condition, even though Zeke was talking about something support. But the director said that it was quite a serious condition, and it was, because his body, as well as his self-confidence, was simply broken, he thought that Zeke was pathetic. So obediently followed him, but still he was not alone, so just in case, he asked me if I needed a lighter, because if not, he asked me to bring it from down there. The director was just tired, which made our hero do it. But as soon as he looked down, he noticed that everything was just burning, so what did they do, what did they do? This, at the same time, the director started talking about how if Zeke had told Tom that they had a fight, it wasn't really true, because the director was also offended, because he was actually going to set fire to him. But that kid who had muscles fights well, he's not even a tank, but he held the defense well, in 10 years he will become a great warrior. Our hero wanted to start a conversation, but Zeke already knew that he wanted to quit smuggling, but if it was in order to become a hunter, then he had one condition. Within one month Ya Ryong should be able to master what he would teach him, because if he couldn't cope, then it would be better give up and act as a hunter, because it will definitely not be easy, as it differs from his skills. Our protagonist was shocked, because really his director wants to teach magic, and the only thing the director can do is get up in the air and immediately break it. Of course, our hero was very much alerted, because he had only one question, why did you suddenly start talking about it? But at the same time, the director just took and fell into Ya Ryong's arms, which made him understand that they were really in very good condition. The body was cold, it's not easy he was exhausted, so I asked him to climb on his back. At this point, we can see the past where Yu Sung is sitting, who talked about how at first it was so difficult for him to grind the grains and make the coffee himself, but when he tried it, it was much easier, even though he made a couple of mistakes. If he knew about it like this, he would have done it a long time ago, but while he was working, he could have enjoyed it, but the other person asked him not to say it. Because it didn't sound like it was with them anymore, it was Lim Yuen, who was 26 years old, or just the director. Yu Sung said that this was true, but if he wanted to fix something, then he needed to start acting. While the father of our hero continued to pour himself coffee, the director said that they need to catch the same Duganahi, because there is nothing else to do, you just need to announce the goals and destroy them, while collecting a raid. But Yu Sung said that he wouldn't go any further anyway, because they also know what kind of condition he is in, and they also know that it won't take long to win while hiding. Yu Sung handed a cup of coffee to his companion, but he seemed to have lost his temper, some bastards were taking over his companion. He began to cry and say that there was definitely more than one Duganaki with them, maybe he would suffer some nonsense again. But the creature that was supposed to die would receive services only if that dream was with them, the director would definitely take care of this. He would collect a raid, find that very monster by any means they will make the bastard lie at his feet. But at that moment our little hero came out of one of the rooms, which the director definitely did not expect, he did not even know that his friend had a son. So at the same time, as soon as our young protagonist greeted Uncle Yiwen, Yu Sung asked the kid to play alone while they talked. 
So as soon as Yaraya left the room, you sort of continued saying that Zeke had created a prescription for painkillers, but they would gradually become addictive, and over time, the pain would blunt his cognitive abilities, judgment, and memory, so even if he held on, in three or four years, he wouldn't be able to find out the person who stands in front of him. Ewan talked about trying as much as possible, but Yu Sung wholeheartedly asked him to stop. The headmaster even felt like this was his first request, asking him that if something happened to him, he wouldn't be able to raise this child, so he asked him to look after him instead. The same person who was called the Dragon Slayer, who didn't show his weaknesses more than once in his life, asked someone for a servant. He asked for this favor so that our hero would live a normal life in the future, so that he would be truly happy, live in a place where there are no adventurers, and he wholeheartedly asked Ewan to help, so he just couldn't refuse this request, he agreed to it. At the same moment, we see that the director himself woke up, he asked about the time, but not so late, because it was about half past ten, which means that the director was lying around for about three hours. But despite all this, our hero led the director to the thing that he received at the age of fourteen, as a gift in honor of their joint work, a syringe, or rather a first aid potion. The headmaster said that it wasn't the best potion, but it would work in the earliest situations. It was so infuriating that if you weren't mortally wounded, it would put someone back on their feet in a couple of hours. This is a luxury reserved for the adventurer's precious goods, but sometimes it is possible, so the next time I asked him to buy it with my own money, however, it was at that moment that the director asked if he wanted to go back, because if he changed his mind, then he should refuse. This issue was not so difficult to solve, but as soon as if he starts, there will be no going back, and paying his father's hospital bills isn't as problematic as you might think, but as he thought, letting a child who said she would take all the responsibility was just disgusting. But Ya Ryan told him because it's not that important, because he's not a big fan of his own. My father didn't leave any money, and no one knows what might happen. The director thought that he just didn't want to trust him, but even the young protagonists were different. That's not the reason, because he always thought that he needed the ability, the strength to protect himself and his father on his own and no matter what happens. So he just thanked him for the syringe, he would save it for use if necessary. So as soon as we flash back to the present, we can understand that the director thought that our hero would definitely want to keep it as much as possible, but he could not imagine that he would not touch it up to this point, needless to say, it's a good thing that he did not sell it on the black market the market. But the only thing that the director thought at that moment was that our hero would definitely not believe him, but even if he did not become a smuggler, or quit this business, he would pay his father's bills. But Ya Ryang said that he knew about it, even if he was 100% sure that it wasn't that, he was just sure that no matter what happened to him, the boss wouldn't leave his father, thanks to this, he could act without hesitation. The headmaster talked about how the moment he turned his only 14-year-old son into contraception, he also betrayed his father, but Ya Ryang was sure that it wasn't him who did it. But our hero himself, because even without his help, he would have found a way, and he often wondered this question after all, if he can take care of himself, then why would the director help him? It was the same thoughts that had haunted him all his life, but as soon as the headmaster got up, he said that Yu Sung's only request was that the headmaster didn't raise Ya Ryang to be an adventurer. But it wasn't just that, because even during his service, he wasn't so obedient, you couldn't let your son's dragon slayer talent and abyss in ordinary life. So to be honest, the headmaster hated this world with all his heart, hated the very bastards who did this to his father, the idiots who forgot about him because they believed in the words of these freaks, and also those who stand on the sidelines, knowing everything, but meanly looking an excuse for yourself. This is exactly what the director wants to get rid of. Our hero started to get up and talk about how Zeke was kind of normal, but the director said that he would never catch him, would never catch Duganai, all because his methods are too simple and not only adventurers should be ready to catch a hiding dragon, because dragons are such a contagion. Even if you could recognize them, you can't just not touch them, because their pureblood community is designed to cause massive damage, so of course some of Zeke's squad members, but the rest of the freaks who abandoned his father are definitely not. So even if the world disappears tomorrow, the director will never forget the loss of our hero and will not believe in what he does not want to believe. The headmaster said that for now Zeke was bound by the law, but the bastards would help the dragons and hold his ankles. In the end, he will pay for it, because twenty years ago his father destroyed that horror, but he will come back again, fakes will replace fakes and all those idiots sick offense, everything will collapse. That is why he did not want him to become an adventurer, so at the same time he handed our hero a certain piece of paper, said that this is the account number for four people, because from the first day to this moment, all the proceeds from his work were transferred there. Our hero could not understand what was going on, but the director said that from the very beginning it was already decided that this place would belong to our future protagonist, so that he could start his own business when he grew up. 
Back then, he expected to give him skills, also knowledge, more practical and dangerous things than what adventurers need, he asked to call him when he's in a cast with them. Because after that, he will teach him magic in exactly one month, and now he asked to study hard for the entrance exams, even though he considers it useless. As soon as he wanted to go out, our character said that he didn't have to give him a chance, because he thought he could change his mind, so if he didn't want him to become an adventurer. The director stopped and said that this is all true, but these are just his thoughts, and they are not very important, and three years ago it was the same. Then, as now, it was only what our protagonist wanted to do that mattered. At the same time, somewhere in the old district of Yongsen, there was the same girl who was involved in the incident that occurred in the city. She said that they always get together like this, then the thought comes, isn't it time for them to get their own corner, do you have money? But at the same time, something doesn't even come to half of their meeting. Although if they have a place like this, they can at least change the warm shower. So you can see that these two are definitely familiar, they continue to laugh at each other, because they definitely didn't have someone nearby. The girl joked about the fact that it was believed that without a perkin, he would whine like the last puppy or hold back tears but make a serious appearance. It really pissed the guy off, but that's probably what the girl was trying to do and he was starting to look like a jerk. He was so angry that his aura was coming from a part of his body, he said that they thought he would be punished for fighting with her. Because you can call it suicide, but the girl was also ready to start a fight, so at the same time a certain man told you to stop. Because even he he's not going to get involved, but he wants everyone to know that they're there because of one body, and even though he's not happy about the prospect, he doesn't want to do it alone because of a fight. At the same time, he raised his hands and said that he had behaved stupidly, and Bane only answered the crazy Dorling. But the girl at the same time said that he survived due to the fact that there was a person but for some reason did not pick up the phone yesterday at all. So, what if yes, I mean about the situation that was, let's say there was no special need, why would he listen to any information? Something will come back and kill all the rescuers in any case, it was a successful operation, and he doesn't need any extra risks. The bully said that a successful operation is not quite the right expression, because only 12 people died, but even this did not attract the proper attention, because for four days in a row in the news they only talked about all the boys, or rather about our heroes, but not a word about the stolen trucks that they were able to steal. Most likely, the leader also said that this is understandable, because if not for these two, the Hunter Association would not have escaped the disaster, because the protection of the transport of monsters of the five-star level was so unreliable that ordinary people died as a result. Surely all of them attracted all the media, and also agreed with the families of the victims to shift people's attention from their mistakes to those two boys who were in the car. The girl shouted that she could have killed them all in this case, but the leader said that as soon as they found out about her, they would immediately write her down as a terrorist, so everyone would not be concerned about miscalculation of the association, but about the race of criminals. If they miss again, it will definitely lead to a crash, so the bully said that it's probably important to constantly throw up some accidents, so they have another business to do today, but at that moment another member of them came along, who brought a person on a chain behind him, it was his a job he called a hobby. They brought along some hunter who was going to be hidden from his comrades to be a hero, and last night, under the guise of someone trying to sell a trophy, then you caught him on the spot, it was Ogang Hayek. The 97th place in the ranking at the moment, many even said that he was definitely a scary man, even though he's the youngest member of the team, but he sold his own to send you loot in the shadows. This name was unfamiliar, so God said that this is a secret hideout of hunters, small bases of the area where there is a dungeon, so there is a space inside where the monster cannot penetrate. There is a place to rest, a special item and various items, this is a common definition, but not everyone uses such bases for their intended purpose. Some people say all sorts of things there, if they need a secret place that few people know about, the person asked the hunter to repeat what he said to him. So the hunter said that there will be their party in the shade, there will be members of his team, the leader, also civilians. The big guy had some questions that they were going to kill him. Immediately, the hunter began to continue, said that their lithium will guide friends, the composition is always different. They are rich people who like to have fun, a businessman, stars, they are going to drink, or they drink a potion that has a relaxing effect. The girl thought it was cool, but the boss realized that there is only a reset, like a addict, who are no longer satisfied with the usual pills, who are looking for sharp adventures in the dungeons. Whether they want such there is no place safer than there, because they are guarded by hunters, so everyone can safely have fun so far from the outside world and no extra eyes. The hunter who was in the bag said that he also had no choice, because when he first got there, he was told that everyone is doing this, but they are not the only one missing. The man with the chains came up to him and told him not to shake, because it's still too late but the truth is the courage to tell. Because do I really think that he hurt there again because if so, then the boss is very sorry, but he will have to be released, so at the same moment he was killed. At that time, the idea was that there would not be a single living soul left in that place, because hunters who abused
and ordinary citizens because of the appearance of monsters. This is the title that will amaze the whole world. But many people were still surprised that Basa wouldn't participate with them, even though they thought it would be an easy task. After all, their only target is the famous hunter squad, two of the golden elite, and six rankers. He said that the opponents will be strong enough to relieve all the accumulated stress, he asked them to cut, also kill them as much as you want, so that as soon as their bodies are found, everyone will understand that everything is not so smooth in their world, because very soon it will be time for them squad, scar. After one month, Ya Ryan was driving in the car and said that he was almost there, that he would arrive in two minutes, we were already all over him today, but she was still weak on her hands. It was at this moment that he had already arrived at the place where the elf girl was waiting for him, and she said that he only had this weekend left for you to ride like an exam, even though someone said that he would train here with his headmaster. She wanted to say that she would also prepare for this, but at that moment, another passenger, Yung Guol, who he met at the hospital in the morning, came out from behind the car. They were talking together, so he said that he also wanted to help, it would be nice to share their knowledge with each other, most importantly he said they would be in the same class. Yung Guol was very excited, but it was very creepy. At the same time, we all need to understand that the main training room, which also includes a swimming pool, as well as recreation, but food and drinks can be taken freely. There is also a gym, because all the special weight machines are designed for hunters, Saram said that the music in the dorm is on the fifth floor, and in each room there is a shower, because if he wants to wash up, then on the fourth floor there is even a spa. Our hero was incredibly surprised, because he could not believe that it all belonged to her uncle, but she asked not to be surprised, there are high-level rankers who completely bought out several mountains and made a training field in their place, and her uncle often comes here with his colleagues, just to train, on other days they can just use this place safely, but at the same time, SAE Ram asked them to tell them what the goon was doing here. Ya Ryang said that it was inappropriate to call a classmate it, but still SAE Ram said that I don't know what he said to Tom since he agreed to come, but she doesn't think that he considers him a classmate. Our protagonist looked at her and asked if she even talked to him normally, but the girl also said that not only she, she is even willing to bet that no one from the class or even from their faculty has ever talked to them. Everyone knows that he thinks too highly of himself, because if, if he ignores even excellent students from the faculty, then even more so hers. But as soon as Tak said that, the main character just asked Cholgon why he was still standing alone, because they didn't come there to have fun, so at the same time, the bully started running towards them. Very happy, our hero even said that he would consider all the devices that were there a little later, but Colgon only said that he just wanted to try something from a new brand. Our character was still driving in the car and talked to Colgon, who was surprised that it helped him as SAE Rom, but our character didn't see anything wrong with it, because if they have a bad relationship with each other, then he just had to say it. But Call Gun answered that there aren't any other kids in school that he has any sort of relationship with, it's just that C. Rom is a little intimidating, but at the same time very cool. At the same time, he asked if he really meant the same C. Rom, because is it really true that she is cool? Call Gun said that it was true, because they were just quick-witted, but from the first year, it was obvious that many people didn't like her. But she still didn't have the spirit, she always kept her head straight, even though he didn't even know about the grades, but he thought that she is very strong and unwavering. So as soon as Cholgun stood next to T-Rom, our protagonist announced that he was offering them a threesome this weekend. C-Rom said that Tom needed to prepare for a practical test, but the latter said that it seemed to him that there was nothing complicated because it was just memorizing and analyzing, not applying skills in practice because C. Ram herself said that you just need to analyze and all the examples that were given were not difficult. Before that, everything was already known where the exam was held, on what topic, and so on. He said that of course you can't say that it doesn't matter, but since the three of them were already gathered in such a place, they could spend a lot more time training together than just the two of them, because over the past month, he had been able to personally encounter strong people more times than ever before he also learned things that he would never have learned on his own, and he would like to train with them properly, because then they would share their special knowledge and give each other a rating, which would definitely be useful not only for him, but for all of them. Of course, as our hero can do, he ended the conversation by saying that they are outcasts, although it was not necessary to talk about it. But the main character said that if he enters the school of heroes, and also finds new friends now, then be sure to share his knowledge with them, he does not know how things are now, but it seems to him that the rest of the students do so. See Rom, I couldn't say I'd never thought about it. At this point, all three of them thought that the hero school was not an easy place where they could get not only experience, but also good friends, so our hero said that he would most likely enter their school, but they could leave C-Rom for the second year, or even benefit if she won't want to learn, or just train. S-A-E-Rom said that she understood what he was driving at, 
but she couldn't teach the two of them anything. But at the same time, Yao Ryang said that there is one thing that both of you don't know how to do. They don't know how to use magic, but she personally uses it, although the ability to combine it with other actions on Kudishno. S.A.E. Rum started saying that she was just a good archer, but that didn't mean that she was good at using magic. At the same time, Yung Guo made his forbidding face, he said that if so, then he would definitely like to learn how to use it, but he was going to do it one day anyway. At the same time, S.A.E. Ram was in shock, but Young Guo thought that she did everything right, he thought that it looked natural. After 15 minutes in the fight room, Call Gun said that he needed to call his parents, and our protagonist was still surprised that there was absolutely everything in that room, even all sizes of clothes, he even asked to take one suit home. But S.A.E. Ram said that he can do whatever he wants, but is he doing all this on purpose, just taking care of her and Cholgun as well? It wasn't for nothing that the three of them were training together, she said that she was thanking him, because she didn't think that she would ever make friends with anyone other than him, as well as Call Gang. Our hero, in turn, said that he thinks that she already realized that he was not so terrible, and also wanted to say one thing, but at the same moment they were interrupted. Anisha appeared behind, who said that she had some kind of bad feeling when she wanted to go I went to the gym, but now that I saw S.A.E. Ram, I understood why she felt that way. S.A.E. Ram was shocked, after all, what was she doing there at all? But Anisha, in turn, replied that her uncle was not there today, because she also heard what he said last time, that they can just calmly come there when no one is there, did he say something that she did not know? Is Anisha in a special relationship? So at the same time, Sam introduced our hero to Anisha Esserm, who is her cousin. Even though they call her Ani, they are still the same age. Anisha waved and said that she was surprised that she brought a friend, she was happy for her, and also introduced them to a person, a sophomore from their school, Jang Sang Young Sunbi, who must have been seen several times, because she invited her sophomore friends for the weekend, wanted to chat and train together at the same time to begin with, only those who had time came with them but I think it's even better that Rasta is also here. Anisha said that Si Ram doesn't like it when there are too many people, so she probably just wants to leave, because if it goes tomorrow morning in front of everyone, then others may think that they are kicking something out. S.A.E. Ram wanted her word, but Anisha said that she shouldn't be stubborn, because there it is already safe to ask them to take her to their company, in her opinion this is a good chance for her. But it was our protagonist who gave the voice, who said that they were all going to shoot together too, because another friend came with them, he was just talking on the phone, so he asked them to see him as well. At one point, the sophomore turned to the main character, he said that he had not seen it, so he asked to identify himself. At the same time, Ya Ryung started talking about how he didn't have a special school, just an ordinary one, he was in his first year, he was going to transfer to the hero school this year. And SAE Rum agreed to help him with the preparatory exams, he even did something else for a long time, so he didn't know much yet he knows, but he's going to do his best. Absolutely everyone laughed at him, parodied, and also simply did not understand him. Ya Ryan was about to suggest that they practice together, but the sophomore immediately approached him and told him to get in the car and go home before it got dark. Anisha and her group started saying that they didn't care if he lied about starting late or not, because they all knew that Tom was just ashamed of his normal school, so he made up a story about entering. They said that they are students of the school of heroes, so the average student does not have the level to keep up with them, because if someone stays with them, they risk embarrassing themselves and eventually being disappointed. They told him to go back and look for tutors of his own level. Our hero wanted to say something again, but at the same moment a blow was thrown in his face. There was an incredible slap, and Ya Ryung started to say that he was in pain. Everyone knew that Jang Sang Young wasn't really going to kill Ya Ryung because even those who aren't official hunters can't beat ordinary people in non-dungeons, and it was considered a criminal offense. He just wanted to wave his fists in front of his face, showing a red look, and make Ya Ryan feel the difference in levels. The sophomore himself couldn't understand, because how did it happen to hit our protagonist, because he even kept his distance, because how did it happen, because if he had a normal reaction, then he should have dodged back, and instead deliberately leaned forward. Everyone could see that the main character was writhing in pain. He was mumbling about how he just wanted to be friends, but the guy took him and hit him. It was too strange, so he said that there was nothing to be done, and now we will have to defend ourselves, while looking at him with an incredibly threatening face. According to the rules, there is a surveillance camera installed in the pre-training rooms of hunters, and the camera's record continuously from different angles so that hunters can hone their movements by watching the camera recording. 
S.A. Iram knew that Yao Ryong had deliberately put himself under attack, she didn't know why, but now he definitely had insurance, because the recent spectacle could clearly be seen as he hit out of the blue. The sophomore couldn't understand what kind of protection our character was talking about, so at the same time, Yao Ryong replied that he was a very vulnerable closed person, because if something bad happens, he keeps everything to himself, is sad, can't sleep. The sophomore started saying that there was a sting, well, why it makes a fuss because of some light blow, because there's not even any water left. At the same time, Ya Ryong started pointing his finger at him and telling him that he was trying to apologize even though he just hit him out of nowhere, so would he have to call the police, or would he have to call the headmaster right away? The sophomore was asking to recover, so he asked what he wanted, if it wasn't money, or if they really wanted to train with them. But the main protagonist said that he had already said everything before, because if he didn't deal the same amount of damage that he received, then as he already said, he wouldn't be able to just sleep at night. The sophomore said that in this case, our hero can hit, because he believed that he could withstand the blow of this boy who was standing in front of him, because an ordinary schoolboy fights with his bare hands at most, and the student's strength would be limited. But as soon as Ya Ryong raised his hand next to him, the sophomore seemed to imagine what he was going to feel, and he knew that all his teeth were going to be broken at the same time, so he didn't think of anything better to do than jump out of the way. Of course, our protagonist, as if he didn't understand anything, said that this wasn't what they agreed on, and the other students thought that he just had to let himself be hit. It was obvious that they, as students of the Hunter School, would dodge Yao Ren's attacks in order to tease him, but the second-year student simply couldn't help but retreat from this blow, otherwise his own face, which he imagined, might become flattened. The only thing the sophomore saw in front of him was a monster that was emitting an incredible amount of energy. Anisha, noticing such a retreat, said that now it would be more correct to not just retreat, it would be better to officially apologize and bring compensation, otherwise the fight will be no different from a beating. He immediately said that he could apologize, admit that he was a little stupid, but our hero told him to choose then, sparring, or a fight. The sophomore realized that something was wrong, because he noticed that the main character immediately flew up from his seat, he was telling him that he was idiot, they would see who was pathetic. But Ya Ryong was already at his side, he was running at full speed, but everything was so fast, that it seemed like there were two whole people instead of one, so the sophomore hit the illusion, after which Sami was hit right in the nose. At the same time, we could see that this punch didn't have all the strength put into it, and Ya Ryong was looking at us and asking, is this really the end of it? But this was definitely enough to deeply hurt the pride of the Hunter School student, so at the same moment he just lost his temper, he started constantly trying to hit our character. But nothing worked, so at the same moment our protagonist came right up to him and said that he couldn't stand it even a few punches, so that a moment later he kicked the sophomore to the floor. Everyone thought that the sophomore was acting so deliberately to weaken the enemy that they didn't want to mock him, but he was really curious, was he really a student of the hunter school? But at the same time, Ya Ryan only said that compared to the ones he had fought before, it was a completely different feeling, because he wanted to talk honestly without fighting. I forgot that he didn't mind, he wanted to say thank you for a good fight and that he caused me a lot of harm, so I held out my hand to help him up, but he just looked away. The main character continued his monologue, saying there that the second snow should have been as strong as the last time, again, because he knew this before, he could have just ignored it, so he just asked to take the video from the camera. See Ram couldn't understand, because was there really something else he wanted to do to annoy the sophomore? But it is clear that he wants to see there, and most likely the video will clearly show how he tried to simplify and slightly reduce the pace, although he expected more from the opponent. SAE Ram was in shock, because did our protagonist do all this from the very beginning, just for the sake of making a video? But he was actually trying to hurt Ya Ryong as soon as he stepped through the door, and it was the girl in the dress who brought these high school students here. It was obvious, and it was obvious that she didn't really want to hide her hatred for SAE Ram. Our hero paused for a while, so he continued later, saying that he didn't know what school was like for them, but according to Kalgan, it's very similar to them loitering around quietly, so I asked him to be honest, I probably didn't even expect him not to pretend to be quiet. He admitted that he didn't have the highest self-esteem, but he wasn't going to take the ridicule from the assholes in the back. It's probably just a mission for her, but for him it's a very valuable period of his life because he never doubted that together they would grow faster. But just as they were talking about it, they noticed that the same sophomore who wanted to hit them was running behind them. But the only thing that he managed to do was just shout, because at the same moment Anisha grabbed him with her magic, she said that she called him. Not because he was very strong, but because he thought that he would show better abilities here, and he was disgraced in front of everyone. All our heroes understood that Anisha was left out of the picture, so as not to waste energy on some small things, but to release them all at once, but it didn't change at all. But the only thing S.A.E. Rum also noticed was that he looked like he was looking at his hand for some reason, so he asked what was wrong with it. 
But then again, we realize that he feels the same way he did in the battle against the Horned Horror. We flash back to three weeks ago, our hero was unpacking some box where his things were lying, but after looking closer, he noticed that they were really in some very bad condition, like junk, especially in kill blood, that they probably couldn't even be used anymore. Its ability lies in the fact that if the wearer's life is threatened by the ability, then the spell is activated, because at that moment, he felt the pendant activate in his pocket and perhaps only thanks to that he was able to land unharmed, but that surge of strength still haunted our protagonist. Is this another blood effect? After all, it couldn't just be some secret power within him that suddenly burst out. After all, the thing that was in his hands was worth about 22 billion, so it would be strange if it only had one ability. Only at this moment did he realize that so much money he had and then the point where we are again transported to the moment when the magic was activated. He looks at his hands and realizes that at that moment he was not mistaken. He actually had the same feeling as then, but why now? After all, it probably wasn't because of that artifact back then. But as soon as he recovered from his thoughts, he noticed that Anisha was suggesting that instead of helping S.A.E. Rom, he should start helping her, because most likely S.A.E. Rom had paid him enough money for her to raise it. She even said that no matter how much she offered, the others would pay three times as much, including costs. S.A.E. Rom was shouting that she was talking complete nonsense, but Anisha interrupted her as usual and said that her words were not nonsense, it was just a reasonable suggestion, because it was not for nothing that Yarion was able to defeat their high school student. Even the strange thing is that he pretended that he could not enter school and did not even call your name. She realized that there was some reason why he couldn't concentrate on the entrance exam, but in fact, the problem could be solved if you had money, so the most important thing about Siram was money. Anisha started to go overboard, saying that she doesn't even have talent, friendliness, or reputation, she doesn't have any abilities at all, but at the same moment our protagonist smiled and said that he can't say for sure that she has stamina, and he understands that Anisha is too much a lot of spoil someone's life at school. He has no idea on something so much offended that in the face will be able to scold his sister and she creates all sorts of nasty things. Anisha lost her temper so much that he let out an incredible magic in the direction of our hero, which almost hit him. She also said that all classes were cancelled this week, and when the other high school students said that it was enough to see their weak sophomore do this, there was no need to think about protecting him as a leader. So most likely those high school students were like that, and they were just there anyway to find a connection. She was sorry for the time spent, but not a big loss, she offered to pretend that nothing happened. Then she also turned to our protagonist, said that if his goal is not her sister's money, then she advises him to be careful from next week, because it can affect his school life. He was about to turn to her, but Siram stopped him, so he asked her what kind of magic she had. But S.A.E. Ram immediately confessed that Anisha probably set it up to find out more about him, because she couldn't have said that she had a good character before. But at this moment she was just obsessed with everything related to her, probably after learning about his existence, she wanted to interfere in their relationship. Now she was going to want to give him away from those who were taking the entrance exam, goosebumps running down their skin at the idea of what might be in store for them. But our hero did not feel anything at that moment, he was more concerned with the place where his strength evaporated when Anisha released all her power. He understood that back then, the power was an inability to kill the unkill, but simply the power awakened under the spell's effect, the power that appears as a reaction to the spell. S.A.E. Rum looked at him and asked if he was okay or not, because he looked rather strange, much older than usual. But Yarion kept his fist down and said that everything was fine, because he needed to learn magic and everything else as soon as possible. By this time, the sophomore had woken up, but the only thing he saw after waking up was young Gaul, who looks normal as usual, so he scared the sophomore. Of course, the sophomore couldn't understand what young Gaul was doing there, but at the same time, our hero came up and said that he was sark, because he thought that he could take one punch, but he didn't think that he would humiliate him so much in front of everyone. The sophomore said that he asked for it, because if you don't look, then he turned out to be a jerk, because he met face to face with the hero in the tragedy in the district. He even dared to be impertinent to such a person, it's he who should say thank you for being alive at least. But this is exactly what gave our hero to think, because he did not expect that there would be such an obvious outcome, because he did not try to defeat them with all his might. The sophomore was surprised, so Ya Ryan replied that he thought his movement speed wasn't much different from the basic level, and that he couldn't control his emotions and was angry, so this fight was a bit boring, and maybe that's why he was able to follow a few habits. The sophomore seemed to be interested, so he asked about these habits, so our protagonist said that he had already analyzed the video with the camera a little while they were out, he said that in his opinion, you need to pay more attention to the center of gravity before moving your arms, then the body should bend in the direction of the foot that you step on, and he also wrote all this on the phone. 
SAE Rom knew that the same high school student must be in a huge state of shock right now, and she knew that our hero would definitely not demand money for such training, but would just give advice. She thinks that it's not that strange, because Ya Ryan wants to hear constructive criticism from the seniors, but the sophomore was still in shock, because he couldn't believe that our hero did so much for him, because just recently the sophomore wanted to hit him surreptitiously. But the main character said that it doesn't make any difference, because the high school student has already received enough for his mistake, and he doesn't have any hard feelings. Anyway, they were all here for training, so if they split up now, it would be sad, so I offered to do something useful, and also asked them to write down his phone number so that I could send them a video. As soon as Cholgon and our protagonist left, he said that the high school students were really bastards because they just ran away, leaving their friend behind, it must be really hard for him. At the same time, they both came up to see Rom and she said that they still had a lot to do because they should start spell theory. She suggested comparing the fuel that you need to use for magic or spells, only the quality of spells depends on this fuel. Our hero asked about the wording, so Yoon Gual explained it to him like this, so Sae Rum said that she had already mentioned it. Even if you get a bunch of newspapers, it was as bright as a single ember, because everyone can use a certain amount of magic. So she said that her magic level is C, this is a higher level in the wizard system, so it can either attack enemies powerfully or improve the strength of comrades, but it will also be useful for them to learn how to improve their strength during battle. All these words inspired our character, because he understood that he could improve his abilities, because if it works the same as in Kill Blood then it will be very strong, he even asked if they can master it in a week. But Siram made a very unintelligent face, said that a beginner definitely can't learn this in three days and two nights, because she has long been proficient in magic, so she can't say for sure, but just understanding the essence of the game requires at least two weeks, and his improvement in strength is only the smallest thing they need learn more. But at the same time, a high school student stood up and said that he could help you with this, if you want to learn from a jerk like him, because after all, this is his specialty, this school year he is better at self-strengthening. As soon as it was evening, Ya Ryong was able to cast the lowest ranked spell, Fire Sprout. He was very surprised, but the high school student asked him not to be so happy, because it would be strange if it didn't burn, anyone can use this spell if they don't know how. Ya Ryong asked if he should create more fire or add water, but the sophomore was told that he needed to keep the spark alive and focus on what was going on inside, and first he needed to feel the magic. Our hero could not understand, because how can you feel something that he had never felt before? But the high school student said that it was different now, even though he didn't call it magic. But he was using magic power, he didn't even realize it. But the magic in his body was already active and now was the best way to feel it. As soon as our friend closed his eyes, the sophomore told him to concentrate on the sensations, trying not to let him drown. But if he feels something, then we can assume that the first step has already been taken. As soon as he started trying to sense everything around him, all the sophomore thought was that he didn't expect someone like Ya Ryan to have no foundation, so he hoped it wouldn't take a weekend. But at the same time, the main character said that he felt tickled and tingled, as if he was just trying to get a sense of the world around him. An electric current rises from the lower abdomen, spreading throughout the body. The high school student couldn't believe it, because he felt magic in less than a minute, but Ya Ryan kept saying that everything he felt was amazing, because he could feel that there were about 100 of them in his body as well. We understand that there are only two parts of the human body that are responsible for magical powers. The core, which is located at the level of the navel, generating mana, and then mana chains, magic power is distributed through them, a total of 127. While the high school student, also our hero conducted dialogues, then C. Rom for something asked Young Gal if he played any musical instrument, because if so, it will be very easy to understand. She said that using magic is the same as playing and composing on the piano. Young Gual was confused, so at the same time, a D-rank spell, Thunder Fist, appeared in S.A.E. Rum's hands. She said that when she created it, she didn't cast any spells or make any strange signs, because contrary to popular belief, magic is not so loud, most of the magic happens inside the body, even when it is not moving. If you take a piano, it just presses certain keys, in a certain order and at a certain time, and music is born, with magic the same thing. All you have to do is think of mana chains as a piano, and magic as a composition played by pressing the chain. She also explained that out of 127 chains of magic, sending them to certain chains, in a certain order at a certain time, is what magic is all about. Young Gual pondered and realized that if this was the case, so what would happen if the order was wrong, were there any side effects associated with it? To this, C. Ram said that light magic can work if there are not too many mistakes, 
and the more complex and powerful the magic, the higher the probability of success, even with the slightest mistake, so the risk increases. She said that even with this thunder fist, which is only of this rank, if you make a few mistakes, you will be electrocuted and immobilized for half a day. Not to mention spells ranked higher, then the mistake can be fatal, which is why it is important that the front line protects the back where the mages are located, for it is very difficult to concentrate in the heat of battle. Young Guol, for his part, said that he had been trying to feel the magic power because he had been practicing in his spare time, but he still couldn't feel each chain separately, so at that moment, S.A.E. Rum started explaining to him with renewed vigor. Ya Ryan looked at her and realized that she was very talkative when it came to things she was good at. At the same time, he got up from the floor, which the high school student noticed, he thought that he was leaving, but the latter only said that he did not think that he needed to do anything else. The high school student in turn said that he didn't understand what he was talking about, because training with the sprout should be periodic until it starts to feel magic power naturally. To which Ya Ryung said that he meant that he was already used to this feeling. He can't count the chains, but he feels that the sprout can't count the chains. Where each one is located, the high school student could not believe this, so at the same moment our hero said that on the right there are two chains that end on the fingers, one on the wrist, three more on the elbow, a total of six on the right hand, on the left hand more than to the right, if you count, then ten. What can't believe is that someone who knew everything just now and already feels them, as if trying to deceive him, so our hero said that he is now deceiving him. He just wanted to know what to do next, but also did not know what to call it, because two formally is not an option, and some be he can't name it, because they don't go to the same school. We understand that there are some minor differences, but in the case of the human race, the number and approximate location of the chains are the same, so each chain is numbered from 1 to 127. It was at this point that the high school student decided to show how the chains actually work, before hitting his fist in the normal state. But starting to inhale also uses chains, that is, using the E-rank spell, Muscle Breakthrough, then asked our hero to feel the difference for himself. The upperclassman threw his punch right at our hero's face, so even Ya Ryong noticed that his speed and strength were greatly increased. No one would get off with a normal broken nose, but the upperclassman was amused that our protagonist didn't even bat an eye while being hit by such a blow. He even said that at the first stage, the main character was he was at the bottom of the class last year, so he has some confidence in his basic physical abilities, but most likely our hero saw that he was missing a lot, so he probably started using buffs. He was sure that instead of looking for a talent that he didn't have, he decided to find a workaround. Fortunately, his magic abilities were not bad, he searched and started learning spells that he could learn and master, so he ended up coming across buffs, they turned out to be very surprising for him however, depending on how you combine them, you can achieve more than just summing up the characteristics. So Ya Ryong even realized that the punch that was fired a few seconds ago wasn't just one, there were several synergistic ones. But the high school student, looking at his hand, said, there is one but, talented people do not care about buffs, because in the worst situation they will need two, or three, while he has dozens. As a result, in the second year, his grades rose to average, and he even led the team itself, but I think that those who are higher ignore him, considering that he is cheating, because that's probably why he was so excited today when a student who is considered the best in the first year called him to practice, even though she wanted to use him to get close to others, but he was still happy about it, because he wanted to share his ideas with them, wanted to be recognized, and he must have just looked like a jerk trying to impress Anisha. After all, the one who is constantly ignored, most of all wants attention, and noticed that today it is very late, so I wanted to leave, while apologizing. I wanted to apologize again, but Ya Ryung asked me to stop doing it, because if Tom was really pinned down, then they still have 50 and 8 hours, and he is looking forward to his lessons in the morning. At the same time, as soon as Monday comes, we can see that everyone is already gathered. They are all discussing what is more pleasant in the morning air after a good workout. And they did not think that they would train all weekend, throwing off sleep, so we can understand that they did not even sleep. But no one was tired except C. Rom, because both our hero and young Gaul's stamina was level A. But S.A.E. Rum said that she never thought that joint training could be so useful, because if they were in the center, then she would not give up on Cook Popper right now. The high school student also said that he called a taxi, does anyone need to go to Gangnam? Anyway, I have practice at school today, so I don't think he'll go there. At the same time, our hero raised his hand and told him to drop him off at any station on line 2, then they would have to give him a ride. After all, today was a weekday morning, so the roads here are very busy, and also at the same time, he, although awkwardly, still said that he turns a lot more than just the two of us this weekend, because it was probably his best weekend since he was five years old. He didn't know if they would see each other again before the exam, because he would be busy for the next month while everyone was studying for their exams. So he asked everyone to do their best, especially S.A.E. Rom, because if she failed the final exam, it would be a great shame. 
Sae Ram blushed deeply, making it clear that she knew as well, and also spoke to Young Gal, asking them both to pretend to know each other. So at the same time, he went straight to the car, where a high school student was waiting for him, who also said goodbye to everyone. Of course, we understand that Young Gal and Sae Ram are still awkward together as they wait for the car. As soon as it started to get light, our hero said that he was glad that they got to the place without traffic jams, and also expressed that it was his best weekend. So thanks to the high school student, he learned an incredible lot of new things, learned a few points, and also that special technique. The high school student thought for a while and said that this is just a theory, because he has never seen it in action and has not used it himself, perhaps this is nonsense at all. Ya Raya, which is probably just his imagination, but he feels that it will work in practice, because if he learns it, he can use it as a means of communication. The high school student asked about it, but our protagonist either said that this is a very long story, but if everything works out, he will definitely report the results, so if there is such an opportunity, he even suggested that they have lunch together. He said that he agreed, but only if he got in, because he didn't have time for a guy who went to a regular school. Our hero, of course, appreciated this, so at the same moment they said goodbye. Ya Ryan came home saying that he was very tired and still needed to go to school, but he was immediately interrupted by the headmaster who was standing right in the middle of the room. He even said that he would not have time to sleep. Ya Ryan asked, so what about the school? But the headmaster only said that there was no need to worry, because he was already preparing to transfer to the Academy of War, no one had been given extra points on the entrance exams for perfect attendance, so he asked to pack his things, because he had a change of underwear and a pair of t-shirts and the headmaster also noticed that he had learned magic, which, although rudimentary, was still active. Our main character said that if you know the content of the lesson, then of course it is better to prepare for it. But the director said that he is right, but at the same time not, because it will be of little use. Our hero couldn't understand what he was talking about, so the director asked him not to misunderstand, because he didn't say that he did something stupid, just that he had to understand that these were not private lessons, but a test of whether he was really ready and wanted life, just like an adventurer. So to make sure, the director wanted to check it out thoroughly, because he doesn't know about the rest, but one condition is that at once, he's not as talented as he thought. At this moment, the director had an incredibly serious face, but at the same time, he said with the operation, so he returned to normal. He already warned our protagonist and then that he had a few things, so if they go bad, he will restock them as he goes. Of course, Ya Ryan wanted to know where they were going, because was this the same training ground that he used when he was still on duty? But the director said he sold the place a long time ago. But at the same time, while he was talking about it, he was very nervous, because he could not open the lid in any way. Ya Ryan asked what he was doing here, so at the same time, the director said that our protagonist's weapon was there, because someone sent it to him, and how did he even know the address? Well, as soon as the lid was opened, Ya Ryan could see his new weapon, which was almost different in color, but in fact it was smaller, and it was also better in his hand. The director also asked them to move out, because if anyone is interested in weapons, then they will still have time to test them. Ya Ryan was looking forward to this moment. But at one point, his joy turned to despair, and in front of him was a carnivorous ant whose danger level reached up to four stars. He kept repeating in his head that when encountering a three-star monster, it was better to focus on escaping, and it was better not to meet four-star monsters or higher, which was exactly what he had learned. At the same time, the director said that this is only true for the smuggler, but not for adventurers, because if the latter gets scared and can't move, then let the latter tell him directly, he will immediately save him. The headmaster, on the other hand, was only thinking that half a year ago, he had seen the skills of the guy in front of him with his own eyes, even though carnivorous ants are especially dangerous monsters for close range, so if the skills are the same as half a year ago, then he will probably die. At the same time, as soon as the director said the last words and launched his attack, he hit so fast that even our hero, who was focused, was able to get injured. This is the second time he's fought a four-star monster, or higher, although there is a big difference between the monsters that he was able to deal with then and now, but the essence is the same, because whether it's attacking or defending, you cannot make a single mistake, because if there is no support, then mistakes will lead to accuracy, he was obliged to do everything that was in his power with the strength to deal with him quickly, he was able to hit in tow, and also fly out to his back, he was ready to hit him, because the biggest difference between a 4 star and a 3 star monster, adventure is, is intelligence, although there is a difference between individuals and species, many monsters are able to cope with situations on a par with humans, even actively wage psychological warfare. So just when our hero was about to strike, Into turned his head into a shield, trying to protect himself from the blow. Ya Ren thought that he couldn't attack that thing with a needle, and the headmaster already thought that he couldn't handle it. He wanted to use his own magic, 
but at that moment Yaren just went and split the ant in half with his new staff, it was too strong and good. As soon as he landed on the ground, he couldn't believe that end had just disappeared, and the headmaster was shocked that he activated the staff even though he didn't know how to use it. The director asked him how he felt if he was weak or lethargic. But to all this, our protagonist told Lee that he was a little out of breath, but he didn't think he was tired, just a little surprised. The director also knew when he lit a cigarette that he didn't feel any magic power, so this is a function that adds the blade and the one used, stamina, as an energy source. The mechanism itself is nothing special, rather, it is a little outdated, but such a function is never free, and the loss of endurance when using the blade island. But the very blow that he had just seen at the cost of a slightly broken breath was just incredible. He said that he was lucky there, because if not for his dirty pipes, then it was worth a very important lesson. Our hero confessed that he would definitely have lost, but he was sure that he should have lost, although he does not consider his skills bad, because objectively, but his talent, skills are also quite good. But if you look at the combat power, then he would say that the one who is somewhere at the level of a gold adventurer. This of course made our hero blush, but the director interrupted everything. He asked if the rating good can be called a praise because he knows 10 people, including his father, someone talented, and more than half of them died from monsters that are weaker than them. So this time at the same time, another Into appeared who wanted to attack our hero. He realized that it was the same ant that had cut him down because it had the ability of super regeneration, which allowed it to recover completely in such a short period of time. As soon as the main character was about to strike, he noticed that his staff had taken the shape of a hammer, and the director realized that the way he stands, the way he swings, allows the weapon to determine, also recognize the environment and optimize the shape. This may seem useless, but it is the best feature for our character, but no matter how good the weapon is, if he does not choose the right strategy, he will definitely lose, and time is limited. Enough time has passed since then, so we can see that Ya Ryong is already quite battered. He doesn't have any strength, so just as Ant would have liked to strike, the director intervened, who activated the shield and lit another cigarette. He asked our protagonist what he was trying to do, because he couldn't even dodge, they were even talking about defense. But to this, Ya Ryong was told that she thought that he had destroyed all the weak point, because what else did he need to do? The director said that it was just to escape, but our hero didn't like it, he wanted to win, so the director once again said that there he had to not just escape, but escape to a place where the regeneration of his enemy would stop working, with this strategy he would win. At the same time, ideas began to appear in the eyes of the protagonists, because he realized that he needed to change the place. In total, there are three strategies for fighting a carnivorous tree, the first and most effective strategy is to lure it into a trap where it will not be able to absorb nutrients, because it constantly regenerates. The headmaster also said that if he had lured him into a rocky area or an abandoned ruin, he would have defeated him five times already, but he didn't even think about it. At our hero in the head or what, to find a weak point, aim, and also hit harder, he does not know any other way. While the headmaster was saying this, Ya Ryong said that there was something that the headmaster should have noticed, he should have noticed that the carnivorous tree was already able to break down the barriers. The headmaster confessed that he wasn't good at defense, so he used the second strategy against such a tree, just using C rank or higher fire abilities to completely burn his body. The director said that this is why the carnivorous tree is a four-star monster, because it is weak and its weakness is fire. But he still clarified that if he can't use fire, then you can stick to the first strategy, because the carnivorous tree is not such a difficult opponent. Because before they found out the strategy against him, he was a disaster for adventurers specializing in melee combat. Everyone could understand that it was possible to kill him with a fire spell, but the first plan is much easier than that, because no military incendiary grenade is even close to them. The first generation didn't even have normal attacking spells, adventurers had to pay with their lives because of this, just like any other strategy, which was developed at the time. It was the very talented people that the director was talking about that died at the hands of monsters that could be defeated in an incredibly simple way. You think adventurers were born too early and couldn't reach their full potential, but at the same time, he looked at our hero and wanted to get back to the topic, he asked him what it was like when you were first defeated by a monster. Ya Ryan looked at the ground for a bit and said that it was shitty, it was different from losing to a human, ridiculously humiliating. The feeling of regret and loss, the thought that something really has not learned anything, is experienced by every adventurer at least once, as well as the price itself. After all, if you are lucky, then it is done with a slight fright, and if not, but in the worst case, of course, someone's life will end and then you blame yourself because you survived and your ally didn't. In general, the director stood right above our hero and told him that she didn't want to blame all this on him, just wanted to let you know that making you an adventurer is too high a price and doesn't mean that he will get more knowledge. But as soon as the director finished the monologue, 
he asked our protagonist to take a bag and start running for several hours. That the size of the dungeon is different from the size of the place in which it is located, because they all seem to be the same outside comma and the distance is perceived the same. But the size of the real dungeon is just huge and inside it is several times larger rather than outside, in the case of the Icarus jungle, which includes four districts of Seoul and Yato Island. The area inside is equivalent to the entire Korean peninsula, so at the same time, both characters reached, so the director only asked to look back and admire, because there was a beautiful view and the landscape was very diverse. They appeared in the dungeon that used to be called Syndrome Danger Level A. The director asked him not to relax, even though it was very beautiful there, because even at the bottom of the food chain here is only a three-star hell. And alone Ya Ryong definitely would not have lasted and turned out, because the next two weeks he will train him day and night. After two weeks the day training will continue, but he will survive at night without it. After all, if someone uses everything they have learned, they will last for a month, that is, the exam, but the only thing that the main character said was that he was sorry that they only had a month. As soon as a month had passed, it was already November, the day of the Warrior Academy transfer practice exam. SAE Ram was very excited, because our protagonist didn't answer her for a whole month, and the exam was at 9 o'clock, will he really not come here? But at that moment she noticed that he was calling her, she turned to him, but realized that something was wrong with him. He told her that he was sorry, because he did not respond to the message, because he was in a place where he was not connected for a whole month, and did not even say in advance that he was leaving. She was actually excited because he looked very strange face, because since the bangs all the time climbed into his eyes, that he could not stand it, just cut it off. Although it turned out not very comma in general asked for forgiveness for what made you worry, he said or what, what will go he'll wash up and come back. S.A.E. Rum wanted to ask him to wait by touching his back, but at the same time, he sensed an incredible danger, which immediately passed. Ya Ryan only asked for forgiveness, because it was already a habit to react if something was approaching from behind, but El's girlfriend only asked not to worry about it, she understands everything. So as soon as both of them got to the car, we can understand that our protagonist told her everything, that he really liked the new weapon, that he didn't even take things, but was still a little worried. But we can understand that it was the first time that C-Rom felt this aura from a human, but in fact this was not the true reason for the fright. Because the energy that she felt from our hero was very familiar to her, for a split second she felt that the aura that comes from monsters was coming from him. As soon as they were both in the car, our main character said that the new clothes fit snugly on him. There was no weight at all, so SAE Rom said that if there was more time, it would be possible to run a functionality test and adjust some details, because the better the equipment, the more functions, but the only thing that our hero was waiting for was the approach of the exam. See Rom, it's better than just doing nothing out of excitement, but do not let your guard down, even if it's just an exam, but our hero said that he was not looking forward to the exam, but meant the school of heroes itself, because they are just going to it, because the last nine he'd been talking about her for months, but he'd never seen her, never been there. At the same time, we realize that this school is located in the city of Seoul, near Namsan Mountain 270 meters above sea level, together, where the park was located and the mountain in the past, Mount Drabic, transformed into the highest mountainous area on the entire Korean peninsula, because if you look closely, it was adjacent to a large-scale dungeon, Higar Jungle and Seoul Kama in reality. It was a separate dungeon, because given this, 30 years ago, the state united the Association of Hunters and made a plan for a complete cleaning of the dungeon. At that time, we gathered all the hunters known to us, held a briefing, during which none of them refused, although participation was completely voluntary. Preparation for such a large-scale raid took about a year, astronomers and physicists were involved, because the plan was bound to decrease, and as a result, there was an announcement that Mount Gravik, formerly Mount Namson on the territory of South Korea, everyone was jubilant, because a complete clearing of the dungeon above a rank by world standards was a significant achievement. However, after that, the minds of most Koreans were occupied with joyful thoughts. There was more than one mountain peak on Mount Drabic, because the mountain range itself was quite extensive, but how to use this terrain? It was at this moment that unexpected words were heard that cut off at the root of the dispute over the right to own land. One of the people, more precisely Yu Song, proposed to build a school on this site, because previously there was a need for some kind of educational institution for hunters. But anyway, for the systematic education of a huge number of gifted a space that was not easy to prepare, so these plans were constantly postponed. At that time, the dungeon itself did not have a master, but the real right of possession belonged to the hunters who risked their own lives for the sake of clearing. Not then, not now, only a few people knew about it. But if the hunter had made Shin and more contribution to the clearing operation, I showed others the example of not sacrificing my right of possession, then today, the hero school simply wouldn't exist, of course it was Yu Siang. Ya Ryan also went on to say that even if he didn't study there, he always wanted to visit at least once, I think so many people wanted to, because if they sold souvenirs there, you could earn a lot of money. 
He also wondered why they were leaving Seoul now, since the school wasn't located in the north. SAE Ram exhaled and said that while it was impossible to contact him, a lot had happened in the past month because had he ever heard of J and Y. After all, if not, then this is a well-known team for clearing dungeons, there are some fans among your friends, but they all died, the lock broke in their shelter, apparently just at this time there was a monster of a high level of danger nearby. At first glance, it looks terrible, but at the scene of the tragedy, medicines were found, as well as the bodies of famous personalities. Ya Ryang thought that a global scandal had broken out, SAE Ram confirmed his words, after all, the public apologies began, after all. Starting even with the Hunter Association, public opinion about all organizations plummeted, after all, she would also scold the Hunters if it was before meeting him. In general, in order to calm this mood in society, the Hunter Association announced various innovative projects, the changed exam field is one of them, so I asked him about the Fange Maze. She said that this was the second place that was completely cleared after Dravig Mountain, a dungeon that was ranked higher than a. At one time, the famous dragon Wazuka was located there. Right at that time, in the Chinsen Group Laboratory, in the Underground Forge, there was Zeke, who said that he barely managed to get a few barrels, did their blacksmith drink at all in just such a short time. But the blacksmith said that Zeke shouldn't have made any noise at all, because he hadn't drunk wine properly for a long time, it wouldn't even reach his liver, and Zeke wanted him not to drink at all, even a little. We understand that it was honey wine, a very strong dwarven wine that has 25 years of aging with it, so he said that the elf, that people, none of them can do it normally, there's no need to even say that the wine is special, and why did Zeke come down to him at all, really any news about Yarayam? Zeke, in turn, said that he could not say that this was related to him, but came to ask about the Wazuki maze, because it seems that about 20 years ago the association contacted him. The blacksmith said that it was, and they wanted to make him a place for strong training. But the blacksmith told them that this was complete nonsense, and then he was kicked out. Zeke wondered why the blacksmith had given up on the idea in the first place. But the blacksmith has only just begun to fill himself more wine in the barrel, and it is said that the elf himself understands that dragons are easily attracted to one thing. Each object may have a different lust, but if this happens, they show obsession and desire to possess it. Wazuka, on the other hand, was known to maze lovers, even for dragons he was considered quite strong and spent a lot of effort to make his nest extremely mysterious and confusing, he used the technology of titans and dwarves, even human elven ones. Any means that could help make his nest even more complex and dangerous, people could not cope with such a monster, went in. Zeke was nervous, because he thought that 20 years ago all the dangerous elements were completely destroyed, using dwarves and elves. But the blacksmith, already finishing another barrel, said that the number of dwarves that Bazuka abducted must have exceeded a thousand, he doesn't know at all how people managed to catch this dragon. But I'm sure it wasn't inside the maze, maybe someone and how you executed it outside, so I remembered inside however, if there is an organization, then what kind of tool is not used, and it would be impossible to catch it, and that it was not destroyed in 20 years, the blacksmith was sure that this is just the tip of the iceberg, because inside the iceberg itself there must be something much more dangerous, no one knows how the maze will react if someone enters inside. However, the blacksmith, looking at the elf's expression, realized that most likely some fools did something, so he said that if something happens inside this maze, then you will be taught a lesson, but perhaps there will be some smart person who will be able to defeat this dungeon on the contrary. By this time, Ya Ryong had already gotten out of the car and arrived at the training center in Fang, the former maze. Everyone was asked to gather and get a pass and contract in Zone B1. The field is also modified for a maze, where there is a zone with varying degrees of difficulty and themes, everything has already been announced in advance. CROM said that this is the first launch of such a test, so no one has any information, although it may be profitable for our protagonist, and too many people came. Our hero started to smile and told her that her cousin had done a good job, too, because he can feel an incredible amount of glares, ferocious glares that just want to tear them apart. See Ram left from side to side with her head, because of course she knew that Anisha would do something, but 20 people is already too much, because she doesn't even feel the eyes on herself. At the same time, the main character realized that all his training was not in vain, and over the past month, his son learned something. He got the feeling that when you are in the crosshairs, it's like an unpleasant sticky feeling when you suddenly decide to open the window on a hot summer day. At this point, we understand that the main character risked his life for a whole month in a high-difficulty dungeon. Thanks to this experience, he learned many things and among them was the ability to avoid dangerous situations so as not to be under the gun. But this feeling was more likely several times, because if he found himself in such a situation, then you need to at least say hello to all of them, because no matter what happens, you can't show your opponent your weakness. He began to exude so much energy that everyone in the area felt it. By this time, 50 minutes before the start of the practical exam, in the complex of the training center in Fang Conference Hall No. 1, 
many people were thanking each other for coming, because without their support, their momentous event would not have been possible. This was the director of the Hunter Association, which ranked 12th in the South Korean rankings. Then there was Go Dok Su, also the current headmaster of the high school who was talking about how he never supported such a hasty and crazy plan in their time. It is very stupid to think that such antics can attract public attention, because people want those who are not at least a little sincere they don't want new adventures. But precisely because he is an employee, he is obliged to follow the majority opinion. And if they want to thank him so much, then you need to say thank you to the girl who is sitting in front of him, because she is a real school principal, even though she holds the position of chairman of the board of directors of the School of Heroes. She said that she understood everyone's state of mind, but asked him to refrain from saying anything that might cause confusion, because all the members of the council had been working on this for a long time, and of course no one agreed with this, even though it was known that everything was decided with the help of connections. But despite the request of that girl, a bald man in a very rich and red robe said that they are too much for themselves, because this is not a general exam, but only an additional one for a few outstanding students, why is there even such a reaction? But of course, they told him, they put him in his place, that it would be better to sit Utica unless he was seen out, because of which he could forget what he was like 30 years ago, because among the guys who are outside, there is not a single one to whom he could treat like that. The girl who realized that her words were being listened to said that if you try to cause another conflict, then she is ready to respond to everyone in an appropriate way, because the headmaster, as well as a member of the board of directors, had some disagreement, everyone present expected that someday this abscess would burst. But no one could imagine what will happen next, namely the appearance of one applicant who had nothing to do with this situation. They all felt this aura, so they stared at the same place, they stared at the street. At this moment, when the meeting, the same old man came out of the office and started talking with another teacher. He asked him to tell the other teacher Cho si on that he should be the target of criticism, because there is no hunter in Korea who does not know that the chairman of the association is a pet dog so Yuri. I also asked teacher Kang if he thought he was being rude. In turn, Kang said that the words of intonation were too much, but still the old man realized that he agreed with him, because when he understands that there are forces and power, then you want to use it to the fullest, but wasn't everyone going too far? Because every school can try to attract graduates by inviting them in those groups that are most suitable, so you allure students who only need these privileges, not through effort and ability, but through connections and obtained riches of fame. The old man said that after a few years there will definitely be no young hunters left, which was the potential before. They are quite satisfied with what is offered and in the future they will turn into adults who only chase external benefits, because the fish in the well can resist the heavens providing them with food. Of course not, because I won't just keep swimming in this confined space. He even guesses that this time, too, there was only one request from the chairman, so that everyone who comes to the exam today will either be relatives or even just acquaintances. So at the same time, he asked Teacher Kang if he thought that his words were too aggressive. After all, it is not enough for them to have children who have left school, so now many people are trying to put pressure on those who still remain, whether this means that he and the whole school mean nothing. Kang said that nothing would happen, and the old man supported him, so at the same time, the old man decided to ask about the fact that none of them were confused, but everyone felt the same aura. Of course, they laughed and thought that this would strain them a little, because it would be impossible to name such a guy, not for nothing did he try to figure it out there, or most likely he purposely behaves like this, and it turned out to be funny because the old man wanted to make that student enter, even though he, as a director, did not he might allow it, but he hadn't felt the urge to work out with a student in a long time. At the same time, as soon as the teachers said goodbye to each other, all the students began to explain the topic of their exam, or rather the search and transportation of the treasure. To pass the exam, they will need to find a treasure that is hidden in a chest inside the dungeon, and also take it out. All this was shown on a huge screen in the training center 30 minutes before the exam started. Our hero listened carefully to all this because the rules turned out to be much easier than he thought. He even assumed that it was difficult to calculate points or something like that. He also signed an agreement that he might get some injuries, also injuries. But the main thing was that he heard that even if all those present successfully passed the tests, there will still be treasures left in the dungeon. And there is no limit on the number of those who pass, but if a quarter of those present enter, that's already more than 100 people. The teacher ended up saying that there are still a lot of things to learn. But now they can already go to the exam field, because that's where the equipment they took is located. Ya Ryan was angry that he couldn't even use the phone that he had turned in, but he still knew that he and Asai Ram would be able to meet in person. It was at this moment that he noticed that two heavily muscled men were standing in front of some guy who was saying that he had injured his leg, so he was walking slowly. He bumped into them by accident. 
The two guys were about to start hitting on the other guy, so it was our protagonist who stepped in and said that we should behave properly, not molest each other. Of course, the guys felt superior, because there were two of them, and the physique was bigger, but as soon as Ya Ryang started to lower his aura again, saying that they were very annoyed. He let everyone know that he was currently restrained by the laws, but no one knew what could happen during the exam, because in there he can afford a little extra. At the same moment, as soon as those guys left, our hero handed the book to that guy, Although he said that he should not have done this, but still our protagonist decided to help him and wished him good luck on the exam. He noticed that he had an exam preparation book in his hand, so he thought that he wasn't going to take it. In front of us was Pio Du Jin, age 18, who was ranked second last year in the overall freshman assessment. By this point, all the people had arrived at the training center, at the entrance to the maze, and there were 10 minutes left before the exam started, so they asked everyone to follow the instructions and head to their entrance. But the only thing that our hero noticed was that everything was more like a science fiction movie, because in front of them there were strange comma capsules that had to be entered. After entering it, they were instructed that the restored time would open the doors and the exam would begin. These capsules were more like an elevator, and they were given one tactical bracelet on their hands, which notified the time, monitored the user's condition, and also established the location. It was already five seconds away. The labyrinth of Fange was once called the Baskin Abyss, because there were many hunters who had questions about the safety of this place as a training field. But even they could not guess what could be hidden in this maze, and no one could imagine it, because the maze had its own will and deceived people who tried to use it. Is Our hero felt that something was wrong, the elevator behaved strangely, but the only thing that the system started shouting was that they had to leave the maze, that an emergency situation had begun, that the internal structure of the maze was changing. Finally, the maze turned out to be rich, which it can absorb as prey, but all these people who turned out to be prey could not understand that they themselves entered the predator's lair, this dragon maze without a master. That's how this video ends. If you have sat through to the end, please don't forget to press the subscribe button and leave feedback. See you in the next video.